Audiobook title, Kitsune in the Shadows, 00-52, by Swill underscore, Prologue. I'm glad the UNI decided to keep their doors open 24-7 this year, although that is a more recent development. If they weren't open, I would probably be beside myself worrying about just how I was supposed to finish this coursework on time. My trusty laptop had finally given up on me after being quite frankly abused over the last 8 years. Fortunately, I had rather uncharacteristically decided to make a backup of the project on a USB. Normally, I wouldn't bother, but I just felt that it was about time for something not to go my way. Thanks to that, all I had to do was run to the UNI so I could finish it off in one of the computer labs. Although, I do still need to figure out what to do about my laptop in the long term. I pushed that thought out of my mind so I could focus on what I had in front of me. Many hours passed as I stuck my head down to get this coursework done. It had been a while since I'd had to work into the night, though I can't exactly say I'm unfamiliar with being forced to pull an all-nighter. I had just finished with the final touches when the time passed 3 a.m., and all that was left to do was submit it online, which I did without any issues, thankfully. Almost done, just a little more. I don't know just how many times I have said that to myself over the years, but that doesn't really matter. Every time I finished something like this it meant that I was one step closer to really getting my life started, though the end had never felt quite as close as it did at that moment. All that was left to finish was my dissertation, then, I would finally be free. I pulled out my phone to check my messages just in case someone had tried to contact me, and I noticed that my mother sent me a message four hours ago. How are you doing? This message has been sent to me at least once a week for the last two years. At this point, I'm pretty sure it's just to check that I'm still breathing. My mother probably feels the same way when I send the obligatory I'm fine in response. Thinking back on it, the longest conversation we've had in recent memory probably wasn't any longer than six messages. Nothing in particular happened between me and my parents that led to our current relationship. It's just that I need to prioritize my studies right now. Once this is over, I can spend all the time in the world bonding with them again. I stood up from my seat and stretched, signaling that I was done reflecting on my current situation in life. It's hard not to think about things like that when your mind is suddenly relieved of stress. Guess I have to walk home now. As soon as I said that, I froze as I noticed that I wasn't alone mainly thanks to the not-so-subtle side eye coming from the only other student in the room. I waved at him and squeaked out an admittedly awkward sorry. He responded by shaking his head before just getting back to whatever he was working on. Sometimes you just feel like talking to yourself okay? It can really help to keep your train of thought focused. Anyway, I made good on what I had accidentally told him and quickly made my way out of the room. As I walked down the corridor, my nose was assaulted by the smell of bleach, it was strong enough to even make me feel a little lightheaded. Deciding to pick up the pace in order to escape the smell I found myself at the top of the central staircase in no time. Letting out a quick sigh for good measure, I reached my foot out to start on my way down. Pretty quickly though, I noticed that something was wrong. My foot didn't stop when it was supposed to. It just kept going. Before I could react my vision was already filled by a close-up of the seventh step. My next thought was something along the lines of this is going to hurt, but strangely it didn't. Instead, I felt nothing. Not in the sense that nothing is wrong, but just, nothing. What even is nothing? I always thought it would be something like an endless black void, but it turns out that nothing doesn't even have that. Did you know that time is something? I didn't think so at least until actually experiencing nothing. Do I even count as something anymore? Maybe. Dot. Chapter 1, My Chance, Thud, Pain. I felt. Pain. Slowly, my eyelids opened, and I was greeted by something I thought I would never see again. Something lined with cobblestones and caked in a layer of mud. The floor. It was the floor. My arms started to try and lift me up off of the ground. It felt strange to move my body again, but despite that, what my mind was focused on was the sharp pain in my palm where it was being poked by a stone. Just how long has it been since I could feel something? While it should have hurt, such a mild inconvenience was surprisingly reassuring. It meant that this might be more than just a dream. After putting in a surprising amount of effort, I finally managed to prop myself up against a wall. Almost immediately after I relaxed my arms, 
My mind started trying to understand what was going on. Where am I? My eyes looked around the area, trying to pick out anything remotely familiar. But with no luck. There were two walls made from large stone bricks, the one that I was leaning against and one only about two steps in front. To my right, there was a dead end, and to my left was an opening that let a small amount of sunlight in. It was an alley, a dark, damp alley. Since there was nothing that I recognized, I just moved on to the next question on my mind, hoping that would be more helpful. Who am I? I pulled myself over to a nearby puddle, slowly starting to get the hang of moving my limbs again. What stared back at me through the muddy water was a young girl with pale gray eyes. She was probably no older than seven years old. She had a delicate face framed by pure white hair. However, by far, the most striking feature had to be the two large fox ears adorning the top of her head although there definitely was some competition coming from the fluffy tail waving just behind her head. What am I? After seeing my reflection, I tried to think back to what I looked like before, but there was nothing. I couldn't remember what I looked like before now. In a panic, I tried to think back and recall anything about myself. What was I doing before now? Where did I live? What was my name? But again, there was just nothing. I can't remember. It's not that I don't remember anything but there is nothing specific. Whenever I tried to remember who I was, all I recalled was white noise, as if the information had been scrubbed from my mind. Then what am I supposed to do now? Maybe this is a good thing, I mumbled to myself. I might not know who I am or where in the world I might be, but I can just start my life now. Even if I don't remember who I was, that doesn't matter. I can just be whoever I want to be. This is a chance to start over. This was a chance. My chance. With this newfound surge of confidence, I pulled myself off the floor and onto my feet. Carefully, I lifted one foot and then set it down in front of me while still leaning my shoulder against the wall for support. Just one step at a time. It's going to take a while for me to get my sense of balance back but I had to start somewhere. These small steps are the thing that is going to take me into my new life. Well, admittedly, what I did was more of a clumsy shuffle than any kind of gallant stride, but either way, I made my way out of the alley, ready to confront whatever was out there. What I saw in front of me was a bustling shopping district lined with decorative storefronts. The bottom floors of the buildings were built from the same simple gray bricks as the walls in the alley but the rest of the floors had this timber-framed look, although the woodwork was clearly far above what you would expect for a simple house. Out of the stores that I could see, there was an extravagant boutique, a small bakery, a jeweler, a tailor, and so many more. There was so much to look at it was impossible to focus on any one storefront. At that moment, I was immediately caught off guard by the sound of a horse's hooves clopping against the cobbles along with a low rattle. I pushed off the wall that I was using as a support to get a better view outside of the alley. Right as I did that, a bright red carriage pulled by two huge horses came into view. I stood there stunned, following the carriage as it passed me, trying to catch a glimpse of who was in it. I was so absorbed by the sight that I stopped paying attention to anything else around me. Thud. Without warning. I found my forehead planted against the floor once again. Except this time, it was accompanied by a sharp pain in the side of my head. Disgusting little heretic. I painfully rolled myself over to try and see the person who had just said that. Stood over me was a large bulbous man. And I mean large in every sense of the word. I doubt he could have even made it into the alley I had just come from. The man was sporting a poorly sized three-piece suit. You could see his shirt poking out between the buttons on his waistcoat. He was cleaning his cane off with a handkerchief that had been stained a deep shade of red. DSK, this had better come off. I tried to get up and run away, but as soon as I got back on my feet, I was met with a sharp pain on the other side of my head. Thud. I was back on the floor. Why can't we just kill these heretics? The man spat at me. He looked like he was about to take another swing at me, but fortunately, he was interrupted. W we need to move on soon, oh or you will be late for your visit to the temple, an unknown voice sheepishly squeaked out. DSK, fine. But first, I need to procure a new cane. It would not be appropriate to bring that, things, blood into the temple. Why yes, my lord. He started to turn away from me, but just before he started to walk away with his attendant, he made sure to throw the stained handkerchief at me. I also need to buy a new handkerchief. He barked, I can't use this one anymore. Why yes, 
my lord, right away. With that final remark, he finally left me alone, crumpled on the floor. Tears were streaming uncontrollably from my eyelids, mixing with the blood strewn haphazardly across the floor. I just lay there, crying. My mind swirled with thoughts that questioned and condemned my prior confidence. Am I not allowed to just live my life? Why did I even try? What else am I supposed to do? The sun had started to set and I was still just lying on the floor. My wounds had stopped bleeding at some point, but I didn't have the strength or the resolve to get back up on my feet. Nobody came to help, everyone just ignored me. I was, alone. What can I even do? Survive? Can I even do that? Summoning whatever strength I had left, I slowly and painfully dragged my body over the cobblestones back into the alley. Out of view where nobody would find me. I made my way all the way to the dead end at the far end of the alley and curled up in the darkest corner. Maybe if I make it another day, things will change. As my eyelids started to feel heavy, my tail waved in front of my face, so I grabbed it in a tight hug. At least I have this much. With that last thought, I finally closed my eyes, hoping deep down that all of this was just a passing nightmare and nothing more. Chapter 2 it's raining food. Back in the alleys of the shopping street, I waited. It has been about a month of doing this, and it's safe to say that it isn't just a nightmare. If anything, a nightmare would be better than this because, at least then, there is a way out. Fortunately, there wasn't another encounter quite as bad as that first meeting with that bulbous pig. But that isn't to say the other people treat me much better. I peeked out from the alley a bit further down the street than where I was when I first woke up. This section of the street focused much more on food, in particular, there was a fruit stall and a bakery here, which were both quite popular. It was almost time for the regular lunch rush, and a few people had already started to crowd around the stalls. DSK not enough people yet, I muttered to myself out of frustration. After many attempts of trying to talk to the people on this street, I managed to learn why everybody hated me so much. It's my hair. For some reason, everyone here thinks that pure white hair is a sign of a heretic. That's it. I don't know why, but just having white hair is enough to be branded a heretic. The only saving grace is that nobody seems to be willing to go any further than physical abuse. Even that bulbous pig complained about not being able to kill me. Well, there is one other thing that this hair lets me do, but it's not exactly pleasant. Just go and get it over with. The crowd had finally grown to a decent size, which meant it was time for me to make my appearance. I cautiously made my way out into the street and nobody took notice. They were too busy trying to fight their way through the crowd so they could buy their lunch. Using this to my advantage, I approached a man who was busy inspecting an apple from the fruit stall and gently tugged on the hem of his shirt. Ah, and what do you want? The man said as he slowly turned around to look at me. However, as soon as his eyes fell on me, his tone quickly changed from annoyed to overtly hostile. Oi! that little heretic is back again. Everyone within earshot of the man immediately turned to see what he was shouting about. As soon as they also noticed my hair, they started to join in the shouting, which prompted the few people who ignored the man's shouting at first to join in. When will you learn? How many times are you going to come back? We don't want your kind here. The crowd didn't hold back their hatred. I want to say that I've gotten used to it, but it always stings at least a little. The first man had now backed up along with everyone else who was even remotely close to me. He stood with his arm pulled back, apple gripped tightly. Knowing what was about to happen, I started to raise my arms, but I was a bit too late. The man had already thrown the apple, and it hit me square in my forehead. A single drop of blood fell to the floor just in front of me. The crimson liquid slowly mixing with the mud was, unfortunately, no longer an unfamiliar sight. Seeing that someone else had drawn first blood, the rest of the crowd decided that it was time for them to join in. I fell to my hands and knees in preparation for what was coming. Not soon after, a flurry of various fruits and stale bread was thrown at me. It hurts, but it doesn't matter, I just need to hold on a little longer. While taking the abuse from the crowd, I would peek out every so often to grab whatever was close to me and stuff it into the rags I was wearing. If I just make it through this, then I should be able to hide away for at least a few days. Luckily for me, it doesn't take too long for people to lose interest, 
probably because they don't want to waste too much money buying food just to waste by throwing it at me. Not that I'm complaining. Once everyone had stopped throwing their lunch at me, I quickly got up and scurried back into the alley, trying to ignore the lingering pain. Looking over what I managed to grab, I discarded anything that was too dirty to be eaten. Once I was left with only the edible food, I started to count what I had. It seemed like the haul would last me for at least a few days. Hopefully, that is enough time for my injuries to heal up enough to do this again. I pulled out an apple with a red stain on it and brushed it against my clothing to try and get as much of the blood off it as possible before biting into it. It's sweet. Savoring the apple things started to seem a little better, but the fleeting bliss disappeared along with the apple as I was abruptly brought back to reality. I let out a heavy sigh before getting up and limping towards the only safe place I know. After about a week of staying in the alley where I first woke up, one of the shop owners came and chased me out, yelling about how I was affecting his business. Fortunately for me, it led me to find a better place. The shopping street led to a large square, although saying that it was shaped more like a rectangle. On one of the short sides, there was a temple. It was a large building surrounded by pillars engraved with various murals, although by far, the most striking thing about the building was the pure black stone it was made from. On the opposite side of the square, there was an almost identical building, although rather than black stone, it was made entirely from white stone. The white stone temple was always busy, but everyone seemed to avoid the black stone temple. For some reason, not a single person has visited since I found the place, but that made it the perfect place for me to hide. After I arrived at the temple and did what I could to tend to my wounds, the sun started to fall below the horizon. Is this ever going to end? There's nothing I can do to stop people from hating me, so does that mean I just have to keep surviving like this? If someone is watching, please give me something, just a way to hide my hair. Maybe then things can change. I know that there probably isn't anyone listening, but just maybe. Finishing those last thoughts, my tail moved in front of me instinctively. Guess it's time to sleep. Chapter 3, A Flustered Goddess Question mark Puff, I don't know what to do. One day, this shabby looking fluffy thing just showed up outside my temple. This has never happened before. Everyone's supposed to avoid my temple. Despite that, there was this small ball of white fluff huddled up against one of the pillars. It's really cute, and fluffy, and sad. Wait, why is it sad? I don't want it to be sad. What do I do to stop it being sad? Maybe, I can just get rid of what is making them sad? But I don't know what is making them sad. Maybe I can go and give them something? But I don't have permission to go down there. While I was trying to come up with a solution. The fluffy thing suddenly said something under its breath. If someone is watching, please give me something. Just a way to hide my hair. Maybe then things can change. I can do that. I back shouted in response. I can give you a blessing of darkness. Without wasting any time, I tried to give my blessing to the fluffy thing. But it didn't work. Wait, it didn't work? Why didn't it work? I know that it was my first time blessing someone but it should just work. And maybe that was just a fluke. I, I'll just try again, I said to myself, trying not to lose my previous burst of confidence. Same result. But I can't just not give my blessing to the fluffy thing. I don't know why, but I just do not want this ball of fluff to stay sad. Just watching the fluffy thing huddle up with its tail to go to sleep while hiding its tears tugged at my heart. I tried to come up with a solution but nothing came to mind. How could I fix this? I don't even know what the problem is. Maybe Ilaria knows. She has blessed a lot of people before. She probably knows what's happening. Before I had the chance to think about anything else, I had already rushed out of my domain and headed over to Ilaria's place. When I arrived, I threw the door open and just blurted everything out. Ilaria. Fluffy thing. Hair. Hide. Blessing. Not working. In response, she just stared blankly at me as if I was mad. Alaria. I shouted again. That seemed to force her out of her daze, and she started to talk. Sister, what's going on? Fluffy thing. Blessing not working. I said with my arms flailing around, trying to act up the situation. Hold on. Alaria rested her head in her hand. I haven't seen you for at least a couple hundred years, and you just suddenly show up screaming about a fluffy thing and a blessing that isn't working? Exactly. Alaria then let out a sigh, before looking up and gesturing to the seat next to her. Just calm down for a bit, 
then we can try and sort this out. I really didn't want this to drag out any further than it had to, but this was all to make the ball of fluff happy, so I walked up and sat next to her. Now, first things first. Ovia, I thought I told you to call me either Aria or Big Sis. B but we're twins. Fine. A Aria. Alaria then started beaming, quite literally at that as you would expect from the goddess of light. I don't think you've ever been this accepting before. I must admit it's a welcome change. T that's not what's important right now. Alaria was a bit taken aback after hearing my quick retort. Alright then, I would love to hear about what exactly has affected you so much. T there's this ball of fluff outside my temple. I want to give it my bee blessing of darkness, but it isn't working. Alaria seemed lost in thought for a moment before she waved her hand and summoned a panel that showed the exterior of my temple. Well, first off, maybe you should stop just calling it a fluffy thing or a ball of fluff, it's a young kitsune girl, not a thing. Both you and me are kitsune as well? Why are you just calling her a fluffy thing? My face started to heat up. I didn't realize I had been doing that. I I forgot that K Kitsune could have a one tail. You could probably cook an egg on my face at this point. Alaria, on the other hand, just let out a sigh before continuing. You need to slow down and think things through properly. You don't need to panic this much. Oh okay. So, why do you want to bless this little Kitsune all of a sudden? S she's sad, and I don't want her to be sad for some reason. She said she wants a way to hide her hair and my bee blessing can help her do that. Alaria just silently stared at me for a moment after that, almost as if she was struggling to understand everything that was going on. I can't believe you are the same Ovia as before. I think I should keep an eye on this particular kitsune. Jay just helped me give her my blessing. Alaria chuckled after that. Alright, I guess it is partially my fault, so I can't try to help. What did you do? I interrupted, my face stiff. At that moment, the color had drained from Alaria's face, and it took a moment before she spoke up again. I it's not something that I did. She hastily spurted out while waving her hands around. After hearing those words, the muscles in my face relaxed again, and Alaria seemed to do the same. Her white hair actually comes from her high affinity with light magic. All that is happening is that her light affinity is so strong that it was rejecting your blessing of darkness. So. How do I fix it? It's not exactly something that can be fixed. I was physically deflated after hearing that. What can I do for the little kid now? I started to get up and head back to my domain to try and come up with something new but Hilaria quickly started speaking again. Now, don't be so quick to leave. I didn't say that there wasn't something we could do. I immediately sat back down and gave my full attention to Hilaria. Being that I am the goddess of light. I should be able to temporarily suppress her light affinity so that you could try to give her your blessing. Then, what are you waiting for? You see, I don't think I'll be able to completely suppress her light affinity. Her affinity for light magic is even higher than my natural affinity. Neither of us said anything for a moment as I processed what Alaria had told me. But, D there's a chance? Yes. Then, I want to try. If there is even a slight chance of this working then I want to give it a go. If it doesn't work, then I'll just find something else. I won't stop until I at least do something for the little kit. Then let's get to it, Alaria said as she stood up, no time like the present. She placed her hand on the panel that she was using to view the little kit, and it started to glow softly. Now's your chance. I closed my eyes and tried to bless the little kit, but it was rejected again. Not good enough. I kept trying putting everything I had into getting this blessing to the little kit. It was like pushing against a brick wall, it just didn't want to budge. Just a bit more. I pulled what remaining power I had left in me and continued to push. It would probably leave me a bit drained for a while, but that didn't matter. Then, after just a little more pushing, it felt like the wall collapsed, and all the energy had been sucked out of me. It worked. The blessing actually went through. So, does that mean you did it? Alaria said after seeing me relax and sink into the chair. I. Think. So. Just to make sure it had actually worked, I gestured towards the panel Alaria had been using so I could check. Looking at the fluffy little kit, it was clear that she had my blessing, although something did feel a little strange. It'll probably be fine. I sank even further into the chair, really feeling the wave of exhaustion hit me now that it had all worked out. Although. It seemed like Laria still had something to say. It looks like she's asleep at the moment, 
Why don't you take this opportunity to send her a message? What? Did you mean? You are also the goddess of dreams, you should be able to visit her in her dream, no? Oh yeah, I forgot, I could do that. Well then, what are you waiting for? I tried to force myself up off the chair but wasn't quite able to, so Ilaria grabbed my arm and lifted me to my feet. I wish you luck. I just limply raised my arm in response before making my way back to my domain. I hope I have enough energy left to actually do this. Chapter 4 The Shadows Embrace It's cold, but I don't hate it. I opened my eyes to find an empty black void, but it didn't scare me. If anything, it felt relaxing. Homey even. There was nothing, it was just me. Or at least that's what I thought. Without warning, something brushed against my tail, sending a shiver all the way up my spine to the tips of my ears. I instantly turned around, pulling my tail into my chest to keep it safe from whatever was out there. I won't give you my one comfort in this world. The creature recoiled in response, almost as if it was just as startled as I was. It was a strange sensation, I couldn't see it, but somehow, I was fully aware of where it was. I just stood there, facing the creature, waiting for it to move again, but it didn't. It just stood there, facing me. Cautiously, I took a step back, but as I did, the creature took a step forward, maintaining the same distance between us. What am I supposed to do here? My mind was racing, trying to figure out what was going on, but the creature just stayed in place, completely motionless. Seeing this, my mind eventually settled on a single hopeful thought. It isn't going to hurt me, I think. Deciding to take the risk, I took a step forward while reaching my hand out in front of me. The creature didn't try to keep the distance between us like before. Instead, it just stood there as my hand slowly sunk into its fur. It's soft. My fingers slowly started to caress the fluffy creature by themselves, savoring the feeling as they glided through the silky fur. The creature didn't seem to mind this, if anything. They seemed to be enjoying it just as much as I was. This continued on for a little while, at least until the creature decided to move again, this time leaning in towards me. Looking up, it was just about possible to make out a face. It looked like a fox, albeit a very large fox, with deep black fur and matching eyes. It was difficult not to stare into the abyss of those eyes, even being surrounded by darkness, something about those pitch black eyes stuck out. Hello, a woman's voice. I started looking around to try to find where the voice was coming from, but whenever I tried to look around, the fox made sure to get in front of me. Look, me. Is it the fox? Little kit. Is that me? I pointed towards myself, but before any words came out of my mouth, the fox nodded as if guessing what I was about to ask. I, dark, blessing, hide, tears. What? Is this some sort of riddle that I'm supposed to figure out? Once again, I tried to open my mouth and ask a question but was interrupted by the fox before getting a sound out. Tired, sleep. The fox suddenly pulled away from me and walked off into the distance. I tried to follow it but started feeling lightheaded and ended up tripping over my feet. I closed my eyes and braced for what I knew was about to happen. All that registered in my mind was a single thought. Again, dot. Isn't this the part where it hurts? Opening my eyes. My vision was filled with an endless field of white. My arms moved to lift my body up off of the floor, which gave me a better view of what I was looking at. A tail, one with a head-sized indent in it. A dream. While fluffing up my tail to get rid of the indent, I tried to figure out what all of that was supposed to mean, although nothing was coming to mind. No point wasting time on this right now. I sat myself up against a wall before reaching into my stash from the day before and pulling out something that looked like a plum. It was bruised and a little softer than expected, but it didn't bother me, it was food all the same. While eating, I couldn't help but think about a problem with people's choice of food to throw at me. I wish people would throw more bread, fruit just doesn't last long enough. It even would be cheaper for them and hurt less too. The plum was quickly finished in the time that I spent lamenting people's choice of projectile. Looking down at the plum stone that was left behind in my hand, I noticed that something was strange. The small shadow that it cast on my palm looked unusual. It was writhing and squirming about in my hand while also rhythmically pulsing every so often. It was almost as if it was alive. Gently rolling the stone back and forth, it looked like this living shadow was reluctantly being dragged along by the stone. Out of the corner of my eye, 
I noticed that my own shadow was doing the same thing, just on a much larger scale. While trying to figure out what this was, a tendril from my own shadow started to crawl up my leg. I immediately jumped to my feet, but that didn't stop it. The shadow continued to climb up my body until it reached the palm of my hand where I joined up with the shadow being cast by the stone. I could feel the shadow as it moved across my body, as wherever it touched rapidly cooled down, although I didn't find it uncomfortable. It actually felt comforting. This seems familiar. And that's when the pieces started to fall into place in my mind. The dream. As soon as those words left my lips, I felt the shadow start to squirm again. Looking down at my hand it seemed to be trying to point somewhere. My eyes followed where it was pointing and ended up arriving at one of the stone pillars just in front of me. Engraved into the black stone pillar was a mural of a sleeping nine-tailed fox. I walked up to the pillar and gently brushed my hand against the mural, recalling the feeling of the fox's fur from my dream. Did I meet a goddess? They did mention a blessing. But why? As if responding to my question. The shadow started to move again, rapidly making its way to both my hair and tail before eventually calming down again. At first, it seemed like nothing had happened, aside from a new brisk shell in my tail. But then my tail waved into my peripheral vision. My heart skipped a beat. The once pure white tail was now a deep black, just like the fox's fur from my dream. My mind immediately realized what this could mean. What if I sprinted from the temple? looking for the nearest puddle. I need to know. Once I found one, I immediately fell down to my hands and knees, splattering mud all over myself. It was hard to make out much in the puddle due to the ripples coming from the tears that were already streaming down my face. But I could see enough. Someone heard me. Just like my tail, my hair had been stained a deep black. Thank you. Thank you. So much. Chapter 5 my reality. It's been a month. I've put up with everything for a month. But now, I'm free. Just hearing those words come from my lips filled me with hope. I'm finally free. To just live my life. I pulled myself up off the floor and wiped away my tears with my sleeve. This is where I start over. There is just one thing that I want to do first. I want to go back to where it started and do things properly this time. Before I had the chance to think about it anymore, I was already sprinting through the back alleys heading to the street where it started. The exit to the alley was in front of me before I knew it, but before actually making it out into the street, my legs froze up, almost tripping me up. Should I? Yes. I interrupted myself before my thoughts could start to spiral out of control. This is your chance to do it over. Do it properly. Forcing down any doubts, I took a step out into this new world once again. What I saw in front of me was the same bustling shopping district lined with decorative storefronts, the same intricate timber framed buildings, the same extravagant boutique, the same small bakery, the same tailor, the same jeweler. It was all the same, but it didn't feel the same. While trying to figure out what was wrong, my eyes instinctively moved to the people walking down the street. Most just ignored me and the few who didn't did little more than glance my way before continuing on their way. Nobody is chasing me away, so what's wrong? This is exactly what I wanted. This was supposed to be my second chance, but something was off. It was like all of the color has been taken from the world around me. Why don't I feel anything? What's different? After asking that question in my mind, my lips started to move on their own, as if the answer was all too obvious, me. However, I was cut off before I could continue down that line of thought by a man shouting at the top of his lungs, there. My eyes and ears instinctively turned towards the source of the noise, but what they ended up finding made my blood run cold. There were three knights walking behind a large man, a large man with a familiar face, who was wearing a familiar poorly sized three-piece suit. It was the same bulbous pig from my first day, but his skin had gained a sickly yellow tint and what little hair he still had was sticking out of his head haphazardly like it had a mind of its own. That's the little heretic that cursed me. He belted out while pointing directly at me. My lord, that child has black hair, one of the knights chimed in, I thought we were looking for a white-haired heretic. I don't care if it has black hair now. It has that face. I would recognize that pathetic damn face anywhere. The knights glanced at each other, almost as if they were trying to make sure that they were all hearing the same thing although none of them chose to speak up. What are you waiting for? Go kill that thing. I don't care what punishment Casca Law faces for this. This place has already betrayed me. The three knights sighed, then replied in unison, Yes, 
My lord, I just stood there, stunned, trying to comprehend what I just heard. Kill? That can't be right. I know that everyone hates me. But nobody would go that far, right? However, once I saw the knights unsheathe their swords, a prickling sensation ran through my body, making my tail puff up as if my body instinctively knew it was in danger. My little legs took action immediately, carrying me back into the alley. All I could hear behind me was the knight's armor clanking against itself as they started to run. Even though they were wearing heavy armor, it would only be a matter of time before they caught up to me and my tiny legs. Loose stones were digging into my feet with every step, but I could ignore the pain. It's nothing I haven't felt before. At least, that's what I thought. As I was approaching a turn in the alley, a particularly sharp stone sliced into the sole of my foot, tripping me up. I was able to brace myself against the fall, with my forearm taking the brunt of the impact and getting small cuts along it in the process. It's fallen. Go get it. The knight in the front yelled, I want to get this over with quickly. Come on, get up. Hearing the sound of metal clanking together, I tried to get up as quickly as possible, but right as I got back on my feet, a sharp pain traveled from my right shoulder diagonally down my back, sending me back down to my knees. It burns. The clanking sound stopped as all the knights had caught up with me. Well, it shouldn't be moving after that. One of the knights said as he wiped off his sword. So, what are we supposed to do now? The second knight asked. Just kill it, I'm tired of hearing the baron complain about this curse. The third knight answered as he raised his sword. The first knight grabbed his wrist, stopping the third knight from swinging. Wait, let's just take the kid to the baron. It's probably not the right one, he was after one with white hair. And I'd rather not kill some innocent kid. If you feel so bad about it. Why did you swing at me? Why bother? I know you're just as sick of the Baron as I am. Just like that, the knights continued to squabble amongst themselves about what they should do with me. The argument seemed to quickly heat up to the point of becoming physical, and the third knight ended up knocking the first knight down to the floor, prompting the other knight to get between them. Seeing this as my only opportunity. I summoned up whatever strength I had left to force myself to my feet before immediately sprinting around the corner just ahead of me. Now look what you've done. It's getting away. I didn't know which night that was, but it didn't matter. I needed to get away. Frantically scanning the alley in front of me, I saw that there was a small alcove on my right, so I threw myself into it, scraping my already injured forearm against the cobblestones again. Please don't find me. As if responding to my thoughts, the shadows in my hair started to move, snaking across my body until I was completely covered. I swear, if you made us lose her just because you felt sorry for some kid on the streets. The clanking came up right behind me again, and I held my breath with my hands clasped to my mouth. The clanking suddenly stopped. Where did that damn thing go? How am I supposed to know? Just keep going. She couldn't have gotten far with that injury. The knights took off running again, the clanking sound slowly getting quieter. I just lay in the alcove, completely still, breathing as little as possible. The sun eventually set, covering the alley in darkness. They must be gone now, right? Cautiously, I peeked out from the alcove, checking that there wasn't anyone waiting for me to come out. Once I was sure nobody was around anymore. I got up and shuffled back to the black stone temple. Propping myself against the temple wall, I could finally feel my body start to relax and, along with it, the pain from my injuries. It seemed that I wasn't the only one who was relaxing as the shadows melted out of my hair and tail, returning them to their national pure white. What did I do wrong? Tears started streaming down my face, and just like that first day, my tail waved in front of me knowing what came next. Is there just nothing I can do? I pushed my face deep into my tail, hoping that, just maybe, I could see that fox from my dream again. At least you listened to me. I lay myself down on the ground and closed my eyes. Is this just my reality? Chapter 6 A Sister's Concerns Alaria Pov My sister locked herself away many years ago, and no matter what I tried, she never came out of her domain. Then, all of a sudden, She's in my face going on about this fluffy thing she wanted to help. Though I don't dislike the change, if anything, I welcome it wholeheartedly. I've always wanted her to get out a bit more as everyone around here seems to think she's some dangerous and scary goddess when, in reality, she's just the cutest little thing. Because of that, 
I really need to make sure this little kitsune is doing well, she could go on to change my sister for the better. I pulled up a panel to check on what the little thing had done throughout the day. Starting from when the little thing woke up, it opened on a scene of the little kitsune sitting outside of my sister's temple, seemingly playing with her shadow. While it was a fun moment and all, something about the shadow in particular stuck out like a sore thumb. That isn't dark magic. Does that mean the blessing didn't work? No, that can't be the case. My sister checked and said it went through, she wouldn't lie about that. Maybe it's a result of us forcing the blessing onto her? Well, not that it seemed to matter. The little kitsune started crying tears of joy as soon as she saw her new appearance, so I guess she got exactly what she wanted. I wish I could see my sister's face right now. Maybe I'll go pay her a visit in a bit. I'm sure she will let me in if only to tell me about how happy she made this little kitsune. I started to skip ahead a bit, at least until I saw a strangely familiar face. It was a particularly large man who was staring rather intently at the little kitsune. Now, where have I seen you before? It's unusual for some random person to leave an impression on me so they probably did something noteworthy recently. Ah, that's right, he's the one who got blacklisted from my temple last month. I've never understood these people. You would think they would get the message when something like that happens, but they never do for some reason. They always just blame something else. I can't believe he's blaming that little kitsune. It's definitely not because you came into the temple bragging about how you taught a heretic child a lesson before on your way there. The only thing that I've ever managed to get through their heads is that they shouldn't try to destroy my sister's temple. It only took them trying three times. Come on Arya, you shouldn't be thinking about this right now. I shook my head before turning my attention back to the little kitsune, just in time for me to see one of that man's knights swing his sword at her back. I can believe it. My head was now thoroughly buried in my bombs. She'll live at least, but only just. It's fortunate that my sister's blessing made her a bit more resistant, but even then, I should at least do what I can. I called one of the light spirits in my domain over to my side before gesturing towards the panel with the scene unfolding on it. You see those three, I don't want them in the temple. The spirit nodded in acknowledgement, although rather strangely for a spirit, it seemed a bit annoyed when it looked at the panel. Good. Now go along, send the message down. The spirit immediately set off, leaving my domain and heading for the temple. After a brief pause to let myself cool off a bit, I let out a sigh, now trying to think about what else I could do from here. But there isn't much I can do for her unless she comes to my temple. If I'm you all up in arms like this, I can only imagine how my sister feels right now. Right after finishing that thought. I realized that something was strange. If I'm only just finding out about this now, my sister should have found out about it a while ago, but she hasn't come in here crying to me about it yet. Has something happened to her? I better just go and check. Getting up out of my seat, I gestured over to another one of the light spirits for it to follow me before setting out for my sister's domain. Once I got there, I noticed that she wasn't in the main room which wasn't that unusual. What was unusual was that a door in the back was left slightly ajar. I made my way over before peeking my head in. Sister, are you doing alright? After quickly looking around the room to try and find her, my eyes locked onto a mound of black fluff in the corner. Walking up to the mound of fluff, I found my sister passed out on top of a pile of plushies, her arms wrapped around a fox plush with pure white fur and pale gray eyes. When did you make that? I don't know who I was expecting to answer that. I just decided it would be better to let it be a mystery for now. It seems that she just ended up passing out after she met with the little kitsune in her dreams, it must have ended up taking everything she had in her to give her that blessing and then make her way into her dream. Although she might have also used a bit on that plushie. My eyes once again locked with the plushie's pale gray eyes. Come on Arya. Stop thinking about that. After scolding myself for being strangely obsessed with the existence of this plushie, I turned to the light spirit that came with me. Can you just watch over her and call me when she wakes up? The spirit didn't respond and just made its way over to my sister's side. I should probably prepare to calm her down when she wakes up. It'll be a while before she wakes up, at least a year or two. Hopefully, that makes it easier to swallow the news. Having done all I could, I left the room and headed back to my domain. This should make for a good story at least. Chapter 7, Hope Only Lasts So Long, 7 Years. 
And what do I have to show for it? As I watched the sunset over the city of Cascala once again, I couldn't help but look back on all the time I'd spent suffering here. Crouching down, I reached over to my stash and pulled out what was probably a plum, at least before the mold got to it. Good enough. I cut out the rotten parts using a chipped knife that someone dropped in the alleys at some point. Once it looked like only the edible parts remained. I brought the mangled fruit up to my mouth and took a bite. Weren't these sweet at some point? Where did things go wrong? I took another bite out of the plum before leaning my back against the wall of the black stone temple. All this time, and nothing has changed. Looking down at the half-eaten plum with chunks haphazardly cut out of it, a different realization dawned on me. Well, that isn't true. Unfortunately, at some point, the shopkeepers collectively decided it was a good idea to start putting out any rotten fruit they had for sale at a discount. It's clear they had decided to make use of my food runs just to move unsold fruit. My only saving grace was that some people still bought fresh fruit to throw at me because they wanted it to hurt more, even if it cost them a bit extra. Never thought I'd be happy people were so cruel. Trying to push the thought out of my mind, I took another bite out of the plum. But this time, my mouth was filled with an astringent bitter taste, causing me to spit it out. Must have missed a bit. That wasn't all that changed, that Bulbous Spit never gave up on trying to find me. He had started to send out daily patrols around when the lunch rush started, although he stopped coming here himself at some point. Luckily, I'd never been caught like I did the first time. However, there were a few times when I was spotted, but it was easy enough to get away thanks to my shadow. I'm pretty sure he died recently. About a month ago, the patrols just stopped. At least they did until a new kid showed up around here calling himself the Baron and cursing me out for cursing his oh-so-majestic father. I would complain that he got off easy, but I'm not sure if that's true, considering how he looked the last few times I saw him. Still wish I got a jab in myself though. Why have I held on so long? Slumping down even lower. I took the final bite of the plum before spitting the stone out into my hand. I looked down at the plum seed in my palm, focusing on the shadow that was being cast due to the sunset. It was subtly pulsing and writhing just like it did on that day all those years ago. Oh yeah, that's why. I instinctively looked over to the pillar on my right with the mural of a nine-tailed fox. Why won't you respond to me anymore? A single tear ran down my face as I recalled the joy that came over me on the day I spoke to the fox but it dried up quickly as the rest of that day came to mind. My hand reached over my right shoulder to the scar that was left behind. I should just leave. I'd held out all this time, hoping to speak to that fox from my dreams again, but after seven years, I could just go tonight. I tried to come up with a reason for me not to leave, but nothing came to mind. There just wasn't a good reason to stay here anymore. Hoping for a light at the end of the tunnel can only get you so far. Reluctantly, I lifted myself up off the floor just as the last glimmer from the sun dipped below the horizon, casting the city into darkness. My shadow coated my hair and tail, and I started to leave. But before getting too far away, I stopped and looked back at the black stone temple. This place really kept me safe all this time. I just wish I could have thanked you. Deciding that it would be better just to get it over with. I pulled my hood up over my head and lifted my makeshift scarf over my mouth before heading for the city gates. Getting to the gates was rather uneventful, as the patrols who were looking for me knew it would be a waste of time to continue trying when it got dark. Fortunately for me, the gate was still open when I got there, although I didn't know how long it would stay that way. There were two guards standing by the gate, but neither looked all that interested in actually doing their job, which works out better for me. I made my way up to the gate, hoping that the two guards would just ignore me and let me on my way. But as I've already learned by now, things rarely go my way. Oi! Are you sure you want to be going out right now? Turning around, I saw that the younger looking of the two guards was walking up to me, so I just nodded and tried to go through the gate anyway. But when he realized that I had no intention of stopping, he started to run instead. He quickly caught up to me and grabbed my shoulder to stop me from leaving. Hey, come on, a kid like you shouldn't even be out by themselves at this hour, let alone trying to leave the city. I just stared at him blankly. Is that genuine concern? No, I know better than that. I tried to shake myself free from the guard's grip, but he didn't budge. Instead, it seemed like my struggle just got the older guard to come over and see what the problem was. Ah. Come on, 
just deal with the kid so we can close up, just close up then, I'm not going to let a kid go and get themselves killed. Hearing that, I started to struggle again, but this time, I must have caught him a bit off guard as his hand slipped off my shoulder, and I started to run for the gates. Seeing this, the older guard lurched over to stop me. His hand managed to latch onto my hood, abruptly stopping me while also exposing my ears. Fox ears? The younger guard muttered. Ah, wasn't that new baron or something going on about wanting to catch one of these foxes? He wanted one with black hair or white hair, right? The older guard asked. Not now. I tried to remove my cloak, but the older guard clearly learned from seeing me slip out of the other guard's grip. He yanked me closer before kneeing me in the stomach, winding me. Tie it up. It must be the right one if it's trying to escape at night like this. But. The younger guard looked down at me, crumpled on the ground and clutching my stomach. Sorry. But, I've got a family to feed. Why do I have to be right about people? Even though I was winded, my struggle continued until, eventually, the tattered cloak tore, freeing me once again. Oi! Grab it! The older guard shouted at the younger guard, tripping on the torn cloak in the process. Not happening. Sprinting into the alleys, my shadow expanded to cover my whole body. It was difficult to run, but I should have been able to make it back to the temple before passing out. Although my vision was already starting to get a bit blurry, so it would be a close call. Did they really have to wind me like that? I looked back to see if the guards were still following me, but, thud, I ran into something. Trying to stop myself from falling, I clumsily stumbled backwards, but my legs ended up giving out anyway, sending me to the floor. Did I run into a brick wall? But I know these alleys better than anyway. There shouldn't be a wall here. Looking up. It was just about possible to make out a large figure wearing armor, they were clearly much larger than either of the guards that were after me. Another one? Even though they were shrouded in darkness, I could see their vivid purple hair whenever it caught a ray of moonlight, but that wasn't all that was revealed by the pale light. It also revealed a sword, pointed directly at me. Get up! But no amount of internal screaming would help me, there was just no energy left in my body to call upon this time. Not like this. Not after all this time. The last thing I could make out as my vision was fading was my shadow melting out of my hair. Is this how it ends? Chapter 8, An Unfamiliar Ceiling It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt at all. I couldn't even remember the last time my body didn't take. My injuries have never had the time to heal fully. My eyelids slowly forced themselves open. Ever since I woke up in this world, my tail was always the first thing I saw in the morning, but today, I was greeted by an unfamiliar wooden ceiling instead. It was then that a wave of panic spread over me. I quickly sat up and reached behind me to check that my one source of comfort hadn't been taken away from me. It's still there. The panic washed away just as quickly as it came over me. Once I had calmed down enough, I started to take in my surroundings. I was inside a room, alone, with a single window and a small bed tucked in the corner on which I was sitting. The bed was surprisingly soft, but that might just be because I'm used to sleeping on the floor. On the opposite side of the room, there was a door which had been left slightly ajar. Through the gap, I caught sight of a person with a purple lion black hair, but as soon as I made eye contact with them, they ran away. Who? Panic started setting in again. I tried to get up hoping to be able to get out through the window, but before I was even able to get off of the bed, the door flew open. My body reacted instinctively, before I could process anything else. I had my back up against the corner of the room while still on top of the bed, with my makeshift scarf pulled up over my mouth and my shadow covering my body. Whoa, calm down. I ain't gonna do anything to you. In the doorway stood a tall woman with bright blue eyes and purple hair that reached down to her shoulders. What stood out the most about her was her size. She couldn't have been any shorter than six feet tall. On top of that, it was clear that her body had been well trained just by looking at her forearms as she held her hands out in front of her with her palms facing towards me. You bumped into us yesterday, okay? I just took you to the inn with us. All right, what's going on? Did she abduct me after I passed out yesterday? I'm Raynal, but you can just call me Nelly. When is she going to take me to that baron? So, do you have something I should call you? Not one for talking, eh? Raynal then let out an exaggerated sigh, finally dropping her arms. I turned and started dying up the window again. It would be impossible for me to go through the door with her standing in the doorway, 
but I didn't know if I would be able to make it out of the window before she could get to me. Before I could build up the courage to try and escape a new voice came from behind Raynal. I've brought the bread. Behind Raynal was a girl who was trying to squeeze her way into the room. The girl had purple eyes and black hair. She was probably the person who was watching me through the door when I woke up. Ava, wait a minute. Raynal tried to stop the girl, but she managed to slip past her anyway, losing her cloak in the process which revealed two black feathered wings that sprouted from her back. She quickly made her way towards me, until she was right up against the side of the bed. Hi there, my name's Ava, what's yours? I just stared back at her in silence, occasionally glancing at the loaf of bread she held in her hand. Another exaggerated sigh came from Raynal, sorry about that. That's Ava, she's the one who healed you up after we brought you here. She's a bit of a handful but she means you no harm. Come on mom. I'm not that bad. What am I supposed to do here? Okay then, whatever you say. Now, how about you give the little fox the bread you've been holding on to? Bit rude to wave food in front of them, hey? Oh, Ava's face turned a bright shade of red as she placed a loaf of bread on the bed in front of me. Alright now Ava, give the girl some space. Ava did as she was told and moved next to Reno. That looks good. No matter what anyone says. It's hard to turn down food when you're hungry. It's probably fine, right? I slowly reached my hand towards the bread while looking directly at Raynal and Ava just in case they tried something. Once my hand was on the bread I immediately jerked back and brought it towards me. Nothing happened. Pulling my scarf down I brought the bread up to my mouth and took a bite, still keeping my eyes on those two. It's soft. Bread could be soft? I had forgotten what fresh bread tasted like and couldn't help myself from finishing the whole loaf as quickly as possible. At some point while I was eating my shadow retracted until it just covered my hair and tail. The whole time the other two people in the room just looked on in silence. So, that good huh? Raynal piped up, breaking the silence. Still no talking then, Raynal said letting out yet another exaggerated sigh. Well, we've got to call you some, Chloe. Ava interrupted coming up next to the bed again. Not good enough? Then, Lila. Does she think she can just guess my name? How are you going to do that if even I don't know my name? Now now, I already told you to give the girl some space. Rinal said as she placed her hand on Ava's shoulder, gently pulling her back. But she won't talk, so we have to try something. I get that. But you can't just start shouting random names at her. But that's what you did to me. Do I? Need to step in here? Cough anyway, we do need to come up with something to call this little kit. Oh, I don't know. I don't remember when a kitsune stops being called a kit. Rinal said, clearly trying to move past the awkward silence. Every time she said the word kit my ears twitched, so I quickly reached up to cover them as soon as I noticed. Unfortunately, it seemed that I was too late as Rainal let out a quiet giggle. So, Kit then? Rainal asked. My mind was sent back to the fox from my dream. They were the only one who called me that. Ah, I guess we'll just go with Kit until you tell us your name, Kit. Ava lurched towards me. However, before she was able to grab me my instincts kicked in and I jumped off the bed. Not again, Ava. Rainal shouted, come on girl, sorry. Ava sheepishly let out looking dejected. Like I said, she's a handful. She's just... excited? Rinal said as she crouched down to my level. Then Rainal just stared at me for a moment, probably hoping for something to change. I just stared back at her in response. It was clear that I was the more determined of the two of us as she decided to speak up again. What can I do to get you to talk? Or are you just not able to? Rainal planted her forehead firmly in her palm. I don't know what kind of answer I was even expecting. Instead of trying to push me any further she just stood up, gesturing for Ava. Alright, I'm sorry to do this to you. My heart dropped instantly. I knew it. I started to turn towards the window, ready to make my escape. But, I've got to leave you here with Ava for a bit, huh? My legs froze as I tried to process what Raynal just said. That's... It? What's the catch? I could only imagine what my confused expression looked like to Raynal, but whatever it looked like she just continued talking. I've got to head out and buy some things now that you're here. We good? I'll take that as a yes. Ava, be good to Kit. No more jumping at them. No problem. Ava said, seemingly already over getting scolded. Raynal shot a skeptical look towards Ava, 
but continued heading out anyway. I'll be back before dinner, probably. With that Rainel went out the door, leaving just me and Ava in the room. I could just escape now. Ava does look to be a bit older than I am right now, but only by one or two years at most. I could probably slip past her and get back to the temple. But, maybe not. The food is good. I guess I can stay. For a bit. Can I at least have that much? Chapter 9 the crow and the fox. Ava Puff, mom decided to leave me alone with this cute little kitsune, but I didn't know what I was supposed to do. What I did know was that whenever I looked at her, only one thought came to mind. I want to touch that tail. Well, that's not entirely true. There was one other thought. Those ears look pretty fluffy too. You would think that makes things quite simple, right? Go up, brush the tail, play with the ears, and everyone has a good time. Well, unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Kit was doing everything she possibly could to avoid me. Even when I just tried going for it and jumped at her when she was distracted, they simply leapt off the bed out of my reach. Mom even scolded me for doing it. It was rather unjust, in my opinion. Like, come on, I didn't even get anything out of it. Now, if I could at least talk to her, maybe we could have a conversation and work something out. You know? But that also seems to be a no-go. This little fox has refused to talk the whole time she's been awake. I know you can talk. I heard you mumbling in your sleep. Well, I didn't exactly hear what she said, but there was definitely some noise coming from that tiny mouth of hers. Ah, I've gotta try something. I got off the bed and sat down on the floor a small distance in front of Kit. So, let's start over. Your Kit. I'm Ava. She stared back at me in silence. Come on, you've got to give me something. Age. What about age? I'm 16, and you are? No response. Should I just guess? Surely, she'll correct me if I'm wrong. 12? Kid just continued to stare back at me, so I was about to try and change tactics. But right as I was about to move on, something unexpected happened. Kid shook her head from side to side catching me off guard. No, no. Then how old are you? Come on. You almost had something there. Eleven. Another head shake. Lower. She shook her head again. So higher then. Thirteen. Another no. Do you only know how to shake your head? Fourteen. There was a short pause. Followed by a nod. Wait. So you're fourteen. Are you sure? I thought a fourteen-year-old would be taller. Wait. Was that a rude thing to say? Sorry. I said while dramatically throwing my body to the floor. Seriously? Still nothing. The only times this girl has shown any real reaction was when mom burst into the room, when she got food and when I jumped at her. I could just try that again. Surely, she wouldn't expect it the second time. Maybe not. I'd rather not have her hate me. But I didn't exactly have many more conversation topics I could use. Maybe if I had more food, I could try and sort out some kind of trade. But that loaf of bread we gave her was the last of what we had on hand. While I was sitting there trying to come up with a new angle of attack, I noticed Kit's eyes started to wander around the room, at least until they eventually settled, looking at something just above my head. Huh? What have you found? I turn around to try to find what she was looking at, but there wasn't anything there, so I turned back to face Kit, but she was still looking above me. So I tried looking up instead. And that's when I realized what was going on. Oh, you're interested in my wings. I brought one of my wings in front of me and rested it on my lap, Kit's eyes following the wing the whole time. That's when a great idea hit me. So, do you want to try touching them? She once again responded by staring in silence. However, this time, her eyes were firmly locked on my hand as I gently ran my fingers through my feathers. I continued to taunt her watching as she slowly started to inch forward. It was only a couple of minutes before she finally broke and nodded her head. Well, I could let you do that. But, I would need something in return. As soon as those words left my mouth, she started to move away from me. Wait, it's something simple. Kid stopped moving away, clearly still interested. You can touch my wings, if I can touch your tongue. Before I had even finished my sentence, she violently shook her head and retreated all the way back into the corner of the room, clutching her tail to her chest. My arms fell to my side in defeat as I let out a sigh, frustrated at already being sent back to square one. What's it going to take? Come on, anything. At that point, I got up off the floor and started to pace back and forth, 
trying to come up with anything else that could work. What do kids even like these days? Magic is pretty popular. But I only have healing magic, and that doesn't make for a good show. Unless I cut myself, then heal it. That'd be pretty impressive. But should you do that in front of kids? Probably not. Right? Kid just sat there and watched me walk back and forth in silence. There is that one thing I can do but it doesn't usually impress Beastkin. I stopped walking and looked back at Kit. But maybe here, deciding not to think and just do, I tried to start a conversation again. So, how do you feel about magic? Silence again, although this time, there seemed to be something of a glint in Kit's eye. I've got you. Well, I happen to know a pretty good trick. Do you want to see it? A tentative nod. Alright then, check this out. In that instant, I changed into my crow form. Most beastkin are able to do something similar, so I'm just kinda hoping that kid is too young to know about it. Come, do something. She just stared at me silently, although she did seem a little bit more relaxed than before. It wasn't a big change, more just that she gave off a different vibe. I decided to try my luck and began to slowly approach her while in my crow form. She didn't move away. This might actually work. I continued to walk toward her until I was so close that I could just jump up into her lap. Maybe I should. So I did. Or at least, I tried to. As soon as I had left the ground, Kid had already scampered all the way to the opposite corner leaving me sprawled out on the floor. Seriously? I couldn't help but stare at her in disbelief. How can you be this difficult? I'll get you one day. It just seems that day is not today. Chapter 10, An Uncomfortable Realization Rainal Puff, what am I gonna do now? I knew that it was my fault that I was in this position, but that didn't make it any easier to figure out. I really didn't want to stay in this city very long. It's always just felt kinda uncomfortable. But now that I've taken that kitsune in, ah, I can't just leave her alone now. It took a few seconds for me to cool off after shouting out into the ether like that. At that point, my only hope was that she had some kind of parent or guardian who was looking for her. Then, I could just head out with Ava. Might even be able to get out of here today if things work out. However, seeing that she was running around at night dressed in rags, the chance of that was probably fairly slim. I'll just try to ask around the market. If someone lost their kid, I doubt they would stay quiet about it. With that thought in mind, I made my way down the market street, looking for some place to stock up on food. I quickly came across a fruit stand, which normally wouldn't be that big a deal. But this stand had something rather unusual on display. Wanting to satiate my own curiosity, I walked up to the stand. H hello there, what can I do for you? An old man came up beside me, although looking down at him, it was clear that he was a little intimidated by me. Not that it's anything new for me. I just wanted to ask you about what you have in that barrel over there? I said, pointing at the unusual display. Oh, T that. Why you must not be from around here. T that's all the fruit that D didn't sell and started to rot. Yeah, I can see that. I want to know why you're selling it. And people buy that? Why yes. The old man responded, seemingly taken aback by the question. Why? I just can't imagine why a normal person would want to buy rotten food, even if it's at such a hefty discount. E every so often. This little H heretic comes around. M many P people buy the R rotten fruit to throw. I it's cheaper, so they can do it M more often. There was something deeply disturbing about seeing this timid old man talk about pelting someone with rotten fruit as if it were perfectly normal while still keeping a smile on his face. I if you wait a little while, she might s show up today. I it's about time for her to see come around. She? A rather upsetting thought came to mind, but I quickly pushed it out. No. Just throw together whatever you recommend, enough for me and two kids. A all right then. The old man then turned around and started filling a basket with various fruits. He was clearly grabbing a bit more than what I asked for, but with how Kit devoured that loaf of bread we gave her, I don't think it'll be a problem. T that'll be. Hold on a second there. There's still something else you can help me with. I interrupted. The man was a little surprised, but I continued anyway. Don't worry so much. Just want some information. I am new in town after all. A all right, that isn't a P problem. Good. Now, has anyone around here been looking for a little girl with fox ears? F fox ears? Yes, fox ears. I put my hands up on top of my head in case he didn't understand what I meant. The man paused for a second before saying anything. W well, 
the new Baron has been a looking for a girl with a fox ears. That sounds rather interesting. What else do you know? H. He says that the child C. Cursed his F. Father. H. He is offering a, a reward to anyone who can be bring her in. I froze momentarily after hearing that. My mind couldn't help but start putting everything together. The Baron hunting down a young Kitsune. A girl regularly assaulted with rotten fruit. And me taking in a young Kitsune girl in the middle of the night. The old man gestured for me to bend down, which I did. Be between you and me. I if you find her J just let her G go. The old man whispered into my ear. Huh? That wasn't what I was expecting, from how this old man was casually talking about throwing rotten fruit at someone with a smile on his face, I didn't expect him to have a conscience like that. W we all know that she is the little H heretic who comes around here. B but everyone has agreed to L let her go. S she's too good for business. Of course. Really shouldn't get my hopes up like that. Sure doesn't bother me. I said putting on a faint smile, well, you kept up your end of the bargain so keep the change. I threw a silver coin his way, which he seemed more than pleased with. T thank you for your pea purchase. Don't worry about it, you won't be seeing me again anytime soon. After picking up the basket of fruit he put together, I quickly left the stall and continued on down the street. I ended up picking up quite a lot of food and ended up asking around a bit more about Kit although all the information that I got seemed to point to the same conclusion. Even if I really didn't want it to be the case. Gods, what has Kit lived through? Guess I'll be staying in this city a while longer. Well, with that decided, I guess it means I need to try even harder to get Kit to open up to us. But with what she's been through, it might be a bit of an upward battle. Who knows? I already picked up one daughter on this journey. After that thought crossed my mind, I instantly shook my head. I shouldn't be thinking like that. It's not my choice to make. I distracted myself by trying to come up with ideas about how I could get Kit to at least stop being as afraid of us. But unfortunately, nothing came to mind. This was so much easier with Ava. If anything, I wish I could make her a bit quieter. Maybe a gift. Well, it might not have been the best idea, but it was an idea. At least. The only problem with it was that I didn't know what sort of gift she would even like. Clothes would probably be good. But it would be better if she could pick herself. I don't want to get her something she doesn't like. Maybe something small. I thought back to what Kit was wearing, and that's when it hit me. She was wearing a tattered scarf. That's perfect. With the gift decided, I ran back to a clothing store that I had walked past earlier in the day. As soon as I got there. I went over to their collection of scarves and picked out the first one that screamed Kit to me. It was a pitch black scarf with no special embroidery on it, it just called out to me as soon I saw it. While doing that, something else caught my eye. Something that was hidden away on the top shelf. I have to have this. Hey, excuse me. Do you have this in purple? I called out to the shopkeeper. Raynal, you really are a genius sometimes, Kit. I've got you now. You'll be talking before the morning. Chapter 11, A Not So Quiet Evening What am I supposed to do now? Ever since Ava tried to jump at me, she has been sitting in the corner of the room, staying completely silent. She occasionally looked up at me but quickly looked away again. I even got myself back up onto the bed, and she didn't react at all. She didn't even try to talk to me. After a while of just sitting in silence, the door suddenly flung open. And Raynal came into the room with a basket in tow. So, you girls miss me? Tough crowd. Rhinel said, shrugging her shoulders before setting down the basket. What am I even supposed to say? Raynal then turned towards Ava, but Ava just continued her silence. I don't know if she even realized that Raynal had come into the room. Wow, you managed to get Ava to shut up somehow, Rhinel said, sounding genuinely surprised. I need you to teach me how to do that someday. Now. Wait a minute. Ava finally piped up as she got up off the floor, it's not like I talk that much. Sure, I believe you. Ava didn't say anything in response, choosing to just pout instead, probably coming to the conclusion that there wasn't much point in trying to push back any further. Alright then, Ava, can you go and make your way down to the kitchen? I've already spoken to staff here and they are willing to let you use it. I've also left the rest of what I bought there ready for you to work your magic. But, look, you've already had all day with Kit, and I'm pretty sure she would really appreciate a warm meal. Raynal interrupted, glancing over at me. Ava let out a sigh. Fine. Then she left the room, leaving just Raynal and me. All right, 
now I have you all to myself for a bit. Hearing those words, my body started to pull back instinctively. Hey now, don't worry so much, I've just got something I want to give you, you can turn it down if you want, okay? Well, she hasn't done anything bad. Yet, while I wasn't entirely convinced of her intentions, I still decided to nod, to which Randall simply responded with a smile before turning and grabbing something out of the basket she had brought with her. So, I don't know how exactly you want me to give this to you? Are you okay with me coming closer? I don't know. Raynal looked into my eyes, clearly expecting something, but I just couldn't bring myself to respond to her. I want to say yes, but I just can't trust you. Here, how about this? Rinal said as she approached the far end of the bed, I'll leave it here, and you can come grab it when I move away again. Good? I nodded, and Rainal did exactly as she said she would, placing something wrapped in paper at the far end of the bed before moving back. Slowly, I crawled over to the other side of the bed, keeping my eyes on Rainal the whole time, just in case. But I managed to grab the package and move back without her doing anything. Rainal didn't say anything once I had retrieved the package but just looked unexpectedly. Carefully, I unfolded the paper wrapping, making sure not to tear it. What was inside was a long black piece of fabric. It was the same color as my hair when it was covered by my shadow, which meant it was also the same color as. A tear started to well up in my eye. Whoa there, it's just a scarf, Rinal blurted it out clearly a little panicked. But the tears didn't stop. You couldn't understand. I took off my makeshift scarf before gently wrapping the new one around my neck. It's warm. Raynal didn't try to interrupt after that. I stayed there, trying to sort out my thoughts, or at least I was, until Ava came back into the room carrying three plates of food. Huh? Ava turned towards Raynal before blurting out, what did you do to her? Just. Rain it and Ava, it's not the time. Shockingly, Ava did what she was told without saying anything back. At the same time, Raynal grabbed one of the plates that Ava had brought with her and took it over to the far end of the bed, just like she did with the scarf. Now, I'm sure the cooks here could do a great job, but once you taste Ava's cooking, just, you know, ah, you'll get what I mean when you try some. Looking over at the plate of food that had been left on the bed, it was clear that it had been put together by someone very skilled but that might also just be my hunger affecting my vision. Everything on the plate looked good, but there was one thing that I couldn't take my eyes off. A large slab of meat sat in the middle of the plate. Have I ever had meat? Despite my reservations about these people, I quickly approached the food with my eyes locked squarely on whatever meat that was. The bread they gave me wasn't bad, but what if? But meat. My hands unconsciously moved towards the meat picking it up and bringing it up to my mouth. I know I shouldn't. But, I took a bite. It's good. It's so good. Why have I never had this before? My mind was filled with those thoughts as the meat quickly vanished, along with everything else that came with it. It was almost like I had blacked out, as it was there one second and gone the next. You alright there? Raynal asked, laughing slightly. I get that we have Ava to patch you up but we can't have you getting sick cause you're eating like that. Is there more? I want more. All of a sudden, Raina let out a sigh before getting up and placing her own plate down in front of me. Go ahead. I had something to eat on the way back. Raina said, gesturing towards the plate of food, just take it a bit slower this time. Nobody is going to take it away from you. Can you read my mind? She then just smiled at me before going over to and opening the door. Ava. Can you please look over Kit? I've got something I need to do quickly. Ava responded by giving a thumbs up, her mouth still full of food. Seeing that, Raina left the room. Not wanting to be ungrateful, I dug into the second plate of food. She gave it to me, so she can't complain later. Once again, the food just seemed to vanish. When I came back to my senses, I could see the sun setting outside the window. This food is powerful. While I was still in awe of the food. The door opened again. Raynal had come back into the room, although this time, she looked a bit different. As soon as Ava laid eyes on her, she burst out laughing. I myself was somehow more speechless than before, even my thoughts completely stopped for a second. You can't be serious. Ava blurted out between her laughter. What? Raynal responded, blushing slightly. 
I thought it would help Kit open up to me. Raynal had come back into the room sporting a new pair of purple cat ears on top of her head. Why would that change anything? Why would that change anything? Ava asked, still laughing. Huh? Are they both psychic? I thought she had some bad experiences with humans and, you know didn't want to talk to me cause, well, I am one. Why would that work? She didn't talk to me either, and I'm not human. Um, because I'm cuter? Rinal responded, attempting to strike a pose. Something started to well up in my throat watching this exchange. At least it did until I couldn't hold it in anymore, and a small laugh escaped my lips. I quickly brought my hands up to my mouth to hide it. Although I was clearly unsuccessful. Huh. The two exclaimed in unison. See, I told you. Rainal shouted. No. That wasn't her talking to you. Ava argued. She was just laughing at how stupid you look. That's good enough for me. Just like that, what little of the day was left turned into a blur. Eventually, the little light that came from the sunset disappeared, casting the city into darkness once again. All right then, it's been a long day, Rinal said. I guess we'll call it a night here. The two of us will head back to our room so you can get some sleep. Sure, that sounds good, Ava mumbled as she started to yawn. Rainal started to get up off the floor. But before fully standing up, she paused. I looked down and saw my hand latched onto the hem of her shirt. What? My mind instantly started to spiral out of control, trying to figure out what had just happened. It was an accident. But I still haven't let go. I shouldn't be doing this. But I don't want to be alone. Not again. Raina looked down at my hand and then to my face before silently gesturing for Ava to come over. She tried whispering to her, but thanks to my ears. I could still clearly make out what she was saying. Ava, go grab me a blanket. And some bread too. You know you didn't have to give me your plate. Ava left the room and quickly came back in with a blanket, which I assumed had been wrapped around a loaf of bread, so I couldn't see it. I guess I'll just stay right here tonight. Rinal said, settling in on the floor next to the bed. Ava, just go back to our room. I'll see you in the morning. Sure, sure, Ava said waving her hand as she left the room, clearly quite tired herself. Raynal didn't say anything further and just wrapped the blanket around herself. I got myself into the bed, pulling the covers over me before hugging my tail. I'm just doing this because of the food. Sleep well now, Raynal quietly whispered. I'll keep you company for as long as you need. Yeah, it's just for the food. Chapter 12 a sister's frustrations. Alaria Pov. I'm glad that she has finally found some decent people. Only took seven years. I was just finishing looking through the little Kitsune's day. Ever since that incident, I've made it part of my routine to check in on her at least once a day, just hoping that something would change. After all this time, there was finally some good news. Maybe with this, my sister will. I was so worried that she would go on a rampage as soon as she found out what had happened to the poor Kitsune but she never did. The spirit that I had left with my sister came and got me as soon as she woke up, and of course, I went over to her as soon as I could, expecting the worst, but in the five years since, it's about time for me to go and visit again anyway. I got rid of the panel that was showing the little Kitsune's day before getting up and making my way over to my sister's domain. As soon as I got there, I made my way over to the door in the back of the main room and tried to open it, but it wouldn't budge. Still locked. Sister, isn't it time for you to come out yet? I called out, hoping for some kind of a response, but no sound came from the other side of the door. It has been like this ever since she woke up, she has just refused to come out or even just talk. The only saving grace is that she hasn't stopped me from entering her domain altogether, I've just had to hope that it meant she was at least willing to hear me out. I sat down on the floor with my back against the door. I know you've been watching that little kitsune. You saw the good news, right? She's found herself some good people. If you're worried, I can vouch for them myself. I've been following that purple-haired one for a little while now. Is it just not good enough? Look, Ovia, I get that you're upset, but you didn't do anything wrong. No. A barely audible voice came from behind the door. Finally, a tear started to well up in my eye but I held it in. Right now, what I needed to do was help her come out again. Come on, if you're going to argue with me, at least open the door and do it properly. Not good enough? I've been here at least once every month since she woke up. I had really hoped that with this good news, 
she would at least be willing to come out for a bit. She even responded to me for the first time since she locked herself away, unless that was just me hearing things in an attempt to keep my hopes up. What's it going to take? Thinking that she still wasn't going to come out this time, I started to get up off the floor. However, as I grasped at the door handle for support, I started to fall backwards. Huh? I managed to steady myself before falling over, but that wasn't important. The door. It's opened. It actually opened. I made my way into the room as quickly as I could, just in case my sister changed her mind. Looking around the room, it didn't take long to find her. In the corner of the room was a disheveled mass of black fluff, sitting on the floor, hugging her knees against her chest, staring intently at a panel showing a certain white-haired kitsune sleeping. Come on, you should take better care of yourself. Rather than trying to get her to move from where she had sat, I made my way over and sat down on the floor next to her. So, what were you saying to me before? Fine, I'll just have to tell you again then, it's not you. No. My sister interrupted. She startled me with her response. I wanted to correct her, but no words came out. It is my fault. It's all my fault. If I hadn't given her that stupid blessing, she wouldn't have gone there that day. She wouldn't have had to go through that. She continued on like that for a while, although it was impossible to make out what she was saying as she had started crying very loudly. Once she had eventually calmed down a bit, I pulled her closer and hugged her. Stop beating yourself up about it. You know that it wasn't your fault. MMPH. She tried to argue with me again but I just pulled her head further into my chest so she couldn't get any words out. That little kitsune hasn't even blamed you for what happened back then. She stopped resisting immediately after I said that. She definitely already knew that herself. She probably hasn't done anything but watch her since she woke up. Seeing an opportunity, I tried to run my fingers through my sister's tails, but they got caught on something almost instantly. It really has been a while since you took care of yourself hasn't it? MHMM. I responded by letting out a long sigh. Where do you keep your brushes? My sister pointed over to a box up against the wall. I pulled the box over to us and took out one of the brushes. Let's get started then. MHMM. After separating her tails, something jumped out to me. Inside of her tails, there were a few things that were not supposed to be there. Sister. You could have at least taken the plushies out of your tails. I got started trying to remove one of them but it wouldn't leave the tail's fluffy embrace. It was almost as if the plushie had become part of her tail. Even you have to admit that this is a bit ridiculous. Since it was clearly going to take a while, I just continued trying to slowly untangle each of the plushies from the tails one at a time, following up with a thorough brushing. So, now can I ask you some questions? MHM. So, how are you doing? I guess she wasn't expecting such a mundane question. Fine. Is that true? I didn't know that this is what Ovia being fine looked like. Alright then, let's try something you might be more interested in. Why did you never talk to the little Kitsune the last few years? I know you want to, I said as I finished with her first tale. I don't deserve to. I couldn't help her. Well, that might be how you feel. But what about her? Do you think she thinks of you that way? My sister didn't reply. Instead, she brought one of her tails around in front of her and buried her face in it. Come on, I was working on that one. I decided it wasn't worth fighting over which tail was being cleaned, so I pulled a different tail into my lap. Well, you probably couldn't talk the way you are now anyway. What? Why? She blurted out. Just look at yourself. You can't show this to her. Was that too much too soon? Pass. My sister muttered under her breath. What was that? Pass me a brush. She shouted in response. A small chuckle escaped my lips as I handed her a brush, and she started working on the tail she had taken from me. It's good to see you excited like this again. After that, we spent a while in silence just focusing on cleaning up her tails. It was not a quick endeavor. Once we had finally removed all of the plushies and my sister's tails at least looked presentable a great idea came into my head. I just don't think this is good enough. What? What else do I need to do? We should really do a full deep clean. It has been five years, after all. Fine, I'll do it. Once again, I let out a chuckle. I knew my cute sister was still in there. All right. I guess that means you should come with me back to my domain. Then we can set something up. My sister shot up from the floor as soon as those words left my lips. What are you waiting for? I got myself up off the floor and linked arms with my sister, 
thinking that I was going to be the one pulling her all the way to my domain. But to my pleasant surprise, she was the one who dragged me along. It took a few years, but at least she's still willing to try. Chapter 13 Why Did I Stay? Come on, it's been two weeks since we picked you up, and you're still not gonna talk? I just stared blankly at Raynal, as usual. Don't you ever get tired of doing this? We were sitting in the room while waiting for Avit to finish preparing lunch. It might have been a bit tiring to deal with these two every day but the food is very good. I didn't know if I would be able to go back to how I used to live if I stayed much longer. All I've managed to get out of you is one laugh. How can that be right? Why haven't you just given up yet? No matter how many days I had spent with these two, I just couldn't bring myself to say anything. It's not that I didn't want to, it's just that whenever I tried, nothing came out. The words would always get stuck in my throat. I really should think about leaving soon. Who knows when they're going to show their true colors. While I was busy contemplating my escape, the door swung open, and Ava made her way into the room carrying three plates piled high with food. So, who's hungry? You don't have to ask that every time. Just give me food. Raynal responded while banging on the table. Ava chuckled as she placed Raynal's plate down in front of her before quickly turning around and making her way over to me. And here you go. I reached out my hands to take the plate from her, but she quickly pulled it back. You know, on second thought, just give me the food. It's the only reason I'm still here. Now, now, don't give me that look. I'm just wanting to propose something of a mutually beneficial agreement of sorts. I'll just assume that means you're interested, Avo continued, you see, I have quite a lot of food here, and I think I would be willing to part with some. After hearing that there was a chance to get more food, my ear started to twitch involuntarily, so I quickly grabbed it with my hand to get it under control. I'll give you a chance, it's just that I would like to get something in return. I stared at her, waiting for her to tell me what she wanted. Not that I couldn't guess what it was going to be but I did decide to give her a chance. All I would need from you, is to be able to touch your ta. Before she even finished asking, I had already turned away from her, holding my tail tight against my chest. You can't have it. It's mine, Ava. Raynal shouted, how many more times are you going to try this? Be but, why should you get to touch her tail before me? But it's my tail. The two of them just burst out laughing, seeming to forget about me as Ava danced around with my plate still in her hand. I looked over at Raynal, hoping she noticed what was going on so she could sort it out for me. It took a little bit, but once Raynal started to calm down, she ended up making eye contact with me and quickly realized what had happened. Hey, don't you think it's a bit rude to wave food around in front of a hungry little fox like that, huh? Oh. Ava turned a bright shade of red as she realized just what she had been doing this whole time. She quickly laid the plate down in front of me before running over to Raynal and eating her own food, making sure not to look up at me. Serves you right. On the plate was a whole bird that was about the size of my head, although I wasn't sure what kind of bird it was. But that didn't really matter to me, the only important thing was that it tasted good. I tore off some of the cooked flesh with my nails before biting into it. How is it always this good? Ava, you don't think it's too early to introduce her to a fork, right? That might be a good idea, Ava responded, stifling a chuckle. I know how to use a fork. I just don't want to. Deciding it would be better to just ignore their comments, I went back to focusing on the food, scarfing it all down as quickly as possible. I won't get to use a fork after I leave anyway. Hey, Raynal nudges Ava's shoulder, you might need to get ready. I think our little kit might have a stomach cake soon. Again? Ava blurted out, come on, just eat slower. It's my food, so I can choose what to do with it. Right on cue, a slight pain started to form in my stomach. How does she know? Raynal somehow always seemed to know when things like this were going to happen. Raynal's intuition was just too good. She always seemed to know exactly what was going to happen. Sometimes, it even felt like she was able to read my mind at times, but that couldn't be true. If it were, she wouldn't have been trying so hard to make me speak. Is it a special ability she has? While I was busy thinking, the pain in my stomach gradually started to get worse. At first, it was just slowly getting more painful, but all of a sudden, it spread out from my stomach across my whole body. All the muscles in my body started to tense up as waves of pain started to pulse through my body, starting in my stomach and moving to the ends of my limbs. 
it hurts. What is this? While my mind was racing, trying to figure out what was going on, a terrifying thought crossed my mind. What if? Poison? She knew it was going to happen. How else would she know? I felt tears start to well up in my eyes, but it wasn't because of the pain. Not again. Not again. I should have just left. Why did I stay? I knew I shouldn't have trusted them. All of a sudden, I heard shouting coming from the other side of the room. Ah, no, 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 no. Raynal ran up to me, picking me up off the bed. Ava, do something, anything. What? Can you not have me dying on you? You want me alive? Why? Do you get paid more? I'm trying. Okay. It's just not working. Ava shouted back in response as she grabbed my arm. What do you mean it's not working? I don't know. Ava responded, sounding more tired than just moments before. I felt Trainel's arms start to tense up around me. What do I do now? My body won't move. How do I get away? What else can we do? Raina asked, starting to calm down a bit. A kid shouldn't have to go through this. Stop asking me. I don't know. Ava was still standing next to me, trying to heal me with her magic, although it didn't look like she would be able to do so for much longer. There's gotta be Raynal suddenly stop talking. What? There's gotta be what? What are you going to do to me? There is that temple, but Raynal looked down at me, but I couldn't quite make out her expression through the tears in my eyes. Ava, pass me your cloak. I've gotta try something. Ava didn't say anything. She just went over to where her cloak was and threw it towards us. Raynal then gently wrapped me up in the cloak, seemingly trying to make sure she didn't hurt me. Look, I know this isn't what you want to do. Raynal paused momentarily, but that temple is probably the only place in the city which might have a better healer than Ava. What temple? What do you mean? Can you manage that thing where you change the color of your hair? Why should I? Please, I don't want to take you there, but I don't have another choice. Raynal said, sounding desperate, I'm not losing you like this. What do you mean? Are you not just going to sell me off to that baron? Ava then came back over and put her hands back on my arm. All right, let's try. Again. Is it okay for me to hope for something again? Is it okay for me to trust you? I don't think I can, but what else can I do? I forced out a nod, and my shadow moved to cover my hair and tail, dyeing them both black. Thank you, Rhinel said, sounding relieved. Please, don't be lying. Ava Rhinel paused as soon as she saw Ava's condition. Just go lay down. You look like you'll hit the ground any second now. Ava responded before falling over face first onto my bed. All right then, let's do this. Rhinel said, pulling the cloak over my ears. If something goes wrong, I'll just get you out of there myself. What? What could go wrong? Don't worry, I won't let anything happen to you. I don't have a choice. Immediately following that, Rhinel threw the door to the room open and ran out of the inn, ignoring the reactions from all of the staff we passed by. Once she had gotten outside, she continued running down the streets, although she made sure to look down at me to make sure she wasn't making me too uncomfortable. Where are we even going? I forced myself to turn my neck just enough to see what was in front of us. As soon as I did, we passed by the Black Stone Temple. What? Go back. If I have to go to a temple, I want to go to that one. Despite Raynal normally seeming to know what I wanted, this time, she clearly didn't as she just kept on sprinting. She was heading straight for the temple on the other side of the square, a temple made entirely from white stone. I don't want to go there. There are too many people. What if they see my hair? Hold on a bit longer, Raino blurted out. If anyone can heal you, they'll be there. How do you know? They have to be. She said that last part under her breath, although I heard her clearly thanks to my ears. Fine, I'll trust you. It's all I can do now. Chapter 14 why do you care about me so much? Raynal continued running across the square until she was right in front of the temple, where she was stopped by the crowd of people outside. Gods! How am I supposed to get you in there? Raynal said as she looked towards the entrance, I could just push through them, but she looked down at me for a moment, right as a wave of pain spread over my body again, causing all my muscles to tense up. I just can't risk hurting you. Raynal looked around frantically while continuing to mutter to herself, trying to figure out what she could do. It hurts. It really hurts. It was only gradual, 
but the pain was getting worse, it felt like my body was trying to tear itself apart with each wave of pain that made its way through my body. But, without warning, the pain just started to go away. It didn't completely vanish, but it became bearable. What? Happened? I tried to force myself up to get a better view of what was going on, but as I did, something pushed down on my chest, stopping me from moving. Looking down, I saw that someone had placed their hand on my chest and that there was a soft glow coming where they were touching me. I followed the person's arm to see who they were, but all I could see was a person in a pure white robe with a hood covering their face. Who, without thinking, I started to move one of my arms in an attempt to get Reyna's attention. But as soon as I did, the person lifted their hood slightly, revealing their face. They were a woman with two golden eyes that were glowing softly each with a white ring inside of the iris that glowed ever so slightly brighter. She simply put one finger up to her lips while smiling slightly. Why should I trust you? Ignoring what the woman wanted, I tried to get Reynal's attention again, although it didn't seem necessary, as Reynal suddenly jerked me back while also taking a step away from the woman. Who are you? Reynal shouted before looking down at me and quickly adjusting my cloak to make sure I was still hidden. Whoa, please calm down. The woman held her hands up in front of her, I already know what's going on. I also know you really don't want to cause a scene here. Looking around, a few people had already turned to look at what was going on, although they quickly lost interest as Raina let aside to help herself calm down a bit. But, why should I trust you? Raina said as she pulled me closer to her chest. I, uh wasn't told that part. Raynal just silently stared back at the woman while occasionally glancing down at me. She did help me. It didn't matter how either of us felt, whatever she did to me made the pain go away, not that Raynal knew that. Oh, I know. This usually works. The woman suddenly blurted out as she lifted her hood just enough so that Raynal could see her eyes, so? Is that good enough? No. Of course not. Raynal suddenly shouted. It's your fault she's even in this situation, huh? But I've never seen her before. What did she do? Whoa, please calm down. That's just a misunderstanding? Yeah, a misunderstanding. A misunderstanding. Reynolds' arms tensed around me. Can you really look at this child right now and just say everything that has happened to her was a misunderstanding? I understand, just. Can we talk about this inside? The woman said backing away from Raynal while pointing at the temple. I would also not like to draw attention to myself. It was silent for a moment, and then Raynal looked at me again, although this time, she showed me a pained face. It was clear that she was considering the offer if only to get into the temple. She did help me. As I was thinking about my options, another wave of pain pulsed across my body, stopping any rational thoughts from forming in my mind. It's too much. I don't care anymore. Despite the pain I was in, I forced myself to nod at Reno. Huh? Are you sure? Reynal said, surprised. I nodded again, tears welling up in my eyes once again. I just want it to be over. Reno bit her lip before eventually responding, fine, great, just follow me. The woman immediately started walking away. Wait, I thought you said we were going to talk in the temple? Um, yes? The woman said, seeming genuinely surprised by the question. Then where are you going? The temple is over there, Reynal said, gesturing towards the temple's entrance. What? You want to try to get through all of them? The woman asked. I know you could easily get us through there. I already told you. I don't want to draw attention to myself. The woman kept on walking away. I know another way in. It's better. Trust me. Raynal hesitated for a moment, but despite her worries, she quickly decided to follow the woman as she walked around the back of the temple. The woman abruptly stopped in front of the temple's rear wall before looking around the area to see if anyone was watching us. All right, coast is clear. She then gently knocked on the wall in some kind of pattern. Nothing happened. I can't be dealing with this right now, Raynal blurted out as she turned away getting ready to leave. But right as she did, a section of the wall slowly sank into the ground, revealing a passage into the temple. What did I tell you? I knew another way in. And it's a pretty cool one if I don't say so myself. Really? No reaction? From either of you? Ah, whatever, we've got something more important to tend to first. The woman walked into the passage, with Raynal following close behind. It didn't take long for us to exit the passage and enter a large white room. As soon as we entered, 
a ball of light went up next to the woman's ear. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Just let me work my magic first, the woman said, waving her hand at the ball of light. What have I gotten myself into? All right then. Just lay her down here, and I'll figure out what's going on, although I already have a good guess from what I've heard. Raynal did as the woman said and laid me down on top of a table. I'm right here, okay? Rynal said, holding on to my hand. The woman immediately came up right next to me and placed her hands on my chest, and they started to glow with the same light from before. Almost immediately, the pain that I felt started to vanish and my muscles finally began to relax. Neither of them said anything, although I could see Rainal looking on with worry out of the corner of my eye. Why do you care about me so much? While I was busy contemplating Rainal's intentions, the pain ended up completely disappearing as if nothing was wrong in the first place. All right. She should be good. For a while at least, the woman said as she wiped her brow. So, what was it? Raynal shouted, what was it? Calm down, okay? It wasn't anything serious. The woman said as she grabbed onto Raynal's wrist, her hand gently glowing, she was just going through some growing pains. Very bad growing pains but it was just growing pains nonetheless. Raynal calmed down dramatically after hearing that, but I don't know if that was because of what she said or whatever magic she was using. That's it? That's all it was? Raynal said, audibly relieved. Yeah, that's it. I'm sure you noticed she's a little small for her age. Because she's started eating well recently, her body has just decided, let's grow all at once. Which isn't too comfortable. Although, even considering that, Hers were particularly rough. Thank the gods, Rhinel said, falling into one of the chairs lining the room and burying her face in her hands. Before you relax too much, we're not quite done yet, the woman said as she sat down next to Rhinel. She'll probably end up experiencing them a few more times before she's finished growing, so you might need to come back over here every so often. That's fine, Rhinel responded, still holding her head in her hands. That's fine. I can do that. All right, then, while I discuss how we can set that up with you, I actually have something for the little fox to do. For me, you see that room over there, the woman pointed to a door in the corner of the room, just go in there. There's someone who really wants to meet you. What? Who? Do I have to? Raina lifted her head out of her hands, seemingly about to say something, but the woman simply pointed to her eyes, and then Raina remained silent. I looked over at Raina confused at what just happened, but she just nodded at me. Don't worry about things so much. I'm just going to talk about some stuff for adults to worry about with your guardian? Friend? Mother? Ah, whatever, you know what I mean. You can go have some fun. The woman smiled at me. I can guarantee, she's quite nice. She hasn't done anything bad to me yet. I got up off the table and walked over to the door. Looking back at the two of them just in case this was something that they had planned together, but they were just talking to each other, already ignoring me. When I opened the door all that I could see was an empty room. Where is the person? Maybe this is for the better. I walked into the room, slowly closing the door behind me while keeping my hand on the handle and my foot in the way just in case someone was going to jump out at me. But before I could even fully close the door, my vision went white. What? I knew it was a trap. Oh. Do go tell my sister that she needs to get ready. A woman's voice that I didn't recognize came out of nowhere. What? Who are you? I looked around, trying to find where the voice came from, but no matter where I looked, all I could see was a white void. This will be fun. I get to meet you first. Chapter 15 The Goddess of Light Um, hello. Why are you looking over there? Over where? It didn't matter where I was looking. There was just an endless expanse of white stretching out in every direction. What's going on? As the voice said that to me, a light breeze brushed over my face as if someone was waving something in front of my face. I instinctively stepped back to try and get away from whatever was in front of me. Oh, I know what's going on. Then I heard a snap, and the world suddenly opened up in front of me. There was a garden that seemed to stretch far beyond the horizon. It was filled with various marble structures that themselves were adorned with vines that sprouted white flowers. Sorry about that. I had the lights up a bit too high. It's a bad habit of mine. I spun around to try and find the source of the voice, but as soon as I did, I froze up. Standing in front of me was a very tall woman, 
probably taller than Raynil, even without considering the extra height coming from the two fox ears adorning her head. She had the same golden eyes as the woman from the temple, although the inner white ring was much brighter. Her hair, reaching down to her hips, was a radiant blonde, along with a matching set of nine tails that poked out just above her head. I'm sure you have a lot you want to ask me about, but how about we get comfortable first? The woman said as she gestured towards an empty space. What have I gotten myself into? Come on, come on, you'll figure it out, the woman said as she picked me up and carried me over. Huh? As soon we reached the area she had gestured to, I was just dropped. Huh? I braced myself, fully expecting to hit the floor, but it didn't hurt. Instead, it felt like I had fallen onto a cloud. See, I knew you would figure it out, the woman said softly smiling at me, go ahead, make yourself comfortable. Looking down, I could see that a chair had appeared beneath me out of nowhere. The woman walked a short distance away from me, and then a similar looking chair appeared, which she sat on herself. The woman just stared at me, looking me up and down, it felt like she was judging me for some reason. Can I just leave? I knew you were quiet but I was really expecting questions to start pouring out of you by now. I have plenty of questions. But why would I ask you? You do know who I am, right? Why would I know some random person? Really? That's a first. I haven't been in this situation for. I don't even remember how many years now. What do you mean? Well then, I'm Alaria, although you can just call me Arya, as I think we will be meeting quite often from now on. Still not ringing any bells? No, this is actually a little fun. Unfortunately for me, I don't have all the time in the world to play with you today, as I don't want to leave a certain someone waiting too long. I knew it. They were trying to sell me off. It didn't matter that I couldn't find an exit, I just needed to get out of there. I jumped from my seat and was about to start running. But Laria said something that froze me in place. Most people call me the goddess of light, although I am also the goddess of transformation and titles. What? As soon as the word goddess reached my ears, they began to twitch. A goddess. But you're the wrong one. Oh, so you do have a voice. Looking up at the goddess, her smile got noticeably wider. Well, luckily for you, I happen to know quite a few goddesses, so if I'm the wrong one, Maybe we can sort something out? She might be lying, but... I climbed back onto the chair, looking up at the goddess while making sure to avoid any eye contact just in case she would find it rude. Maybe. Good. So the first question I have for you is, how are you feeling? Did Selica do a good job? Selica? She's my emissary of light. Her eyes should look similar to mine? The goddess pointed at her eyes. So that's who that person from the temple was? I nodded. But the goddess didn't respond. She just kept looking at me as if she was expecting something else. I don't want to, but if there's even a chance, why yes, gee goddess. The goddess's smile faded. I thought I already told you my name, Eolaria. Once again, the goddess didn't respond to me but continued to stare. Hey Arya, there you go. Her smile came back instantly. Now, don't go forgetting it. Is it okay for me to refer to a goddess like that? W8. What if she can read my mind? I'm sorry, Arya. Looking up, Arya's expression didn't change, but that didn't mean that she couldn't read my mind, she might have just been pretending. I'll just be safe. I don't want to anger a goddess. A baron was already too much. Well, I'm glad she did a good job. I know that someone would be quite upset if you weren't alright, and unfortunately, I myself wouldn't be able to help you very much. After all, I'm the goddess of light, not the goddess of life. Arya said as she leaned back in her chair. Am I supposed to say something? Fortunately for me, Arya continued to talk. Actually, speaking of that certain someone, it would probably be good for me to apologize to you. What happened is partially my fault, and I'd rather you didn't hold a grudge against me. That'd make our future meetings a bit awkward. Why would a goddess need to apologize to me? I couldn't do anything to her even if I wanted to. You seem confused. Maybe I should just start at the beginning? Yeah, I'll do that. How much do you know about magic? Nothing. Alright then, it might be a bit hard for a child to understand, so I'll try to make things simple. Arya waved her hand in the air, and a large panel appeared out of nowhere, showing a bunch of colorful semi-transparent blobs. It looked similar to a stained glass window. You can treat this like a map, although it has been quite heavily simplified, 
Each of those colored areas represents some kind of magic. Is it simple enough so far? Why yes, Arya. You really need to stop stuttering so much. I expect we'll be talking to each other quite a bit in the future, and it will be difficult if you're always this nervous. Why would I want to talk to you again? There is only one thing I want from you. I didn't say anything, and Arya just continued with her explanation. Well, all the way in the top right corner of this map is where light magic resides. She pointed at the large white area on the panel, you've probably already noticed, but this light magic area overlaps quite a lot with that pale green area, that's life magic, although I think most people call it healing magic these days. Arya looked at me, probably waiting for me to confirm that I understood, so I nodded, although I didn't really understand why she was telling me all of this. So. What that means is that many people who end up with light magic also end up with life magic, as they overlap. But what does that have to do with me? Now, on to the more unfortunate part. Sometimes, if someone has a particularly good affinity for some kind of magic, it can manifest in some physical change. My mind started to put together some things, but it still didn't make sense why they were related to me. Your white hair comes from a very high affinity with light magic even higher than my own national affinity, which is why I myself don't have white hair. Arya ran her fingers through her hair, my affinity as the goddess of light only came after I ascended. Funny enough, when I did ascend, what changed were my eyes, not my hair. You might not believe it, but a long, long time ago, I used to have green eyes, but anyway, I can show you where that should put you on the map. Arya interrupted me and continued with her explanation. You would be all the way there, right in the corner, where light magic doesn't overlap with anything. A small gray dot appeared right up against the edge of the map. Should? Now, the reason you get called a heretic in that city comes from here. As light and life magic are so close to each other, most people are under the impression that they are actually the same thing, or more accurately, people think that light magic heals people. Arya let out a sigh and paused for a short moment before continuing. People with white hair get light magic but won't be able to use any life magic and, as such, can't heal people. What? Arya leaned forward before continuing, because you can't heal anyone, people think you are just imitating light magic, which they believe is an offense to me. That's it? Everything I've had to go through. It was just a misunderstanding. Both my ears and tail drooped down, causing Arya to start panicking. Wait. You can't be sad. You need to go meet my sister after this. Arya got up and came over to me before picking me up once again, this time hugging me tightly against her chest. It took a little while, but I eventually managed to calm down. When did I become so comfortable around her? I forced my head out of Arya's chest to ask the only question that had come to mind, but, Arya, how's that your fault? Well, it isn't something that I did myself, but at the same time, I can't say I've helped very much. What does that mean? Well. Just look at me. I'm supposed to be the pinnacle of light magic, yet I don't even have white hair, so even when I tell them the truth, they just ignore it. But once again, I was cut off. Appointing Selica as the emissary of light also doesn't help, she doesn't have white hair either and isn't even that good with light magic. The only reason she was chosen was that she was very good with life magic while still having some light affinity. T then, why did you pick her? That's because it's what those people need and I need to make sure that I keep my relevance, especially because I'm busy protecting someone else. She doesn't seem like a bad person, and she is a goddess. I, forgive you. Well, thank you very much, little Kitsune. Arya smiled at me before putting her hand on my head, which started to glow, that there is a little gift as a sign of you accepting my apology. You didn't need to do that. It wasn't even your fault. I said it under my breath, and Arya didn't react but she probably still heard it as her smile grew wider once again. Chapter 16, One Step at a Time While I wouldn't mind us staying like this a bit longer, I think you might have some things to do, Arya said, looking down at me in her arms. Arya put me back down in the chair before kneeling down in front of me. Now, I know you still have at least one question left on your mind, so this is the time for you to ask. Alright, this might be my only chance. Um, did do you know? A goddess, as she looks like a fox. I said while pointing at my own ears. Well, I happen to know quite a few goddesses who look like foxes, 
Aria's ears twitched, I look like a fox too, although I know you're not looking for me, as she had. Be black fur and be black eyes. I looked at Aria, hoping that my little description would be good enough because I knew nothing else about them. A goddess that looks like a fox and has black fur and eyes, please. I do know a goddess like that. I know them very well, in fact. Then, I abruptly stopped myself from talking. Should I even be trying to talk to them again? They didn't respond to me. For seven years, they must have had a reason. What if it was my fault? Aria leaned forward and brushed a strand of hair away from my face. Don't worry so much, the goddess that I know would love to meet you. I can guarantee it myself. But how would you know? It might not even be the right one. How about this? You can go over to her temple, and if she wants to meet you, she'll bring you up herself. Okay? But, do I even want to know? What if? She actually doesn't want to talk to me, still. All right. I muttered. That's good. You don't know how much this would mean to my sister. Sister? Unfortunately, it also means that we need to say goodbye to each other for now, Arya said, spreading her arms apart while looking directly at me. I knew exactly what she wanted, but my body still hesitated. After waiting for a few seconds, she picked me up out of the seat and hugged me tightly once again. One step at a time. You'll get there eventually. MHM. I don't believe you, but I want to. Arya carried me over to where I first met her. When you get out there, just head to the other temple. I know you already know which one I'm talking about. Arya said as she said put me down. MHM. Well then, hopefully, we will get to meet again soon, little Kitsune, she said while waving at me. Maybe next time you can be the one to give me a hug instead. As soon as she finished talking, everything around me started to turn white. Wait, gee goodbye Arya. I don't know if she heard me, as everything had already turned completely white by the time I started talking. After just a few short moments, I found myself back in the empty room from the temple, collapsed on the floor. I pulled myself up off the floor while checking over myself to make sure everything was still there. Was that even real? As I thought through what just happened, I found my hand gravitating towards my forehead, where Arya had supposedly given me a gift. I hope it was. I need to get to the other temple. Pushing the door to the room open, I could see Raynal and Selica still talking, although Selica had her hood down, revealing her brown hair that had been tied in a ponytail. Oh. Are you back already? Selica asked as soon as she laid eyes on me peeking out from behind the door. I nodded as I walked out of the room, and Raynal came over to me before picking me up. Everyone has been picking me up today. I told you she's quite nice. Selica smiled at me. I finished telling Raynal how to get you back in here if you start feeling any more pain, so you're free to go now. I imagine you would want to get some rest yourself. It has been a bit of an eventful day. I grabbed Raynal's shirt and pulled myself closer to her. I think we'll do just that, Raynal responded in my stead. We do need to go back and check up on Ava after all, but... Again, thank you so much, Selica. I don't know what I would have done without you. And... Sorry. For before, Selica responded simply by smiling and waving as Raynal, with me still in her arms, left the temple using the same passage we entered from. After leaving the temple, the sun outside seemed dim in comparison to the garden Arya was in. All right, let's get you home quickly. Rhinel said as she pulled my cloak over my ears. I know you don't like being out in public like this, but that's not what I want right now. Rhinel started walking back to the inn, probably more worried about Ava now that I was fine. It would be nice if I stopped my thoughts there. I don't need to think about that right now. There's something more important. I waited patiently as Raynal made her way across the square, but as soon as we got near the Black Stone Temple, I summoned all the strength that I had to try and force my way out of Raynal's grip. Well there, Kit. Raynal blurted out, what's gotten into you? Raynal struggled to hold me down without hurting me but she eventually managed to find her grip and pulled me in tightly against her chest again. Just let me go. I pointed towards the Black Stone Temple while looking directly into Raynal's eyes. Just leave me here alone if you have to. I want to know her answer, but... Raynal looked back and forth between me and the temple before letting out a loud sigh. Are you sure? If you aren't going to listen to me, then let me go. Once again, I started to struggle trying to force my way out of Raynal's grasp. Fine, I'll let you go there. 
just, I'm going with you, fine, let's go. Raynal carried me up to the black stone temple until we were in front of two large stone doors. One door had an intricate carving of a nine-tailed fox sleeping on a cloud while the other was blank as if it had been left unfinished. Throughout the entire time that I stayed here, I never even thought to try to open these doors. If it actually was that easy to meet the fox from my dreams all this time. Raynal set me down on the ground, and I instantly ran over to the doors to try and open them, but, they wouldn't budge. No matter how hard I pushed against them, they refused to open. Is that it? Is that your answer? Do you need some help? Raynal called over. Raynal let out a chuckle to herself before she came over and effortlessly pushed the large stone doors open. There you go. Really? Not even a thank you? I turned away from Raynal and made my way into the temple. This is more important. Inside the temple, it was dark. There wasn't a single window, but rather, the only light in the building came from a few dim candles that were haphazardly scattered around. Ah, what do you people want? A man's voice came from the far corner of the room. I didn't respond, instead, I tried to find out who the voice belonged to. It didn't take long as the sounds of chains being dragged along the floor started coming from a corner of the room. What is this? This isn't what I thought a temple for a goddess would be like, especially not for a goddess as nice as she was. The least you could do is respond. The owner of the voice came into view. This is why I can't stand people. He was a tall, Slender man with two large rabbit ears hanging down from the top of his head. His messy, short hair was pitch black, while his beady eyes were bright red. However, what drew most of my attention were the black shackles around his wrists and ankles, connected with long chains that extended into the darkness of the temple. It wasn't the fact that the man was wearing shackles that caught my attention, but rather, there was a feeling that I got from them. It felt familiar. Are you still not? All of a sudden, the man stopped talking and fell to the floor, accompanied by the sound of the chains slamming against the stone floor while holding onto his ears in his hands. I hear you. The man yelled, why can't you just use spirits like all the others? Maybe I should just leave. I started to back away, but the man started shouting again. Hold on. Just wait a minute. At this point, Raynal had stepped in front of me in an attempt to hide me from the man who was now crawling on the floor. You there, with the fox ears. Just hurry up and make your way in, the man said, looking directly at me. I really don't want to be screamed at again. Screamed at? Kit, let's just go home. I don't think this is where you wanted to go. No. I ignored Raynal and walked past her further into the temple. Wait. Raynal shouted, I need to do this. As I walked further into the darkness, the room seemed to get cooler. It's been a while since I felt this. Chapter 17, The Goddess of Darkness. I kept on walking, just hoping that somewhere in here, I would be able to find the fox from my dreams. That's all I need. Each step that I took seemed to drain me more than the last, but that didn't slow me down. It feels so close. After pushing through the darkness for a while, I could just about make out something in the distance, so I started running, ignoring my building fatigue. You're there. I know you are. You have to be. As I got closer, it became clear what was in front of me. It was a room made entirely from black stone bricks, and just like the temple, the only lighting was provided by a few dim candles scattered haphazardly around the room. Hanging from the ceiling were many large chains each ending with a single long spike at the end. Is that a dungeon? In the center of the room, there was a large throne that seemed to be made from darkness itself. I couldn't see if there was anyone on the throne due to how dark it was. It doesn't matter. They have to be there. I just kept on running until I could finally see the ground beneath my feet. Finally, welcome. A deep voice came out of nowhere, echoing throughout the whole room, causing me to freeze in place. Who? Looking up at the throne. I could now make out a woman sitting with one leg over the other, but it was too dark to be able to make out anything above their waist. Just looking at her, my body started to pull away from the pressure I felt. She seemed to be the same height as Arya, but she felt much more intimidating. From what I could see, she was wearing a foam fitting black dress along with high-heeled boots. From her back sprouted nine tails that blended seamlessly into the surrounding darkness. Adorning her arms were elbow-length gloves where the fingertips ended in sharp claws. What is this? Where's the fox? You may speak. The voice echoed throughout the room once again. This isn't right. This isn't what I wanted. I tried to turn away so I could leave, 
but it felt like something grabbed onto my legs before quickly letting go, although it was enough to root me in place. Go on, tell me your name. The woman started tapping her fingers against the throne, letting out sharp metallic clicks as each claw hit the armrest one at a time. No, this isn't. It didn't matter anymore, this wasn't what I wanted. I started running away, back into the darkness, hoping that I would find myself back at the temple. Raynal was right. All of a sudden, there was a loud crashing sound behind me, but I didn't turn back. I just need to leave. I managed a few more steps before getting tackled to the ground. Huh? This time, it was a different voice, a voice that was all too familiar to me. Oh no. What did I do? Before I could even try to get myself off the ground, I was picked up and carried back into the room. Ah. What do I do? The voice grew more panicked by the second. Should I just call Valeria here? She'd know what to do. I turned myself around so that I could see the face of the woman who was talking. She was beautiful, with straight black hair reaching down her back, crowned by two matching fox ears. But it was her eyes. Ever since I first saw them all those years ago, I have never forgotten what it was like to stare into them. The endless abyss that seemed to be contained within drew me in, but instead of being afraid, I felt excited. Is it? You? I muttered. What? The woman shouted, looking down at me. Are you okay? Did I poke you with the claws? I knew they were a bad idea. Oh, then. Then. What about this? The woman waved one of her tails, and the room instantly brightened up. Then, a bed appeared where the throne used to be, which the woman carefully laid me down on before removing her gloves and throwing them behind her. D don't sit up, just stay there. The woman turned and started to leave. Wait, don't leave me again. Not again. I sat myself up in the bed, which caused the woman to instantly turn around and frantically run back to me, placing her hand on my chest and gently pushing me back down. I said, D don't sit up. I, I can't make another M mistake. She turned away again, but this time, I grabbed onto her dress in an attempt to stop her. Wait, please. She froze. Is it you? Are you the one? I asked, my voice trembling slightly. W what one? Please. The fox. The fox from my dreams. Um. She seemed to be a little taken aback by the question. W what if? I am? What if she is the fox? What am I even supposed to say? I would. I looked to the side, feeling a little embarrassed. Thank you. Huh? The woman shouted again. Why would you thank me? It's my F fault. What? What's her fault? All she ever did was help me. What do you mean? I blurted out. If dot if I didn't give you that be blessing. The woman started to tear up and turned away from me. Then you wouldn't have gotten H hurt that day. Maybe. Maybe that's true. But. That blessing was. All I had for so long. But. That blessing was exactly what I asked for. I started to speak. You were the only one who listened to me. Isn't that enough? The woman continued to show her back to me, staying completely silent. I don't know how I would have survived without it. It has helped me. More times than I can even count. The woman still didn't move. Can you? At least tell me your name? I asked. Just that much would be enough. Ovia. Ovia. The only person who listened to me. Ovia. Thank you. My eyes started to tear up. Thank you so much. She still didn't turn around. At least, I got to talk to her again. I started to rein myself in a bit as it seemed that this was as much as I was going to get. She really didn't want to talk to me. Cough. I I do also have a title. Huh? Which is, I am known as the G Goddess of Darkness, Dreams and, even though I was looking at her back, I could see that she puffed her chest out as she spoke. She said the last thing so quietly that I couldn't hear what it was, even with my improved hearing. S so. What about why you? She asked, slightly deflating. What? You're in a name? My name? But. I don't remember my name. Why yes, I have been watch Kafo observing you for quite some time now, but I have never each heard your in name. I don't know, Kit. I mumbled, that's what they've been calling me. No. Not that. Ovia quickly spun around to face me, I was asking for your in-name. Your actual in-name, but, that's, all I have. I, don't know. You don't know? What do you mean? Do you not have one? Did you just forget it? Ovia thought for a moment before asking, D did you throw it away? I wasn't even able to think about my name anymore, as Ovia's outburst completely surprised me. Um. 
she wrapped her hair around her hand and clenched her fist. I, I didn't prepare for this. Why did everything go off script? I reached out to grab her arm and tell her it was okay, but before I was able to, she sat herself down next to me and grabbed both my shoulders. I it doesn't matter if you don't want to tell Emmy what happened, she looked me in the eyes, I I can just give you a new in name. A new name? I haven't needed one this whole time. Do I even deserve one? How about? She looked away from me briefly before snapping back, Kiera, yes. I responded without even thinking. As soon as I heard the name come from her lips, my body jumped into action, latching onto her arms. I am Kiera. I started to tear up again, although this time I buried my face in Ovia's arm to hide it, that's me, Kiera. That's the second thing you've given to me. Chapter 18, Just Stay Next to Me. Wait. Ovia started to panic again, W what's wrong? W why are you crying? I'm fine. They're happy tears. I tried to push Ovia's arm away so that I could tell her I was alright and thank her once again, but before I could, she had already jumped off of the bed and was pacing back and forth. Um, what do I d do? How do I comfort see children? I'm and no, I can know what to do, she cut me off. I know exactly what to do. She stepped away from me before snapping her fingers. Right as she did, she was completely engulfed by the surrounding darkness. What? Did she just run away? After a short pause, the room started to lighten up again and my worries immediately dissipated. Where Ovia had just been standing there was a now a large black fox in her place. That's I want. My first thought after seeing the fox was to try and grab onto it as quickly as possible. You're not leaving me again. I started to shuffle off of the bed, but before even getting my feet over the edge, the fox ran up and jumped onto it instead, gently curling around my back before lying down. Can I? I asked, looking over at the fox's face. The fox paused for a moment before responding by quickly nodding their head. Am I excited? My tail seemed to have gained a mind of its own as it was swaying back and forth uncontrollably, occasionally brushing against the fox. How long has it been since I looked forward to something? She did give me permission. Having mentally prepared myself, I slowly leaned backwards until I was lying against the body of the fox. What? What is this? This can't be real. How does this exist? No matter how much I thought about it, I couldn't fully describe what it felt like to be enveloped by the soft black fur. It was almost like being completely surrounded by many copies of my own tail, yet somehow even better. Her fur was slightly cool to the touch. It felt unnatural but strangely calming at the same time. I'm definitely not letting you leave me. Not again. Are you feeling better now? Ovia asked as she nuzzled up against my face with her nose. Her mouth didn't move, but I could still hear her voice clearly. There was nothing wrong in the first place, but it feels good. MHM, I responded, deciding to just accept her gesture. Good. Ovia's tails started to stir slightly. That's good. I rolled onto my side pulling my own tail into a hug while still enjoying Ovia's fur. However, as I did, I noticed that even with my shadow coating my tail, it just wasn't as dark as Ovia's. It's not the same. Is there some secret to it? Now, what do I do next? She mumbled quietly, looking away from me. What would Ilaria do? You don't need to do anything. Just stay next to me. I pushed my body a bit deeper into Ovia's fur. Oh, I know. Ovia nudged my cheek with her nose before continuing to speak, S so, H how are you doing? Even though her face as a fox wasn't very expressive, I could still feel her anticipation just by looking into her eyes, but, I don't, have a happy answer. I don't want to ruin this. I, don't know. All right, you don't know. Ovia paused for a second before unexpectedly shouting, Wait, why you don't know? W what does that mean? Um, flump. Without any warning, Ovia wrapped her tails around me, engulfing me completely in her fluff. Ah, I is that better? Eolaria used to give me her tea tail when I was feeling down. I could hear the panic rising in her voice. I I have nine, so that must be better tea than one. I wanted to tell her that I was fine, but my mind was being overwhelmed by what I was experiencing. I was so overwhelmed by her tails that even the shadow that had been coating both my tail and hair melted away. It 
doesn't matter. I don't know how long I spend like that. My memory of the event was hazy at best. The most I could remember was the muffled sounds of Ovia speaking as I gradually sank deeper into the fluff. Ovia eventually removed her tails, but as she did, I instinctually latched onto one and hugged it tightly. No. I blurted out. What? Did I just do? My eyes went wide and my face started to heat up. I could only imagine just how red I went. In an attempt to cool my head off, I buried my face into the tail I had abducted. Instantly, I felt the effects, as the cool fur instantly got rid of the heat in my face, although that also meant I was able to think clearly again. What are you doing? That only makes it worse. I quickly released the tail before replacing it with my own to keep my face hidden. Um. Ovia moved the tail away from me. Why did you do that? You've ruined it. How could you do this? I pushed my face deeper into my tail, preparing myself for the worst. Why isn't she saying anything? Is she deciding how to punish me? I I like the white. Ovia finally spoke up. I knew. Dash. Wait, what? I pulled my tail down just enough so that I could see while still keeping most of my face hidden, just in case. Looking over at Ovia. She was facing away from me again. I I think it's... Um. E elegant. You. Hesitated. Oh, oh no. Um. Why your bee blessing? You said you like the bee blessing. Ovia kept talking. H how has that been going? Shouldn't you already know? It's your blessing, right? I. Like it. What else am I supposed to say here? W well, um. Uh. H how about... You show him me? Why? Fine. Just by thinking about what I wanted it to do, my shadow crept up my body and settled into my hair and tail, dyeing them black once again. Ovia didn't say anything and just continued to stare at my tail. What? Why aren't you saying anything? Uh, what? Was that? Ovia asked, sounding genuinely confused. Your blessing? It is. How don't you know? You gave it to me. Ovia pulled herself away turning back into her humanoid form before sitting down next to me. Jay just give me a second. Ovia grabbed my wrist with one hand before placing the palm of her other hand against mine. She then gradually pulled her hand away, revealing a gray liquid that floated into the air. In now, where did I leave it? Ovia mumbled to herself while looking around the room frantically. All of a sudden, the floating liquid flew behind me. I instantly turn around to see where it went, but when I did, I saw Arya standing there with some kind of grey crystal floating next to her. Were you looking for one of these? Arya asked as she walked up to us. Yes, that's it. Ovia blurted out. What's going on? Hello again, little Kitsune, Arya said, looking down at me. I'm sure you aren't expecting to see me again so soon. K Kiera. I mumbled. What was that? My name. I spoke up. It's Kiera. Oh, that's great, Arya said clapping her hands together. W what are you doing H here? Ovia seemed to finally realize what had just happened. Ah, thank you for reminding me. Arya chuckled slightly. I came to remind you to send little Kiara here back down soon, but... Both Ovia and I shouted in unison. Look, I know you two would like to spend more time together, but sister, you know how those gods get. Ovia didn't say anything. Instead just looking down at the floor. Why aren't you saying anything? I don't want to leave you. Not again. Please, don't do this to me again. A all right, Ovia deflated. I'll send her back. But I spoke up but was immediately interrupted. I'm sorry, but it's really not our choice. Arya said, if I could, I'd keep you up here. But unfortunately, there are some rules we have to follow. But I finally found her. Oh, come on. Don't look so down. You can just come back and visit again. I'm sure my sister wouldn't mind the company, right? Arya looked over at Ovia. MHM. See? Arya moved next to Ovia. Now, sister, send her along, but no buts. Arya placed her finger over Ovia's lips. Ovia looked over to me with a disheartened expression before looking away and waving one of her tails. As soon as she did, my vision went completely black and I felt her presence disappear. Chapter 19, Teach Me, Alaria Puff. Now that the little Kitsune had left it was time for me to try and sort out the mess that my sister has gotten herself into. Now then, Ovia, I spoke while using all the restraint I had to stop myself from grabbing my sister by the shoulders. Would you care to explain what that was? Um. She looked away from me. I I. T talked to her. Yes, you did, 
I walked around her so she was facing me, but you know that isn't what I was talking about. My sister fell silent, looking away again. So, you do know what you did? She still refused to respond, so I placed my hand on her shoulder, forcefully turning her around to face me. At that moment, she immediately started listing off seemingly everything that came to her mind. I I didn't follow the script. The G-gloves were a bad idea. I knew they were a bad idea, but I did it anyway. I didn't K know how to comfort her. H her name, I don't know what I was thinking. Why did I think that I had the right to N name her? I I even almost smothered her to death. I had to cup my hand over her mouth in order to get her to stop talking, and even then, she didn't actually stop talking but kept shouting into my hand. That's not what I'm talking about, I said after she had finally started to calm down. I guess I should give her a bit of a hint. What's all this? I asked as I kicked one of the chains lying on the floor. With a guilty expression on her face, she looked down at the chain for a while, remaining silent. Sigh this is why everyone is scared of you. I couldn't help but plant my forehead firmly in my palm. No matter how many times I've gone out of my way to speak to her about this she just won't let go of this whole persona she has given herself. I just don't understand. Do you just not want to get along with people? I, I wanted to make a good first impression. My sister mumbled. What part of that was a good first impression? My sister was visibly deflated, now crouching on the floor. Be but if I just followed the script. What am I going to do with you? I placed my hand on top of my sister's head before using some of my divinity to force her into her fox form. Alright, now I will be the one to talk, and you will listen. I sat down and lay against my sister, but I said that I'm the one who's talking. My sister's ears drooped down slightly. Good. I gave her a scratch under her chin before continuing, did you not see how much you scared the poor girl, she even tried to run away from you. You were watching us. What happened to I'm the one who's talking, I know that's going to be a losing battle right now. Of course I was watching you, I didn't want you to ruin this for yourself. You don't even know how many times I was this close to jumping in to help you out. I leant back a bit further, you could have at least taken her into your little den instead of staying in. No. She covered my mouth with one of her tails. No? I gently pushed the tail away, but that little kitsune would have loved to see everything you keep in there, especially compared to what you have set up in here. Ain't nobody can see that. That is just for me. A and you, I guess. She said the last part under her breath, not that it did anything. Come on, you could even have shown her that little plushy version of her that you made. My sister's eyes went wide. Why you didn't tell her about tea that, did you? Oh, I don't know. Ah, it's always so fun to tease you like this. Why you can't? She covered her face with her front paws. W what would she think about me if she knew? What do you mean? I moved her paws away from her face. Why would that matter? I I have to make a good eye impression. I am the G goddess of darkness. I I can't be a pee pushover. I pulled my sister's head into my lap and wiped away the tears that were forming. I've already told you before. You don't need to worry about that. Be but. No buts. You already proved yourself when you ascended as a goddess. You even ascended before me. Don't you remember? T that wasn't fair. It doesn't matter if it wasn't fair. It's still what happened. My sister didn't say anything in response. Did you learn to stay silent from that little kitsune? Sigh alright then, I'm sure you get my point now. Let's move on to something more fun, hey? I asked, gently brushing her snout. She nodded her head while keeping it in my lap. I saw that you took some of the little kitsune's mana. I waved my hand and the mana crystal containing her mana came closer, I'm sure that you're just as interested in it as I am. My sister nodded her head again, although this time, she also used the opportunity to nuzzle in a bit closer as well, not that I mind it at all. Unfortunately, it will take me some time to look into, I started explaining to her, whatever magic she has been using is something even I haven't seen before, and if you also don't know about it, then we really don't have a place to start looking into. She didn't respond, but I already knew that it wasn't the news that she was wanting to hear. Luckily for her I had already thought about how to deal with this situation. So this is my idea. I'll split this mana into two so you can have a play with it while, at the same time, I can look into it on my side. I turned my sister's face so that she was looking directly at me. 
Does that sound good? MHM, great, this can be our little project together then. I clapped my hands together, that should help keep your mind occupied before the little kitsune comes back around. I started rubbing her cheeks, but she didn't show the enthusiastic reaction that I was expecting. Normally this is the time when she would be jumping at me, rushing me to get everything started. Hey! What's wrong? Is there something you're still hung up on? She nuzzled her face closer to me. I responded in turn by placing my hand on her head and returning her to her normal self. I knew she would try this. That's not going to get you out of it. My sister turned, so she was lying face down in my lap. How about? If you tell me, I'll let you play with my tails for a bit. Just like the old days. She stayed still for a while, but eventually, she sat up and faced me although she avoided making eye contact. W what if she doesn't come back? She fumbled over her words. That's what she's so worried about. Was she not watching that little kitsune? I'm sure you won't have to worry about that. I couldn't help but chuckle a little. I can guarantee she'll be back at your doorstep before you know. How can you be so s sure? She leaned forward. I stared at her tails swaying back and forth in excitement. They really are surprisingly similar. Let's just call it your sister's intuition, alright? She looked towards the floor for a bit before suddenly looking me in the eye. Eh, hey, alright. There was a sparkle in her eye. That's good. B but. My sister interrupted me, see can you help him me? Help you with what exactly? I already have an idea of what she wants. But she needs to tell me herself. T teach me. How to. Make a G good impression on KK Kiera. I laughed a little at the situation. Then I'll do just that. I stood up and stretched. You know I would never turn you down. W what are you waiting for? My sister leapt up off the floor before dragging me into the side room. T there's only so much time before K Kiera comes back. It really was a good idea to try and get along with that little kitsune. Chapter 20, Do I Even Deserve To? Why are you doing this again? Don't do this to me. Please. Please not again. I didn't know how long I would have been stuck in place, silently blaming everything I could. However, after standing there for only a few moments, my thoughts were abruptly interrupted by the sharp screech of metal sliding over metal. My ears reacted instantly, searching for the source of the sound. When I turned towards where I heard it coming from, all that I could see was a faint light accompanied by an occasional flash whenever I heard the noise. Is she over there? I'll go to you. Before I could even take a step, my question was answered when I heard a man shouting. Come on out already. Grunt I know you're back. That's not her. Didn't you hear me? The shrill sound of metal clashing against metal echoed through the room again. Get out here and deal with your companion. Why should I? I can just wait here. That's right. I don't in need anything else. I I waited seven years. I I can w wait some more. I I I dot. Tears started running down my face, disappearing out of sight into the darkness. Please. What did you do to that little girl? Rainbow? I grunt told you, I didn't do anything. The loud rattle from chains being pulled hot filled the room. She's standing right there. Then let me go. Raynal shouted, let me go to her. Why? Why? Are you still here? I I don't need you. I need her. My knees slammed against the cold stone floor, but I didn't feel any pain. Suddenly, I heard the chains clash against the stone floor, followed by hurried footsteps heading my way. Kit, where are you? I couldn't bring myself to respond, although that didn't matter as soon after. I found myself being lifted into the air. Are you okay? Raina asked. Nothing happened to you, right? You're alright? Just tell me. I don't know what to do for you. She gently brushed away my tears. Please, just leave me. I have to. L let's just get you back to Ava. She'll do something. She started walking with me cradled in her arms. Just. Please don't cry. I. I. I don't know. What do I do? I. I, don't want to wait anymore. Somehow, even more tears burst from my eyes. They just kept coming until, even if it wasn't dark, I wouldn't have been able to see anything around me. Hey, kid. The man from before shouted, if you ever come back, please come by yourself. She's quite a handful. Just shut it. Rhinel snapped back, catching me off guard. If you knew what she's been through. You'd understand. But how do you know? You don't know anything about me. I 
don't know anything about me. Ah, how many times do I have to tell you? Nothing bad happened to her. Stop assuming things. He's right. I grabbed onto Raynal's arm to stop her from going at the man any further, but Raynal looked down at me, although I couldn't make out her expression. Look, just leave. If you have to come back, come back later. Neither of you is in your right mind at the moment. I heard the sound of chains being dragged away from me, and then the temple doors flew open, filling the room with light, and by the way, make sure your hood is pulled up. Don't want the wrong people to see you. Hastily, I returned my shadow to my hair and tails. I hadn't even realized that my shadow had disappeared at some point. Let's just go. All right? Raynal pulled me closer. F fine. But, I'll come back. I have to. Suddenly, a wave of exhaustion hit me, as if everything that had happened throughout the day hit me all at once, but I continued to keep my eyes open. It's okay, just go to sleep. Raynal pulled my hood over my face. I'll get you back to the inn, alright? You don't have to worry. I didn't respond and just let sleep fall over me while still holding on to one faint hope. Maybe. She'll be in my dream. Unfortunately. That didn't happen. It felt like as soon as I closed my eyes, I was already opening them again, staring up at a wooden ceiling that had become familiar. Why? Why weren't you there? Sitting myself up, the first thing that I noticed was Ava strewn across the foot of the bed while fast asleep. Her hair and feathers were in complete disarray, sticking out all over the place. I reached my hand out to brush down some of her feathers but ended up stopping myself before I did as the memory of the first day I met her came to mind. She never touched my tail in my sleep. I, I should do the same. Deciding to leave her to her sleep, I carefully maneuvered around Ava and slid off of the bed, barely landing on my feet before falling down onto my hands and knees. What do I do now? I want to go back. I looked myself over, staring down at the rags that still covered my body and my tail which was admittedly doing far worse than Ava's feathers. The only decent thing I had was the scarf that Trainel gave me. But, do I even deserve to? Running my fingers through my tail, it was impossible not to compare it to the memory of hers. It was like night and day. I could never compare to her. Why would she even want to see me again? A. Arya said that I could come back, but no matter what I tried, I just couldn't come up with a reason why a goddess like her would ever want to see someone like me. Just from the pressure that I felt when I first saw her, it was clear that she just didn't need someone like me. She could have whatever she wanted. Why would she choose me? But, I need her. I had already somehow held on for seven years, just hoping that I could meet her again. Now that I had finally met her again, I just couldn't let her go. I can't wait another seven years. Looking around the room. I saw a brush that Ava had brought with her a few days ago in an attempt to touch my tail. I had turned her down when she did, but she still decided to leave the brush in my room, which, at that moment, I was thankful for. I, I'll fix it, I am sure. If I, I look better, she'll like me more. She has to. I, I need something. I picked myself up off the floor and grabbed the brush off the nearby table before sitting myself back down on the floor with my pure white tail resting in my lap. I guess I just yelp. Instantly, my hand let go of the brush, but it stayed attached, dangling from my tail. As soon as I tried to run the brush through my tail, I felt an excruciating pain shoot up my spine as it pulled against the fur. Be but, I, I have to. I grabbed the brush and kept trying to force it through the fur, this time biting down on my hand to help bear the pain. Although, it didn't help much. Yelp. All it really achieved was muffling my cries of pain rather than stopping them. Just go through. As I kept pulling on the brush, tears started welling up in my eyes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop. Don't do it like that. Someone shouted. I turn around to see a blurry Ava barreling towards me. As soon as she was in front of me, she grabbed my wrist, which caused me to let go of the brush. You're just going to damage your fur like that. But, I need to. I tried to pull my wrist out of her grip, but she wouldn't budge. Look, I know you don't want me to touch you, but please, let me at least teach you first. Avo continued complaining at me, sounding genuinely panicked. I need it now, I don't want to wait anymore. Looking at the brush hanging limply from my tail, I knew that there was only one way to fix this problem, but I was still reluctant to do it. I looked up at Ava's panicked face 
then back down at the brush. It's F for her. I I can do this. I lifted the brush along with the attached tail using my free hand and held it out to Ava. Really? Ava asked, are you sure? I silently braced myself before nodding, and her face immediately lit up as she reached for the brush's handle. It's for, Ovia. Chapter 21 She'll get there eventually. Rain will puff. I don't know what I should be doing. After visiting that temple yesterday, Kit fell asleep in my arms, and she stayed that way ever since I got her back to the inn. I knew that she was probably just tired from such an eventful day, but that didn't matter. I couldn't help but worry about her. I buried my face into my hands. I just don't know how to help you. Thud. Instantly, I lifted my head out of my hands and turned towards the source of the noise but nothing else happened. I must be imagining things now. I need to calm down. It helps nobody being this high strung. I just really don't want to leave that kid like this. But, even when I was screaming for her, she said, nothing. What more can I even do? She just, doesn't trust me. Leaning back in my chair, I gently rocked back and forth on its two back legs. With each push, a soft creaking sound filled the room before I let the chair fall forward to do it again. Ava was so much easier to deal with. Slap. Come on Raynal, you can't be thinking like that. I said to myself, you know how much that kid has had to deal with. I sat there in silence for a moment, waiting for the stinging sensation in both my cheek and my hand to go away. You know, Selica seemed to be an alright person. So if push ever comes to shove, I know that at least I could just leave her there. Then she'll be safe. I'm sure. Without warning, my train of thought was interrupted by the faint sound of a muffed yelp, followed by hurried footsteps. What? The girls. Without wasting any more time, I burst out of the room and ran down the corridor towards Kit's room, immediately throwing the door open once I reached it. I wouldn't have been surprised if I damaged a hinge or two. What's happening? I shouted while searching the room. Are you okay? I looked down to see the two girls just sitting on the floor. Ava was brushing Kit's tail with a rather serious expression on her face while Kit sat there, tense as could be, with tears visibly welling up in her eyes. I can't believe Ava got to do that before me. I, I started to complain but stopped myself almost immediately. Raynal, it's not the time for that. Just look, that little girl is finally letting someone get a bit closer to her. So, what's the story here? I went and sat myself down next to the two girls, though neither of them reacted to me. Um, hello, Ava. You there? She didn't respond, so I reached out to shake her shoulder, but before I could make contact, she abruptly spoke up. Not now. This is important. I haven't seen her like that in a while. So then, Kit, do you have any input? Nothing. You know, I was really hoping there would be something there. It just felt right. One step at a time. I guess. I decided that it was probably better to just let the two of them finish up by themselves, so I left the room to go and throw together a meal for the three of us. I ain't as good a cook as Ava, but I can still put together something nice and filling. And I imagine our little fox will be quite hungry after being asleep for a whole day. After around an hour of cooking, I was back in the room carrying a large pot of freshly made meat and potato stew. Alright, who's ready for lunch? No response from either of them. Looking down at the two girls, it was like almost nothing had changed since I left. Well, other than little Kit's tail and hair looking better than ever. I set the stew down on the table with a satisfying thud before squatting down and grabbing Ava by the shoulder. Ava, I think you're good. No, I can do better. I know I can. Looking over at Kit. It was clear that she was more than just a bit exhausted from the whole experience. Well, you can do better at another time. I pulled her away, for now. You two can take a break and eat some lunch. What? You cooked? Ava spun around to look at me. Yes, I cooked, okay? Ah, oh come on, don't be like that. You used to eat my cooking all the time. That's because it was the only option. Stop making excuses. I even use some of those spices you keep going on about. I said as I got up from the floor and served a bowl to both her and Kit. If they're as good as you say they are, then you have nothing to complain about. As soon as Kit laid eyes on the food, she lifted the bowl to her mouth and started gulping it down. See, she isn't complaining, but just eat. Avo continued to look at the bowl hesitantly but eventually gave an and ate, putting a spoonful of the stew into her mouth. See, it's not that bad. 
I patted her on the back. It's better. Still tastes a bit like soap though. Ava muttered. You're just being a baby about it. Look, Kit has already finished her first bowl. I said as I took the bowl from in front of Kit and filled it back up. HMPH Ava looked away from me but still continued to eat. I sat down and served up a bowl for myself. I knew it was good. I don't know why she complains every time. In only a few minutes, we were all finished with lunch. It was mainly thanks to Kit devouring the bulk of it, but at least she looked satisfied. Now then, can one of you two fill me in on the details? I looked over at Kit hoping that a miracle would happen, but Ava spoke up instead. Yeah, she just started attacking her tail with the brush and almost pulled out a bunch of her fur because of it, Ava explained, so I stopped her. Then she was gracious enough to hand me the brush, with tail still attached. And since when were you some kind of expert on tail care? I might not know how you tend to all those feathers of yours, but I know it ain't anything like brushing a tail. For goodness sake, I know you only bought that brush a week ago. Since last week, Ava looked very proud of herself. I spent some time looking into it, and it paid off. Oh, did you now? I leaned in towards Ava's ear and whispered to her, I need you to show me how to do it later. Ava let out a quiet chuckle before nodding. So then, Kit, you've decided to worry about your appearance now? I walked over to her and squatted down. Wait a minute. This could be a great opportunity. She just needs a little push. Well, your tail is looking quite neat now. It sure would be a waste to leave you dressed in those rags, hey? How about this then? We can take you somewhere to get kitted out with some new outfits. That sound good to you? Kit's eyes lit up, but that burst of excitement quickly vanished as she started staring at the floor. So, you don't want to go out? Ah, I got it. You know. With your hair all neatened up like that, I can hardly recognize you anymore. With some new clothes, and maybe a haircut, I imagine you would look like an entirely new person. Kit looked back up at me, this time with her ears perked up and her tail quickly swaying back and forth. Okay then, but first, let's try it out. I looked over at Ava, do you have something she could wear? I think there's something. Just give me a second. She got up and quickly left the room. I really hope this works. At this point, I'll really take any kind of progress. Ava quickly came back, holding a familiar dress. It was a simple dress, but it was made entirely out of feathers of various sizes, mainly black, but dappled with various grays and whites throughout. I haven't seen that for a few years now. It's the only thing I have that is small enough for her. Are you sure? Yeah. Just go for it. I'll just need it back after we get back. And I know Kit won't do anything to it, Ava said. I mean, you've seen how she treats the scarf you got her. Okay then, you heard her. We've got the go ahead, I said. Do you need any help putting it on? She shook her head. Alright then, I'll leave you to it. Ava, let's give the girl some space. I put my hand on Ava's shoulder and dragged her out of the room. We'll just be waiting out here. I closed the door behind me before letting out a heavy sigh. She'll get there eventually. I know it. Chapter 22, Pretty Little Thing Looking down at the dress that Ava had allowed me to use, I couldn't help but question the motives behind her decision. Is this some kind of trick? Why a dress made of feathers? Does she want me to ask her if I can touch her feathers? Is it all to tempt me? I kept staring at the dress, just thinking in silence. That must be it. But, no, you have to do this. Reluctantly, I took off the rags that I had been wearing for the past few years, leaving me with just my bare body. I couldn't remember how long it had been since I'd seen my body just as it was. What confused me was the lack of any visible scars. Over the last few years, I knew that I had picked up more than a few, but looking down at myself, I saw nothing as if none of it had even happened. Does that mean? I reached a hand over my shoulder and ran it across my back, hoping for a miracle. But the distinct groove I felt told me otherwise. Still there. Looking back down at the dress in an attempt to distract myself, I felt a strange resistance to putting it on. It just didn't feel right to me. It didn't feel like I deserved it. Don't forget K. Kiera. It's for her. It's all for her. I quickly threw the dress over my head, careful not to damage it as I didn't know what they might do to me if I did. However, as soon as I had pulled it down, I noticed a problem. There wasn't a hole in the back for my tail, so it was pushing up against the skirt. You just have to deal with it. Thinking on my feet, I wrapped my tail around one of my legs, 
securing it with my old makeshift scarf. It was uncomfortable, but at least it wasn't painful. It's only for one trip. Bracing myself, I opened the door to see both Raynal and Ava waiting patiently in the hallway. Now, doesn't that look so much better, hey? Rhinel said as she turned towards me, although, something does seem a little bit off. Isn't that a good thing? I don't want to be recognized. Ava walked behind me and looked me up and down. It seems to be a little bit big on you. Ava said as she adjusted the back of the dress, and I can't imagine your tail is comfortable being covered like that. Ah, that was it. The tail was missing. Reno blurted out. How did I miss that? Can we just go already? This is important. My shadow slithered up my body until it coated my hair and tail before I started heading out of the inn, believing that they would just follow me. However, after only two steps, Raina lifted me into the air. Hold up a bit there. You should probably still put a cloak on before heading out. Raina waved her hand at Ava, and you don't even know where we're going. Raina then set me back down on my feet and Ava draped a cloak over my shoulders before fastening it around my neck. While I don't think anyone would recognize you at a glance anymore, you don't exactly see all that many little girls with fox ears running around here. Raynal pulled the hood of the cloak over my ears. I thought you said this would make me look like a different person. It has to. I need to be someone. Better. Ava threw a cloak over her wings while Raynal helped adjust it so she was comfortable. All right then, since we're all ready. Let's head out, Rhinel said as she gestured down the hallway. We all quickly made our way out of the inn and out into the streets. I immediately started walking towards the main shopping street, but Rhinel and Ava didn't follow me. Where do you think you're going? Rhinel called out. But that is where all the shops are. Don't underestimate me, I know a better place. Something inside of me was screaming not to follow her. But, it's for her. I I can do this. I walked back up to Raynal and grabbed onto the hem of her shirt. She responded by wrapping her arm around my shoulder and pulling me closer. Don't worry, I'll keep you safe. Raynal started walking before muttering to herself, I just wish you would believe me. We ended up walking in the complete opposite direction of the shopping street for a while until we eventually arrived at what looked like a small market hidden in one of the side alleys. I couldn't help but look around at everything. Unlike the main shopping street, everything here was more rustic. It was a pretty small alley, but there were these colorful fabric awnings stretching between the buildings on either side. When the sunlight shone through the awnings, it did so in a myriad of different colors, creating colorful patterns all across the walls. So, you like it? Raina asked. I found this place after my first shopping trip in this city. Yeah? This place is much nicer than that main street, Ava piped up, and the best part is that you don't have to deal with any of those stuffy nobles waltzing around the place. It is pretty. But that doesn't mean anything. That main shopping street was also pretty. The first time I saw it, at least. Anyway, we've arrived, Ava said, pushing open a door with a sign that showed a reel of thread on it. Well, go on, get yourself in there already. I froze up. But Evo came up behind me and gently pushed me into the building. Don't worry, nothing bad will happen to you in there. Even if it did, Mom is quite the bodyguard. Raynal came in close behind us. As she closed the door, a woman almost immediately came over and struck up a conversation. Oh, hello there, or welcome back, I should say. Are there any updates on your little one? Raynal started by chuckling in response. A pretty big one. Raina lifted me into her arms and then pulled my hood down, revealing my ears. What are you doing? I instantly started to struggle, trying to get away from that woman before she had a chance to register what she saw. Ah, uh, you didn't tell me she was such a pretty little thing. What? My body froze up. Trust me, I would have if I knew. I myself only found out a little bit ago. Raina continued to chuckle as she spoke. Anyway, you can probably guess what we're here for. Oh. Of course, the woman leaned in towards me. So, do you have something specific in mind? I think that's going to be fighting a losing battle, Rhinel said as she took a step back from the woman, still carrying me in her arms. Well then, I guess the next best thing would be. Do either of you two have something in mind? Both Rhinel and Ava looked at each other in silence for a moment before suddenly starting to mutter to each other. I think she would look nice in some brighter colors. Ava said as she scratched her chin. What about white? That would be nice. Raynal added. No no, that's a bit too much for her. Maybe a green. 
or blue. It definitely has to be a dress, although I think red would be nice, but that's probably a bit too mature for her. Why are you deciding? I wish she could decide for me, but she's already given me so much. I knew that if I didn't come up with anything, I would be stuck with whatever those two came up with. But as I tried to think about what would look good, the only thing that came to mind was my memory of Ovia. Is that a bad thing? No. How could it be? Before I could change my mind, I hopped out of Raynal's arms, but she was too absorbed in her conversation with Ava to notice. Then I walked up to the woman, gently tugging on her skirt to get her attention. Do you have something you want to say? She squatted down so she was on my level. I panicked a bit at the question and ended up looking around the room for something that I could point to, but then I realized that I already had exactly what I needed. I carefully tugged on my scarf while also pointing at it, hoping that she would understand me. Do you want something in black? I nodded. So then, what exactly do you want in black? Are you looking for a dress? I don't know. I don't think they suit me. I think a cute little dress would look very good on you. The woman said as she flashed a warm smile at me, you'd be sure to wow whoever saw you. I can personally guarantee it. I nodded instantly. I didn't need to think about it anymore because that's exactly what I wanted. Hopefully, she'll like it. All right, I think I have something in the back that will fit you. The woman stood up, just give me a few minutes to make some adjustments for you. What? Both Raynal and Davis shouted in unison. What's the problem? The woman responded, completely unfazed. How did you do that? Raynal asked. What do you mean? I just asked her some questions, and she responded, albeit in her own way. The woman turned around and walked into the back of the shop. She's really not as difficult as you made her out to be. Are we just that unapproachable? Raynal asked Ava. I don't think so. I hope. Ava responded. Both Raynal and Ava kept going back and forth like that for a little while before the woman eventually came back out with a black dress draped over one of her arms. So, what do you think? The woman squatted down in front of me just like before and held the dress up in front of me. It was a black dress, just like I had asked for. The bottom of it was fairly simple, only slightly frilled, with a small white layer sticking out beneath it. Down the body of the dress. There were two rows of decorative buttons that led up to the collar, which had a loose ribbon draped around it. And don't worry, she turned the dress around, I added a little flap for your tail to go through. I don't know what to say. It looks good. Too good for me. Do you want to go try it on? After a brief pause, I nodded. Alright then, here you go, she handed me the dress. You can use the room just down there. Just make sure to make some noise if you need any help. I didn't respond to her and instead quickly made my way into the room to get changed. Chapter 23, The Tail Flap I quickly took off Ava's dress and neatly folded it to give back to her. But standing there in the changing room, looking over the dress the woman gave to me again, there was just one thought that filled my mind. Ovia would look so much better in this. She'd look better than me in anything. She's just better than me. I quickly threw the dress over my head in an attempt to try and distract myself. Immediately, I noticed how much more comfortable it was compared to Ava's dress, which wasn't that surprising after thinking about it for a bit. A dress made with any kind of fabric is going to poke you less than a dress made of feathers. After pulling the dress down and freeing my hair, there didn't seem to be anything else for me to fasten, so I moved my attention down to my tail. Lifting up the skirt, I untied my makeshift scarf from my leg, freeing my tail. Initially, I felt a wave of relief pass over me, but that feeling almost immediately disappeared once I looked my tail over. It was a complete mess, with fluff sticking out all over the place. No, this can't happen. Panicking, I tried to flatten out the fur with my hands, but it didn't help much. If anything, I was just making it worse. Why? I, I I don't think I can do that again. I if I bother her again after saying no to her rest so much, I I'll just fix it. Myself. I I have to. I still had one more thing to do to finish putting the dress on. I still needed to get my tail through the flap in the back. So I just moved my attention to that, holding on to the hollow hope that, just maybe, my tail would sort itself out. I thought that there would just be a simple hole in the back of the dress for my tail, but instead, there was an additional piece of fabric sewn in behind the opening, which formed a sort of pouch. If I had to guess, 
It was probably to prevent anyone from seeing inside the dress from any gaps at either side of the tail. But with my fluffy tail, I don't think that would have been an issue. Using one hand, I guided the tip of my tail into the slot on the inside of the dress, and then I grabbed it on the other side using my other hand. Once I was sure I had a secure grip on my tail, I tried to pull it through quickly. Yelp! It got caught on something, sending a shock right up my spine. Almost immediately, I heard footsteps rapidly approaching, followed by a hurried knock on the door. Are you alright in there? It was the woman from before, I'm going to open the door just to check, okay? Slowly. The door opened, and she peeked her head around to see me standing there with a tear in my eye and a ragged tail in my hand. Immediately after laying eyes on me, she stepped into the room and reached for my tail. No, it's mine. I jumped back, turning so that she couldn't see my tail, let alone grab it. Oh, oh no. I'm really sorry about that, the woman said, taken aback. I, I didn't know. Should I get one of the other two to help instead? I don't want to. But, I looked up at the woman while trying to make a sign with my hands. I linked my thumbs together and then flapped my fingers like a bird's wings. Oh, um, alright, I'll show them that, and they'll understand. I nodded my head even though I wasn't sure myself, and she left the room without saying anything else. I guess, she's the best option. Pretty soon after, Ava burst into the room without even knocking. What's the problem? Not even waiting for my response. She ran up to me and went straight for my tail. Reflexively, I pulled back, which caused her to instantly freeze up. Ah, I'm sorry, I should have asked first. Ava took a deep breath. So, can I help you out? I, I don't have a choice. I turned so that my tail was facing Ava. Okay then, let's get your tail through first, alright? I didn't respond, but Ava got my tail unstuck after only a few seconds of handling it. Hey! You're doing good. Now I'm just going to pull your tail through slowly. You can just hit me if it hurts, and I'll stop. I won't do that. I couldn't. Again, she didn't wait for my response and just got to work, pulling my tail through slowly, just like she said she would. In less than a minute, my tail was sticking out the back of the dress, and somehow it didn't get caught a single time. There, you're all good. Ava stood there looking very proud of her work. I hesitantly looked over my shoulder at my tail and just how much of a mess it still was. Should I ask her now? But, I, just can't. What's wrong? Ava looked me over. Ah, I see what's happened. Your nice and neat tail didn't survive the experience. I know. Hearing someone else say it made it hurt just that little bit more, as it meant that I wasn't just imagining it. Unfortunately, I didn't bring the brush with me. I didn't realize this would happen. Ava paused for a moment, before suddenly slapping her own cheek. I'll just do what I can for now. If that's alright with you, I nodded. Ava then sat down on the floor and gestured towards her lap. I followed along and sat down in front of her, laying my tail down in her lap. After checking that I was alright with this one more time, Ava started gently running her fingers through my tail. Unlike when she brushed my tail before. It didn't hurt. It actually felt a little comforting. Well, there you go. It's not perfect, but it certainly looks better. I moved my tail into my own lap and looked it over, and true to her word, it did look a lot better. Do I have to do this with her every time? Look, how about this? When we get back, I can teach you how to do this yourself. Ava asked, however, it's not like I mind doing it. She must be able to read my mind. This happens too often. I didn't respond to her, but I still made sure to make a mental note of what she said, just in case. Right now, there's something more important. After getting myself up off the floor, I quickly left the room and ran over to Raynal and the woman to see what they thought of the dress. Is it good enough for her? However, as soon as I stood in front of them, the room fell completely silent. What's wrong? Is it that bad? I I knew it. I am just. Not her. Can you turn around for me quickly? The woman finally broke the silence. I did as she asked, still holding onto a small sliver of hope. I think I need to make that tail flap a bit bigger. Huh? Yeah, I'd say so. Avo came up behind me, carrying the folded dress I had left in the changing room. It was more just than a little bit of work to sort out. Well. I'll get that done for the rest of them then. The woman jotted something down on a notepad. Honestly, this was bound to happen. You don't really see beast skin in this city, 
let alone a kitsune. The rest, the rest of what? I turned and looked up at Reino. Don't worry about it. Reino looked over at the woman for a second before squatting down and grabbing the two ends of the ribbon hanging around my neck, neatly tying it into a bow. B by the way, I think that dress looks very good on you. Really? My tail started to sway involuntarily, but that didn't matter to me. This was what I needed. Then then will she like it too? Reino then looked back up at the woman, who responded by nodding her head while looking very proud of herself. All right then Kit. Reino turned back to me. Where should we go next? Next? We're going somewhere else? She's asking if you want anything else. Ava put her hands on my shoulders from behind. No, I can't take anything else. This is already too much. I shook my head. Are you sure? Raina asked. I nodded my head. Okay then, just. If you even want anything, absolutely anything, you can always tell me. I'll always do what I can. Raina picked me up and started carrying me in her arms. Anna, once again, thank you for both the dress and the advice. I'll be back around soon enough for the rest. Oh, don't worry about it. It was a pleasure. If anything, I'd hope you could bring everyone back here when you come by again. The woman responded. Ha ha, I'll see about it, but it's not really up to me, Rinal said as she waved to the woman and left the store with me still in her arms. Mom, you can take her back first. I'm gonna go grab some things while I can. Ava handed the folded dress she was carrying to Raina as she walked past. Sure, sure, just get back soon. Unless you want to eat my stew again. Raina shouted. Now, I definitely won't be late. Ava was already out of sight, having gotten lost in all the people at the market. Guess it'll just be us two for a bit then. Raina looked down at me. I'm sure we'll come up with something to do. After that, we made our way back to the inn catching glances from more than just a few people. Almost done, just a little more. Then, I'll be ready to see you again. Chapter 24, Back at the Inn As soon as we got back to the inn, Rhino sat me down at the table in my room. All right, just, uh, wait here for a second. I have something I need to try. Rhino ran out of the room, leaving me alone. Wah. Before I even had the time to think about what she could have been talking about, she was already back carrying a notebook and some pencils in her hands. Anna told me this would be a good idea, and she definitely seemed to know what she was talking about. Raina laid the notebook and pencils in front of me before sitting down at the other side of the table. We sat there for a few minutes, just staring at each other in complete silence, until Raina suddenly buried her face in her hands. This isn't working, she muttered. But, I'm not supposed to force you. Am I doing this wrong? Force me to do what? I looked down at the notebook and pencils again, trying to figure out what she was expecting me to do. I picked up one of the pencils, and immediately, it felt comfortable in my hand. But, more than that, there was this urge clawing away at me all of a sudden. Once Raynal noticed that I had taken one of the pencils, she lifted her head out of her hands and started staring at me still not saying anything. But my mind was too busy for me to be bothered by it. This is, why? Why is this familiar? Looking down at the notebook, my mind was filled with one thing. My memory of Ovia, each and every individual moment, flashed past until they all came together into a single image. As soon as that image was clear in my mind, I just instinctively knew what to do. I put the pencil against the page, and my hand just started moving, gracefully sliding over the page. It was like being in a trance, nothing else mattered. And just a few brief moments, what was in front of me was all that existed in the world. Until, all of a sudden, it was over. I looked up, but Raina wasn't there anymore. I immediately looked around the room and found her standing over me, looking down at the notebook. So, who's this? Raina asked, having noticed that I'd come out of my trance. I looked down at the notebook. At my drawing of Ovia kneeling down, with her arms outstretched and an expectant look on her face. I started to reach my hand out but pulled back. So, how many tails is that? One, two, four, six, eight, nine. She shouted when she reached the last number. Huh? Why does that matter? Is it a goddess? Raynal started muttering to herself, but, I don't recognize them. Is there a nine-tailed kitsune out there that isn't a goddess? Reino moved around me and leaned on the table to get a better look at the drawing. Is this someone you've met? She pointed at the drawing. I nodded. If only you'd talk to me, 
This would be so much easier to figure out. You don't need to know. This. This is for me. Maybe someone else can help. Selika would probably know. Even if she doesn't, she can probably ask her goddess about it. I doubt that there's an Intel Kitsune out there that even the gods don't know about. Raynal reached out for the drawing. No. I snatched the notebook off the table, knocking all the pencils onto the floor. It's mine. Don't take her away from me. Raynal took a step back, almost slipping on one of the pencils. All right, all right, it's yours, she said, putting her hands up. I won't take it away from you. Right as she finished speaking, the door flew open, and Ava came into the room with a basket on her arm. Did I interrupt something? Ava asked looking back and forth between us. Um. Rinal responded, Did you know that our little kid can draw? Can she now? Ava locked her gaze on me. Go on, show her, Rinal said, pointing at the notebook I had held against my chest. Do I have to? She did help me. I guess she can see. I turned the notebook around while still holding on to it tightly, just in case they tried to take it from me. Oh, let's have a look then, Ava said coming closer and setting the basket down on the table. This is very good, actually. Where did you learn to do this? I don't know. You know what? I can worry about that later. I've managed to get you something that you might be interested in, Ava said, pulling various bottles and brushes out of the basket she brought with her. I offered to help teach you how to care for your tail yourself, so we might as well do it properly from the beginning. That's if you're willing. Of course. I don't want to force you. There's a lot. What did that all cost? Why are you going so far? I nodded my head while looking her in the eyes. I I'll do it. Good. Ava clapped her hands together. Then, to start, let's get you into a bath. I'm sure it's been a while since you've had one. Immediately after hearing her say that, my enthusiasm plummeted. But, that scar. Okay then. I guess I'll have to leave you two to it. I need to go pick something up anyway, Rinal said, walking over to the door, and Ava, when I get back, you really need to teach me all of this stuff as well. I don't like being on the back foot like this all of a sudden. That's your own fault. I didn't do anything you couldn't, Ava said before turning to face me again. I called in a favor and managed to get the bath and the sin all to ourselves. Rinal left the room without saying anything else. Although I heard what I thought was a sigh coming from the other side of the door. Ava then packed up all of the bottles and brushes she had just taken out before heading over to the door and gesturing over to me. Well, come on then, the sooner we get started, the sooner we'll finish. It will make me look better. You have to, but, no. Why you can do this? It's all for her. It's Ava. She seems. She did already help me before. A and nothing happened. I slid myself off the chair and walked up next to Ava. Don't be so nervous, Ava said, wrapping an arm around my shoulder. Haven't I already proven myself to you? I know what I'm doing. I just can't wait to see what you look like at the end. Neither can I. My tail started gently swaying back and forth involuntarily, and Ava let out a small chuckle. Let's hurry and get you in the bath then, Ava said, pushing me out the door. I don't want you changing your mind on me. I I won't. This. This is for her. So I can't. Ava then guided me down through the end to where the bath was before helping me to take off my dress. Good thing your tail came out easier than it went in. Ava said as she folded the dress up, hopefully, it will be easier to put back on after we get your tail all clean. It definitely shouldn't catch as easily. I think. Really? I quickly slipped past Ava and slid myself into the bath being careful not to splash water all over the room. My tail instantly became heavier, now needing a surprising amount of effort to move around. I've been rained on before, but even then, my tail never absorbed this much water. As I was playing around with my tail, Ava came into the room. She was wearing a large shirt with the sleeves rolled up and trousers that seemed way too big for her. I couldn't help but stare at her for a moment. What oh, I didn't want to make you uncomfortable. So I borrowed some of mom's clothes and cut some holes in the back for my wings. Ava did a quick twirl, what do you think? Does it look good on me? I do wish you would play along a bit. But for now, let's get to work. Ava came up to the side of the bath, to start, 
Can you go back to the white tail? It'll be easier to see if anything is stuck in there that way. Fine. I did as she asked. If it will make it easier, I can do it. Ava then pulled out one of the bottles from the basket. This is a speciality shampoo I managed to find in the market. It's supposed to be better for this kind of thing. Ava then gestured for my tail in the water. But, that scar. Is there something wrong? I made sure that I was facing Ava directly so that she couldn't see my back. Oh, I see. Ava sighed, look. There's nothing there I haven't seen before. After all, I was the one who wiped you down and healed you up when we first found you. That's not the problem. She, Ovia, blames herself for it. I, I don't want you looking at it. Okay then, how's this? Ava threw a brown shirt in me. You can put that on. Would that be better? I quickly put on the shirt before turning around and lifting my tail out of the water and onto the side of the bath. Ava then got to work, lathering the shampoo all over my tail. She gently massaged my soapy tail for a while before gently laying it back in the water. Just run your fingers through the fur. Make sure it's all gone. All right. I did as she asked and immediately felt a difference. My fingers could glide through easily and didn't get caught anywhere near as often as before. I looked at Ava and saw her flipping through a book. After only a few seconds, she closed the book and looked back up at me. Okay, next, I'm going to use this, Ava said, pulling a comb out of the basket. You're not supposed to brush your tail while it's like this, as the fur is weaker when wet, so instead, I'm going to use this wide tooth comb, which should be fine. It should help get out anything that's gotten stuck in there. Okay. Ava did exactly as she said she would and started running the comb through my tail, each time going from base to tip. After a few minutes of this, Ava once again laid my tail back in the water. Run your fingers through there again, just to get rid of the loose bits. Once again. I was surprised at just how different it felt. It was almost like she was using some kind of magic. Pretty good, right? Ava put her hands on my shoulders. Now, get yourself out of there. We need to dry your tail off before getting to the rest. I pulled myself out of the bath, with my wet tail drooping down behind me. Pat your tail down with this. Ava threw a towel at me. Then we just need to run that white toothed comb through it until it's dry. I followed her instructions exactly and I was completely amazed. Each time I ran the comb through my tail, it somehow didn't catch a single time. After what felt like only a little while, my tail was completely dry and softer than ever. In fact, I couldn't even remember my tail ever feeling quite as soft. That actually didn't take as long as I thought it would. Ava said, well then, let's get you dressed so we can get to the good part, alright? Once again, I nodded. She doesn't seem that bad. Chapter 25 A New Perspective I picked up my dress before looking up at Ava. I understand. I'll turn around for you. Ava slowly turned around while also making a show of covering her eyes. Once I was confident that she wasn't looking at me, I took off the shirt she had given me before quickly throwing the dress over my head and pulling it down. Immediately. I looked back over at Ava to make sure that she was still facing away from me. After confirming that she was still facing the wall, I grabbed my tail. It'll be fine. She said it would be easier now. I guided my tail into the flap and grabbed the tip from the other side. I it's not going to hurt. Deciding it would be better to get it over with quickly, I yanked my tail through all at once. To my utter surprise, it went through without catching at all. I even looked over my shoulder to check on my tail. And while it was a little messy, it didn't look that bad. She was right. Just warning you, I'm going to turn around now, alright? Ava suddenly spoke to me. She stayed still for a moment before dropping her arms and turning around to face me. Oh, you managed to get your tail through yourself this time. Ava came a bit closer. Well done. MHM. I felt my tail start to sway but I reached behind me and grabbed it before it got out of control. Let's get to the brushing then. Ava chuckled as she picked up the basket. What are you waiting for? Let's get back to the room. I followed Ava back to the room, where she promptly sat on the floor and gestured towards her lap. Come on now, you know what to do. I sat myself just in front of her and laid my tail in her lap. As soon as I did, I felt a brush run through it. Wow, I really outdid myself. It feels quite a lot better. Ava decided to run her hand through my tail, don't you think? I nodded. That's good. Ava switched back to the brush. Now make sure you pay attention. 
we've got. I couldn't quite make out what she said past that point, as my eyelids slowly closed, and I drifted off to sleep while she kept brushing. I hope she likes it too. The temperature around me suddenly dropped, and the surprise caused my eyes to shoot open revealing an endless black void all around me. Is it? A large black fox walked up to me out of the darkness. As soon as I laid eyes on it, I started running with my arms outstretched. The fox just continued walking towards me until we eventually collided, and I wrapped my arms around it. Stay here, please, just stay with. Wait, it's, it's not her. This wasn't the first time that I had dreamt up a fake, but this time, I knew she was really out there, and it hurt just a little more than all the other times. Why? Is she still avoiding me? I cleaned up my tail. I got a new dress. What's missing? I wish you would tell me. I continued hugging the dream fox while I thought to myself. It at least provided some kind of comfort, even if it felt a bit hollow. Is there something she wants from me? Thinking back to when I met her at the temple. I tried to see if there was something she wanted, a gap I could fill. What would a goddess even need from me? That's when the perfect idea hit me. I walked around the fox and lay against its body, just like Ovi had let me do with her. Is this it? She did this for me when I was crying. Maybe. That's what she wants, but. The other way around. I liked it when she let me. I looked back at the dream fox. What do you think? Is it a good idea? The fox just stared at me blankly. I mean, I think I'd be happy just being her pillow. Because at least then, I could stay with her. I sat in silence for a moment, leaning deeper into the dream fox's fur. But I can't turn into a fox like she can. Avo can turn into a crow. Maybe she knows. But. Can I even ask her? I looked back over at the dream fox, expecting to see a blank stare, but surprisingly, it nodded. Wait, what? The dream fox then got up, gently sliding me off of its body, before walking off into the distance. I tried to follow it, but my legs felt like they were rooted in place. As soon as I lost sight of it, a faint giggle echoed throughout the space. Who? I jolted awake only to find myself completely wrapped up by something. Immediately, I started struggling, trying my hardest to squeeze my way. After much effort, I eventually freed myself from the cloth cocoon. What's going on? I was still in the inn, although I had been moved onto my bed. Looking out the window, the sun had just started to set. Something. Feels. Off. I looked back over at what I was trapped in. But that just resulted in more questions. Laying in front of me was the dress I was wearing, or maybe it was just a dress that looked a lot like it. It seemed much bigger than mine, to the point that I think it would have still looked big on Reino. I looked down to check my own dress, but what I saw froze me in place. Is this? Did I? Where my hands should have been, there were instead two small white paws, barely able to leave an indent in the bed. I, I did it. I'm a little small but it's enough for her to rest her head on. It has to be. My tail started swaying all over the place, trying to pull my whole body along with it, but I didn't care. I'm one step closer. While I was busy celebrating, the door slowly opened with a quiet creak. Soon after, both Ava and Raynal peeked into the room. Nobody made a move, instead choosing to just stare in silence. Uh, Ava. Do you know what we're supposed to do here? Raynal asked. I can try. Ava pushed the door open completely and came into the room before sitting at the foot of my bed. There. A lot bigger than before. Looking up at Ava from the bed, it was hard not to notice just how small I really was. I instinctively took a step back. Hey, calm down, don't panic. Ava showed her palms to me. But I'm not panicking. This. This is a good thing. This is what I needed. It's very early for this to have happened. At least. I think it is. I don't know if Kitsune are different when it comes to this. Yeah, I still remember when you gave me a heart attack when you first turned into a crow about two months back. Raynal tried to come into the room, but Ava stopped her. You can't just walk up to her like that right now. You are a lot bigger than her now after all. You'll just startle the little fox. Without waiting for a response, Ava turned back towards me. Okay now, just... Come to me slowly so I can check that everything's okay. Everything is okay. In fact, it's perfect. Look, I know you don't want to open up to us, but I really need to make sure you're okay. Ava gestured towards her lap. It's rare, 
but I have heard some horror stories about the first time using transformation magic going wrong. But it didn't go wrong. I looked myself over just to make sure, and what I saw looked exactly like a white fox, a baby one with an oversized tail perhaps, but that's good enough for me. Look. Si I'm just trying to help you here. Ava looked up at the ceiling, I just. Wish you weren't so afraid of me. Hearing Eva say that caught me a bit off guard, it somehow made me feel a bit. Uncomfortable. I'm. Not. Scared of you. I. Think. It's true that Ava has helped me a lot in the last few days, and nothing bad ever happened afterwards. But. Why? Nobody else is like that. What do you want from me? Everyone wants something. Looking up at Raynal, she stood in the doorway, staring at Ava ready to run in and grab her at a moment's notice. I thought back over every time Ava spoke to me, trying to figure out why she was different to everyone else I'd met until it suddenly became clear. The answer had been staring me in the face from the beginning. She wants to touch my tail. Every time she helped me, it had to do with my tail. Does that mean if I just let her touch my tail, she won't do anything to me? Is it that easy? I it's the only explanation. I slowly made my way across the bed and clambered up onto Ava's lap, making sure to present my tail to her as I did. Ava looked down at me without saying anything. In response, I waved my tail in front of her face, trying to tell her what to do. Can I? Ava asked. I nodded. Ava hesitated for a moment before running her hand through my tail with a content look on her face. Well, I can definitely say that your tail, while smaller, is still just as soft as before. I, I was right. If I just give her what she wants, I'll be fine. It even made that uncomfortable feeling go away. Ava then checked me all over before giving her okay. What did you do to make her so docile all of a sudden? Raina asked. Well, that's just my natural talents at work, Ava smirked, it was always only a matter of time before she would see my charm. Oh, come on, let me try too, Rhinel squatted down in front of Ava and held her hands out, just hop on over. No, I don't know what you want, I still can't trust you. I curled up on Ava's lap, refusing to move. Oh, don't be like that mom, Ava stroked my back. I'm just that good at this. Raynal and Ava kept going back and forth like that for a while. I started ignoring the two of them pretty quickly, instead focusing on just how comfortable Ava's lap was. The slight warmth made me feel sleepy even though I had only just woken up. Tomorrow, I'll come to you. Chapter 26, Sisterly Bonding Ovia Puff, I sat in Alaria's domain waiting for her after she decided to step out for a moment. In order to occupy myself, I decided to check on Kiera. I want to try that too. What is this thing that you want to try now? Alaria called out as she came back into her domain with a pleased look spread across her face. I pointed at the image of a fluffy little white fox curled up in someone's lap that was floating just in front of me. Alaria walked up behind me so that she could see what I was pointing at. You do know that if you want to sleep in my lap like that, she sat down next to me. All you have to do is ask. My lap is always available to you. And no. That's not it. I I want K Kiera to sleep in M my lap. Stop stuttering. A goddess shouldn't be stuttering all the time. All right then. She chuckled as she pulled out a notebook. Should I add it to your list? Then, I nodded. Instead of writing it down, Alaria just stared at me in silence. What? Was I not supposed to say yes to that? Did I make another mistake? Did you pick that habit up from watching that little kitsune all the time? Alaria came closer before brushing her hand against my cheek. I thought we went through this already. You're going to try to help her open up a bit more. How are you going to do that if you also decide to stop talking? I tried to turn away from her, but she grabbed my head and held it in place. W what am I supposed to say here? I I I don't know. It was your idea. She then let go of me and placed the notebook she was holding on my lap. That's why we made the list. If you get stuck and don't know what to do. You can just check the list and know exactly what to do. But, what if I mess it up again? Alaria then pulled me into a hug while encasing me in her tails. You need to stop being so hard on yourself, she said, brushing my hair out of my face. While your last meeting might not have been perfect, you still did some things right. What did I even do right? I started by tackling her to the ground. Like, the name you decided to give her. She seemed to like it quite a bit. 
but, Alaria covered my mouth with her hand before I could finish talking. I'm telling you she liked it, not asking you if you think she did. She removed her hand, although I have been wondering, how did you come up with the name? I would have expected a name like Fluffy instead of Kiara. Fluffy was one of the options. Is it that bad? I, I had some help. I blurted out. See, if you don't she suddenly stopped talking, wait, you went and got help from someone but you didn't ask me. Who did you even ask? I don't have to ask you. Not every time. Benny. Benny helped me. Benny? She closed her eyes for a moment while she thought, Benny is. Your emissary of darkness, with the bunny ears, right? I nodded, but she just stared back at me instead of continuing to talk. Yes. Guess I should give him a reward. Alaria turned and mumbled something to one of the light spirits in the room. He didn't do it all. I am still the one who picked it. He just came up with new options. She turned back to face me, showing only a brief look of surprise before going right back to her usual smile. And you did a good job doing that. She patted me on the head, but why did you ask him of all people? I mean, I'm right here, and coming up with names is something I do quite a lot of as the goddess of titles. H. He has traveled all over the place. I, I thought he would have some interesting ideas. You do know. I, I also didn't want to be bother you more than I needed to. I panicked and cut her off before she could say anything. Wait, I, I didn't mean to say that part. Alaria didn't say anything and just looked down at me in silence for a moment. Sister, you know you can always ask me for help. When have I ever said no to you? But, that brings me back to what I was trying to say. She interrupted me before I could respond. If you ever don't know the answer to something, you can always ask someone for help. But, she suddenly pulled me in even closer. Now. I don't know what's going on in that head of yours, but I can definitely make a good guess. She patted me on the head, you need to stop being so hard on yourself and just listen to your sister on this. Why can't I just be like you instead? You always know what to do. I, I just, I don't know. I mumbled. Well, if you don't, who does? You? She gently stroked my hair before speaking to me again. Come on now. You know that isn't the answer I was looking for. What else am I supposed to do? I just don't know. Look, I can see this is difficult for you, but you've already gotten much better at this. I also know that you're not going to stop here. No matter what you say now, you'll just keep on trying in your own way. Why are you so confident? Can't you just give some of that confidence to me? You know what? I think I have something that'll help cheer you up a bit. She let me out of her tails and turned to grab something from behind her, so, what do you think? Is that how? I asked around a bit and managed to get this done in time. She answered as if she had read my mind. She was holding up a black dress, it was frilled at the bottom and had a small white layer sticking out beneath it. I was looking at a copy of the dress Guerra wore, but it was much bigger than hers. Why did you? You're supposed to be meeting up again soon, right? She started folding the dress back up, I thought it would be fun for you two to wear matching outfits. I'm sure the little Kitsune will enjoy it at least. Am I allowed to? I didn't ask her. It will also make you seem a bit more friendly than that outfit you wore last time. I thought it looked good. It did look good on you, but it also looked quite imposing, to put it lightly. Alaria said as she handed me the folded dress, I would tell you to just dress how you normally do instead but that's probably not appropriate for her. Just thinking about how that would go caused my face to heat up. I am definitely not doing that. Alario let out a small chuckle, and I wasn't asking you to. Now, I should probably be letting you go soon. Alaria stood up and stretched. Huh? What? Why? I am not ready yet. I latched onto her arm, trying to make her sit back down. S she shouldn't be see coming back so as soon. I it's too soon. I I still need to practice. Well, I might have given our little Kitsune a slight nudge of a sort, she said as she struggled to peel me off of her arm. W why did you do that? I let go of her arm. I I need more time. T this doesn't work. You don't need any more time. You've got your list to tell you what to do, the outfit you're going to wear and you even have that gift you want to give her. What more do you need? I I need to practice. I I don't remember my lines. I wrapped my hair around my hand and then clenched it into a fist. You need to stop talking about lines and the like. Alaria grabbed my hand, 
slowly prying open my fingers, you're just going to talk to her for a bit, you're not putting on a rehearsed performance, okay? But, I might say the wrong thing. I, I'll ruin it again. Alaria then pulled me into a hug once again. How about this? I'll keep an eye on you two like last time and step in if you really need the help. Would that be better for you? I nodded, but this time, instead of staring at me, Alaria just continued talking. Then I'll do just that, alright? I stayed silent, just hugging Alaria for a few minutes. Do you feel better now? MHM. Good. Now you should head back to your place and get set up. She put her hands on my shoulders and gently pushed me away from her, forcing me to let go. Oh, okay. I, I'll try. That's all I'm ever going to ask of you. I was about to leave but decided to stop for a moment and say something that was on my mind. Th. Thank you. F for helping me. E even though I'm like this. Like I've been telling you this whole time, it's fine. I enjoy the extra bonding time with my sister especially after all these years. MHM. I left her domain right after that, feeling a bit better than before. Alright, Ovia. You just have to do it. Why you don't have a choice. It will go well this time. It just has to. Chapter 27. I need to get going. My eyes opened just as the sun had started to rise. I was still lying on Ava's lap. Although she must have fallen asleep at some point as she wasn't sitting up. I didn't know exactly why. But that night of sleep felt like the best I'd had in a long time, something about it just felt more natural. I was tempted to just try to go back to sleep, however, there was something more important to do. So as not to waste any more time, I immediately hopped off of Ava's lap onto the floor and stretched. However, as soon as I did, she woke up. What? She looked all around the room until she eventually laid eyes on me. Oh, so you do yawn end up staying there all night. I guess that means I won the bet. That doesn't matter right now. I need to get going. Hoping that she would understand me, I made my way over to the door and scratched at it. Just let me out. I can go by myself. Kit. Come back yawn over here. Ava wiped her eyes. I still need to check if you can change out of your fox form without any problems. Why? I don't need to go back. I have everything I need just like this. I scratched at the door again. Hey, come on now. Don't be like that. Ava stood up. How are you going to wear your new dress like that? That's a good point. But I have for now. I, I don't need it anymore. Once again, I scratched at the door. This time choosing to look Ava in the eye at the same time. What's going on with you? Why do you want to stay as a fox so badly? Oh, I know something that will change your mind. Ava picked up a brush from the table and held it out in front of her. It will be a lot harder for you to take care of your fur with those paws. Well, not that I would mind doing for you. But you know, that's, I, I can just, I dot can't. Ask a goddess to do it for me. So, still somewhat reluctant, I walked over to Ava, who picked me up and placed me back on the bed. Good. Now, all you need to do is try and turn back. How? I looked up at Ava, assuming that she hadn't finished talking, but she didn't say anything. Um, go on then. Do you need me to turn around? Is that the problem? I shook my head, starting to feel a little panicked. Just do what you did to turn into a fox, but backwards? Ava started to look worried, I don't really know how to explain it. And it might not be the same as it is for me. B but I didn't do anything, I, I just woke up like this. Is there something wrong with me? Um, I don't know what to do. She started pacing back and forth, maybe, just try thinking about turning back. But like, really hard? I don't know how I'm supposed to explain any of this. Oh, okay, I, I'll try. I closed my eyes and tried focusing only thinking about wanting to turn back, but nothing happened. See come on. Why you need to do this? Kiera. You can't make Ho Ovia take care of you. You can't be a hassle. S she'll leave you again. As soon as that thought crossed my mind, it felt like something was sucked out from deep inside me before the room got much colder all of a sudden. Thud. Kit. You can open your eyes. You need to put some clothes on. When I opened my eyes, the first thing I saw was Ava strewn across the floor with her hands covering her eyes. Ava scrambled onto her feet, making sure to keep one hand over her eyes. Why your dress is on the bed, she said, turning around so her back was facing me. I I'll tell you when I'm turning back around if you need help with the tail flap again. Alright. I quickly put on my dress, 
still a little surprised by just how easy it was to pull my tail through the flap now that it had been cleaned up. I think that was enough time. I'm turning around now, Ava slowly turned around, peeking through her fingers before putting her hands down once she saw me, okay, do you need me to help neaten up your tail now? I nodded. Ava climbed onto the bed next to me before gesturing towards my tail. I, I understand. This is for helping me turn back. I turned around and laid my tail down in her lap. As soon as I did, she enthusiastically got to work sorting out my fur. After a few minutes of brushing, the door to the room slowly opened, and Raynal came into the room. So, who won in the end? Raynal asked, looking at Ava. I did, as I expected. Seriously? What did you do to make her warm up to you like that? At this point, you must have some kind of secret method or something that you're not telling me about. I already told you. It's just my natural charm, Ava said, placing her hands on my shoulders. There you go, all neatened up and looking adorable. Good. Then it's time for me to go now. I hopped off of the bed and immediately made my way to the door. But, before I could open it, Raynal picked me up. Um, Kit, where are you wanting to go all of a sudden? I pointed at the door while trying to free myself from her grip. That doesn't help very much. Raynal put me down, but she made sure to stand between me and the door before she did. If I tell you, will you let me go? I went over to the bed, grabbed the notebook that Raynal had given me, and then pointed at the picture of Ovia. Is that what you wanted? Can I go out now? You're wanting to go to this person? Raynal gave me a puzzled look. I nodded. Um, I, Kit, I think you might be getting a bit ahead of yourself, Ava interrupted. The first thing you should probably do is eat breakfast. You barely ate anything yesterday, after all. I can deal with it. I, it's only one day. I, I can do more than that. Hey, Kit, you know, something tells me that you want to look your best in front of this person, am I right? Ava knelt down in front of me. I nodded. Well, wouldn't it be very embarrassing if your tummy started rumbling all of a sudden? I see you understand what I'm talking about. Just give me a few minutes, and I'll sort something out, alright? Ava then got up and made her way over to the door. Ava, seriously, is this something just between Beastkin that I just don't understand? Raynal asked. Ava just giggled before leaving the room, leaving Raynal just staring at the door. After a few minutes, Ava came back in with breakfast which I ate as fast as possible. As soon as my plate was empty, I made my way to the door again. However, this time, both Ava and Raynal started following behind me. Why? Just let me go alone. What? Did you think we were going to leave you unprotected? Raynal asked. Don't worry about us. Ava put a cloak around my shoulders. We just want to make sure nothing happens to you. Okay? It doesn't matter. My shadow coated my hair as I opened the door and made my way out of the inn with both Ava and Raynal still in tow. As soon as I got outside, I started heading directly for the Black Stone Temple. When the temple came into view, Raynal put her arm in front of me. Wait a moment, what are you doing? Are you trying to go back to that temple? But last time Raynal then let out a stifled grunt. Don't worry about her, Ava had just elbowed Raynal in the stomach. You can go on ahead. We'll catch up soon. I didn't question what had just happened and instead took the opportunity to run towards the temple. It didn't take long before I was standing in front of the two large stone doors. Now, how do I open them? Suddenly, the doors just started to open by themselves, and standing behind them was the man with the rabbit ears from the last time. Yeah. Just come in, I was already expecting you to show up. The man said. I did just that and the man led me over to one of the pews, where we both sat down, leaving a small distance between us. The goddess just needs a minute to prepare. So you'll have to wait a little bit. Prepare? We sat there in silence for a moment before the man suddenly started talking to me again. I need to apologize to you. The man leaned forward, last time. Was just a bad day for me. Well, and I didn't recognize you with the black hair. I was only told to look out for white hair. Why are you apologizing to me? What did you even do? You don't need to accept it. Just, I made a mistake. The man leaned forward even further to the point that his ears were resting on his knees. I know the kind of life you've had. You really didn't deserve that. I would know. Without thinking, I reached out and put my hand on his shoulder, hoping that he would understand that I was fine. Really? Does that mean you forgive me? 
The man sat back up, that's nice. Mainly because I imagine we'll be seeing each other a decent bit from now on. Why? Anyway. Guess the next thing is. I should introduce myself. I'm Benvolio, but you can just call me Benny. Most people do. I stared at him, not sure what to do. I already know your name. But well, I won't use it until you tell me yourself. I don't want to overstep my bounds and all that. After he finished speaking, a small dark orb appeared next to his ear. Oh. She's good to go now? Yeah, I'll let her go then. The orb then vanished. Well, you can probably guess what that was, but she's ready for you now. He stood up. Guess we'll have to talk more later instead. I got up off the pew as well and started walking further into the temple, waiting for the familiar chill to envelop me. I am ready for this. I, I don't need to be so nervous. Chapter 28, that makes it special. It wasn't long before I felt the temperature start to drop which only caused my nerves to build. She's there. She's right there. Slowly marching forward, each step filled with anticipation, I moved further into the darkness until a familiar room came into view, and my heart stopped. It's. It was as if all my nerves had vanished just by laying eyes on it. It was definitely the same room made from black stone bricks, but it looked a little different. The chains that had hung from the ceiling were gone, the room was noticeably brighter and there were two couches just off to the side that weren't there before. Go. Just. Go. Immediately, I started running. It probably didn't take more than a few seconds before I was standing in front of the throne, but once I got there, it was like time had frozen. All the anticipation was bottled up inside of me, but there was no relief. Where? I looked around the room but couldn't find Ovia anywhere. Why? What? Am I still? My thoughts were suddenly interrupted by the sound of rustling paper coming from behind the throne. I instantly turned towards the throne and saw just the tip of a deep black tail poking out. Is that her? My feet started moving by themselves, taking me towards the throne. H. Hello K. Kiera. W. Welcome back to M. My Domain. As soon as her voice reached my ears, I stopped moving. It's her. She. She let me back in, but... Why is she hiding from me? D did I miss a step? W why isn't she saying anything? Ovia said in a faint voice, followed by the sound of turning pages, um, H how are you? I, I'm, not sure. I wanted to tell her that I was fine, that I was happy just being here, but I couldn't bring myself to lie to her, not after everything she's done for me. Oh, um, see can I help? What's, the right answer? What am I? even supposed to say? Neither of us said anything to each other, just waiting in silence, until I somehow built up the courage to ask the one question that was gnawing away at me in this silence. Why? Are you hiding from me? I felt a tear start to form, did I? No. She suddenly shouted, interrupting me, I it's. It's. I. I can just. The sound of her age shuffling could be heard coming from behind the throne with the occasional tail poking out. After a few seconds, Ovia stepped out from behind the throne, her face noticeably pink. S.C., I am right here. Is that? Instead of the foam fitting dress she had worn before, this time, she was wearing a black dress that was only slightly frilled along the bottom, with a small white layer sticking out beneath it. Down the chest were two rows of decorative buttons, and around the collar was a ribbon tied into a bow. That's. I looked down at my own dress to make sure that I wasn't imagining things. It's the same. I was right. She does look better in it than me. Much better. Seeing Ovia wearing the dress so much better than I ever could should have been disheartening, but instead, there was some other feeling or maybe a desire forming. However, before I could put any more thought into it, she spoke up. Um, W why aren't you saying anything? W was this wrong? She pulled out a small notebook and started flipping through it. I I thought you would like to wear rim matching dresses. While I didn't know what exactly I was feeling, it definitely wasn't a bad feeling. I do. I think. Ovi abruptly stopped flipping through the notebook and looked directly at me. Oh, T that's good. Once again, the room fell silent. She eventually turned back to her notebook rapidly skimming over the pages until she found one in particular that made her face brighten up. After a short moment, she looked at me again. Why your name? Kiera? Just saying that name out loud again made me feel a little embarrassed. Yes, K. Kiera. She took another brief glance at the notebook, 
W. Why haven't you T told anyone your in name? Why should I tell anyone? It's, it's special. My face continued to heat up. It's special. That means. She turned a page. W. Wait. What do you mean it says special? Why wouldn't it be? You gave it to me. That makes it special to me. Ovila looked back at the notebook, flipping through a few pages, but this time her expression didn't change. Instead, she closed the notebook before letting out a brief sigh and pointing over at the couches beside the throne. F first, let's sit down. I didn't say anything and just walked over to the couches with Ovia walking close behind me. As soon as I was standing in front of one of the couches, Ovia picked me up before carefully placing me on top of it. You didn't need to do that, but thank you. Why you can lie down if it seemed more comfortable. She said as she sat down on the other couch directly in front of me. I stared at her, not sure of what to say next. I if your in name is special to you. U.S. should tell other people. But I, I don't want other people to know. For some reason, I couldn't make eye contact with Ovia. You gave it to me. I, why you should let other people know why your name is important. She leaned forward. It's who you are. I it's proof you are here. I don't want to give it to anyone else. I like it when you say my name. Wait. As soon as I registered what I just said, my face started to heat up, and my shadow spread to cover my whole body, letting me blend into the surrounding darkness. What am I saying? That's. Ovia wrapped her hair around her hand before clenching it into a fist. W what do I say here? She mumbled. Out of the corner of my eye, I caught a faint glimmer of light, but when I tried to look directly at it, it immediately disappeared. Um, okay. I, I'll try. Ovia's eyes then focused on me. Why you should tell people of your own name because I, I gave it to you. Why? Be because why you should show it off. I, I gave it to you. That's something to be p proud of. Why your name came directly from the G goddess of darkness? She puffed her chest out. Ain't nobody else can say that. Show off. But. Why would you want me to show it off? I'm. There are better people out there. There must be. My thoughts were interrupted by another glimmer of light, but just like the last one, it disappeared almost as soon as it showed itself. A. Are you sure? She mumbled under her breath before once again looking me in the eye. I. W. Want you to tell people your own name. I. Can I say no? She. Wants me to. Ovia wants me to. She has always helped me. There must be a reason. I don't know what. But, if I want to stay here with her, I have to listen to her. After much thought, I nodded while also reining my shadow back in to only cover my hair and tail. Yes? T that's a yes? Ovia stood up, releasing her hair. I nodded again, this time looking up at her as I did. I I did it. I d didn't mess it up. She looked off to the side, but when I looked the same way, all I saw was a wall. She then pulled the notebook back out and started flipping through the pages again while muttering to herself, W what's next? Is it my turn now? Is this where I show what I can do for her? I need to show her that there's a reason to keep me around. Oh Ovia. She instantly looked directly at me, seemingly forgetting about the book as it fell out of her hand and onto the floor. Can you sit next to me? I slide myself over to the side of the couch. Was I not supposed to do that? What have I done? I I can't just talk to a goddess like that. A hey, all right. I I can do tea that. She walked up next to me and sat down. One of her tails accidentally brushed against my own. The unexpected coolness of her fur sent a shiver through my tail and up my spine. I looked over at Ovia to see if she noticed, but she didn't say anything. Okay Kiera. You've got this. You've prepared for this. Just follow the plan. Chapter 29, I need to do something for you. How do I ask her? We had been sitting next to each other for a few minutes, but neither of us had said anything. Giera, you need to say something. But I don't know what to say. You're the one who asked her to sit next to you. I know that. But it didn't matter how much I thought about it. I just couldn't find the right words to use. Why is this so hard? I turned and looked up at Ovia, but she was busy playing with her hair in her lap, wrapping and then unwrapping her hands over and over again. Just follow the plan. That's all you have to do. Before I could do anything, there was another flash of light. However, unlike last time, 
it didn't disappear. When I turned to look at it, it felt like something warm entered my body. Immediately, I tried to stand up, but before my feet touched the ground, everything around me went black. Help, yep, yep. I immediately started struggling, pushing against anything that touched me until I eventually managed to free myself. Looking around the room, the first thing I saw was Ovia staring directly at me. However, she was much bigger than I remember, easily towering over me. Well, towering over me more than she did before, at least. You um. Ovia inched closer to me. I looked down at myself and saw two small white paws trampling on my dress. Did I? How? I didn't do anything yet. Somehow, I had turned into a fox without thinking about it, but that seemed to be a good thing. Ovia's eyes were locked solely on me containing what I could only call a desire that I had never seen from her before. Was I right? Is this what she wants? Without wasting any more time thinking, I hurriedly pushed my dress onto the floor before making my way over to the edge of the couch and lying down. W what? Ovia asked, Did you W want something? I responded simply by pointing at my body with my tail, assuming she would understand what I wanted her to do. Before saying anything. She reached her hands out towards me before abruptly stopping herself. See can I? She asked while holding her hands out in front of her. Yes, of course. I need to show you what I can do for you. I nodded. Ah oh, really? She held her pose although her hands started trembling. I nodded again, pointing at my body with my tail again in case she had misunderstood me. Oh okay. She started moving again, but instead of lying down like I expected her to. She picked me up and held me in her arms. Huh? What? This isn't right. I wriggled my way out of her arms, making sure not to scratch her with my claws, and lay back down on the couch in the same spot. Oh oh. D did I do something W wrong? She moved away, putting her hands behind her back. I I knew I shouldn't have D done that. W what was I thinking? No. You didn't do anything wrong. I didn't explain well enough. That's what happened. It's not your fault. Yep. I made a noise so Ovia would look back at me. Why yes, W what's wrong? She brought her hands out in front of her again. Using my paw, I pointed at her head and then at my body. I I don't understand. She started frantically looking around the room. After only a brief moment, she flicked one of her tails, which caused a black tendril to appear from the ground. The tendril then grabbed a notebook that Ovia had dropped a little earlier and gave it back to her before disappearing into the ground just as quickly as it appeared. T there must be s something, she rapidly flipped through the pages, w what am I supposed to do, yep. Once again, I tried to get Ovia's attention. She looked up from the notebook and back at me. I then repeated the same action I had done before, but this time. I also briefly pretended to be asleep afterwards. Please. S sleep? She glanced at the notebook and then back at me. Why you want to sleep in, in my lap? I shook my head, which caused Ovia to visibly deflate slightly. What? I is this wrong? I repeated the actions again, hoping she would understand me this time. And maybe it's just unexpected. I, I doubt anyone else has offered to do this for a goddess. That must be what's going on. Why you want me to? S sleep on why you? I nodded as quickly as I could, and my tail followed suit, rocking my whole body back and forth along with it. B but, yep, just do it. I know you want to. You have to. B but you're, yep. I stared directly into her eyes. You have to do it. It's all I have right now. Oh, okay. I if that's what you w want, she lay down on the couch but made sure to keep her head up. I am doing it now. Oh, okay, I'm ready, yep. She slowly started to lower her head onto my body. Before her head even made contact, the first thing I noticed was that her hair brushing against my body gave me a slight chill, just like her tails did. That feels nice. Without warning, a low rumbling noise started coming from somewhere deep inside my chest. What is this? Am I? purring. It seemed that I wasn't the only one caught off guard as Ovia had stopped lowering her head and was instead staring directly at me without saying anything. W what am I supposed to do? I just pointed at my body with one of my paws, hoping that she would ignore that embarrassing moment. I I didn't mean to. I didn't even know I could. Ovia didn't say anything and instead continued to lay her head down on me. However, as soon as her head made contact with my body, I felt an immense weight start pushing down on me, 
making it harder to breathe. What's going on? It's just her head. Why is it this heavy? Am I that weak? Are you okay? Ovia asked, sounding a little panicked. I can't stop. Just need to force my way through it. I, I've been through worse. Why yep? I nodded, making sure not to show her how much I was struggling. I can take it. If I just do it enough, I'll get stronger. I, I have to. After a few more seconds of gritting my teeth, the weight abruptly disappeared. Huh? No. I looked up at Ovia, who had propped herself up over the top of me. I I can't. What? Why? W what did I do wrong? I it's not supposed to go like this. I pointed back at my body, hoping she would give me another chance. Please, I don't have anything else. I I don't want to H hurt you. Ovia was clearly panicking. Yep. It didn't hurt. I'm fine. B but. Why you started crying? Ovia wiped away the tears from under my eyes, proving that she was telling the truth. So, that doesn't matter. I cry all the time. I, I, had to do this. Ovia stopped lying down and instead sat up next to me. What can I do now? I, I have to prove my worth. I need her to let me stay with her. W what about this? Yes, anything. Just, I need to do something for you. I don't care what it is. She picked me up off of the couch and carefully placed me in her lap. Yep. I looked directly at her, waiting for her to tell me what she wanted. What now? What do I need to do? You um. And now you can go to s sleep. Ovia looked down at me, with her hands hovering just above my body. What? That's something for me. I need to be the one doing something for you. Be but. See can I? Her hands started trembling again. My ears perked up. Can you what? See can I? S stroke your T tail. W while you sleep? Is that it? Why wouldn't you be able to? Despite my confusion at her request, I nodded my head, causing Ovia's eyes to immediately light up. T then, go on. She waved her hands at me, and make yourself comfortable. Is this really enough? I curled up in her lap just like I had done with Ava the night before. As soon as I settled down, I felt Ovia run her fingers through my fur. Her lap felt surprisingly different from Ava's, instead of having a slight warmth, hers was cool, which didn't make it any less comfortable. If anything, it was more comfortable as I was already kept warm by all the fur covering my body. T thank you, Ovia muttered under her breath. I wanted to respond to her but wasn't able to as my eyes started to close by themselves. Just stay here. Don't leave me. Not again. Chapter 30. It's time for you to wake up. Hello there. I'm sorry that I need to do this, but it's time for you to wake up. Huh? Who? What's going on? I forced my eyes open slowly, only to be greeted by Arya's face, which was only a few centimeters in front of mine. Wait, where is Ovia? At that moment, I felt a hand run through my fur, so I spun around to see who it was. Oh, s sorry. D did I startle you? Ovia pulled her hand back. I responded to her by quickly shaking my head before trying to curl back up. But before I could, someone picked me up. No, you can't do that right now. I already told you that you need to wake up, Arya said as she put me down on the floor. We don't have a lot of time left, so I'm going to help you turn back. Ovia, can you help with the clothes? Why yes, I can D do that. Ovia looked over at me before flicking one of her tails engulfing both me and my dress in darkness. It was a strange feeling, similar to when I wrapped my own shadow around my body, but something about it felt distant, it was almost like I was being cut off from the rest of the world around me. Before I was able to do anything else, a familiar warm energy started to enter my body. Is this? There we go, Arya clapped her hands together, our little kitsune is all back to normal. A moment later, the darkness around me disappeared revealing that I had been changed back. While it was surprising that Arya was able to change me back, what was much more surprising to me was that I was already fully clothed. It's possible to get dressed like this. Can I learn to do that? I looked at Ovia, which caused her to shuffle to the far side of the couch. Then she looked back at me without saying anything, just looking into my eyes. Do you want me to? I opened my mouth to say something, but before any words even came out, Ovia nodded. Without hesitating any further, I walked over and sat down next to her, making sure not to accidentally sit on any of her tails. If it's what you want, I can do it. It's nice that you two have made some progress. Arya sat down on the couch just opposite us. However, 
We really should be sending the little Kitsune back soon, but... I looked over at Ovia, but she avoided eye contact. What? Why? Did I not do enough, sister? Didn't you want to? W what? I blurted out, interrupting Arya. Both goddesses turned to face me, remaining silent. W what? Else? Do I have to do? I managed to force the words out. Neither god said anything in response and just kept staring. What's the problem? Am I that useless? Why aren't you saying anything? P please. Just. Give me something. Anything. All of a sudden, the words just seemed to come out by themselves. I I don't want to leave. I I don't want you to leave me. What do I have to do? What's wrong with me? I I'll do anything. Just. Let me stay here. Just don't leave me. Not again. Ovia reached out towards me, but I pulled away without thinking. Wait, no. Why did you do that? You need her to like you. What are you going to do now? Tears started rolling down my cheeks uncontrollably, quickly soaking my dress. It's all my fault. I, I keep making mistakes. Why did I think this would work? K Kiera. I heard Ovia's voice, but instead of feeling comforted like before, all I felt was fear. Now that you've done this, why would she ever let you stay here now? I tried to get off of the couch, but before I could, I was pulled back. S stop. Ovia wrapped her tails around me, D don't cry. I buried my face in her tails, and she started to run her fingers through my hair. Just. Stop being so nice to me. If I can't stay here, just let me go. I wasn't sure how much time had passed, but it couldn't have been much, as while my tears had stopped. Both my cheeks and dress were still damp. Have you calmed down a little now? Arya asked. I reluctantly nodded while keeping my face hidden in Ovia's tails. Good. Now, Arya paused for a moment. I think I should explain some things to you. Is that okay? Why? I'm just going to be sent back anyway. I'll take that as a yes. I heard her come closer. If I could, I would have you stay in my domain. But unfortunately, there are some rules that we need to follow. Well, no, never mind. You don't need to worry about the complicated part. But just know that it isn't our choice to send you back like this. But. I lifted my head out of Ovia's tails. I, I'm sorry, there's nothing we can do. Arya interrupted me. So, it was all for nothing. What? Do I do now? I've. Had enough. Be but. Ovia wrapped her arms around me, pulling me in close. Why you can see come back again. It took a moment for me to process what she had said. I I can? Is there still a chance? I. I need this. Yes, as long as you wait about. A week? Each time, Arya crouched down in front of me. I think that will be enough time to be safe. A week. I can still see her. Once a week. But. But. I want more. Both my tail and my ears drooped down as I continued to think about it. Sister? Arya looked over at Ovia. Oh. Suddenly, Ovia let go of me and jumped onto her feet. What? Before I could ask what was going on, she had already made her way into a side room, leaving just Arya and me. You don't need to worry so much. Arya started talking to me. I've known my sister for a long time, and I can tell you that she isn't going to be leaving you alone anytime soon, alright? You can't know that, but I hope you're right. Just then. There was a large crash, followed by the sound of a door flying open. I I have a gift. Ovia shouted as she ran back into the room, cradling something in her arms. Arya quickly got up and took a step back before Ovia took her place, kneeling in front of me. I if you feel that lonely, she extended her arms towards me. T this so you can help. In her hands was what looked like a baby fox with dark gray fur, although it sat in her hands completely motionless. What is this? A plushie? I reached out to pick it up, but before I could grab it, it got up and jumped into my lap by itself. A live fox? Ovia looked at me with expectant eyes, but I wasn't sure what she was expecting me to say. I should probably help explain this as well. Arya knelt down next to Ovia. This little fox is a newly born divine beast. Divine beast? Is that something I'm supposed to get as a gift? However, this little one is a bit unusual as it was born from your mana. She reached out to pat the fox, but it pulled away from her, to be more precise. It came about as the combination of your mana and some of my sister's divinity. I don't understand. Mana? Divinity? Ovia then reached out to pat the fox, which it happily accepted, 
I if you're all lonely, and maybe they see can remind you of a me. I looked over the fox again, running my fingers through their fur. It wasn't the same as obvious, but it was still a little cool to the touch. Okay. I muttered while avoiding eye contact with either of the goddesses. It's not her. But it's a gift from her. It's her third gift to me. D do they have a name? I asked. All divine beasts are given a name at birth by the spirits, Arya answered. This little fox is called Umbra. Umbra. As soon as I said their name, the little fox turned around and looked directly into my eyes. Their eyes were a pale gray, just like my own, although unlike mine, they were glowing softly. Then without warning they jumped off of my lap and disappeared into my shadow. D did it run away? Ovia started panicking. No, I responded, reaching out towards Ovia but stopping myself before actually grabbing her. Somehow. I just knew that Umbra was still there. As soon as they had dived into my shadow, it felt like it had gotten just a little heavier. That's all well and good, Arya said, lifting Ovia off the ground, but we really need to send you on your way. We're already cutting it a little close. I reluctantly slid myself off of the couch. Sister, you're the one who has to send her back. Ovia was about to flick her tail, but I interrupted her. I I'll be back. Why yes. Ovia said as she nodded before finally finishing her tail flick. As soon as she did, I was once again surrounded by darkness, and I slowly felt the presence of the two goddesses fade away. It's only a week. You can wait that long. Chapter 31 Is that really it? Raynal Puff. Come on, Ava. Did you really have to do that? Ava had just elbowed me in the stomach when I tried to stop Kit from going back into the temple that hurt her. I know you're all right. Ava retorted with a smirk spread across her face, you're plenty strong after all. I think you've underestimated just how strong you've gotten. Ava responded with a chuckle, but it was only brief as her smirk faded, leaving an uncharacteristically serious expression. Mom, I think we need to talk about how you've been acting lately, she looked me directly in the eye. What do you mean how I've been acting? I've just been myself. Ava didn't say anything and just continued to stare back at me. Look. I'm not letting her go in there alone. I broke eye contact and decided to just walk towards the temple. I can't do that to her. You can't do what to her? For some reason, just hearing those words frustrated me to no end, causing me to immediately stop and turn around to face her again. You should have seen her the last time she came out of there. The poor thing was non-responsive, with all those tears streaming down her face. I took a step towards Ava. She didn't even push me away like normal. I I don't want that to happen again. What am I doing? I shouldn't be complaining about this to a child. While I was busy regretting my outburst, Ava silently came up and hugged me, catching me off guard. Mom, I know you mean well, but you need to try and think about it from Kit's perspective. That's what I've been doing. Isn't it? I gently pushed Ava away. She, she's been hurt by too many people and I need to stop that from happening again. I, I can do that. No not like that. Then, like what? I shouted, cutting her off. What do you want me to do? Just let her get hurt again? Of course not. I know you just want to help her, just like you did when you first found me. She came a little closer, but do you think she knows that? I, that little girl. While I didn't like it, there wasn't much I could say in response, as I already understood what she was talking about. I know how scared she is of me. How couldn't I know? But even then, I, still can't let her go in there, I turned away from Ava and began walking to the temple again, even if she doesn't like it, I'm not letting that kid hurt herself, I can deal with this later, for now, I just need to keep her safe, why do you think she's going to hurt herself, Ava was followed close behind me, I already told you, do you really think she would intentionally let herself get hurt, she interrupted me, you know she wouldn't do that, I, what makes you so confident, my legs stopped moving, how do you know so much about her when she won't tell me anything? I think she tells us plenty, Ava walked in front of me. Plenty? She hasn't even said a word to me. What do you mean, Raynal? Stop this. You're just shouting at a child. Just tell me what you think I'm supposed to do. Come on. You know as well as I do that she's terrible at hiding what she's thinking. Ava put her hands just above her head, just like Kit's ears. Just watch her ears and tail and it's almost like you can read her mind. I know that, but this and that are two different things. No, 
they're not. All you need to know is that she's not some complicated puzzle you need to try and solve. Avo continued walking towards the temple, so I started moving as well to keep up with her. Then tell me, what do I need to do for her? Not much, just wait for her. Just wait? I asked, confused. That can't be right. If it was, something would have changed already. Yes, you should just wait for her to come to you instead of trying to force your way in. Is that really it? But, why would she ever come to me? But you. The door of the temple was only a few steps away at this point. How did you do it? The question slipped out of my mouth. I guess, I just gave her what she wanted when she wanted it. She said, now smirking again. But, I don't know what she wants. WH. I was cut off by the sound of the heavy stone doors opening. Standing in the doorway was a man with a familiar face. I thought you wouldn't be far behind. The black-haired rabbit beast can gestured into the temple. Come on in, it will probably be a while before she comes back. I just stood there, frozen, while trying to decide what I should do. But before I could come to a decision, Ava began to make her way into the temple. Ava? I shouted as I ran up and grabbed her by the shoulder. What? He invited us in? But he's... I also... want to talk to you about last time, the rabbit beast can turn to face me. I... Didn't make the best first impression. Didn't make the best first impression? You wouldn't let me go help her. You were the one who held me back. Who even are you? I asked, pulling Eva behind me. I never got a name from you. I thought I told you last time. Although, maybe I forgot. I wasn't in the best head space that day. He sat down on one of the pews. I'm Benvolio, the emissary of darkness. Although, I'm normally just called Benny. Mom. Why are you acting like this? Ava squirmed out from my grip and made her way over to the pew. He doesn't seem that bad, but I understand. It's nothing new around here. He interrupted me. I'm used to people avoiding me. And this temple. For no real reason. No reason? My anger was building. You wrapped me in those chains. You stopped me from helping that little girl when she had collapsed onto the floor. Tears streaming down her face. The room fell silent for a few short moments. I, sorry about that. But it wasn't to stop you from helping her. You wouldn't have found her there anyway. He looked up at me. I just, didn't want you to damage the place. I, no, I could, probably have just, explained myself better. Why are you being so hard on him? Ava piped up. If anything, you should be sitting over her with me. Why would I do that? Oh. I don't know, she threw her hands into the air, maybe because he seems to know why Kit wanted to come here, that's, without saying anything more, I reluctantly went and sat down next to Ava and Benvolio, so, what's going on here? I asked, why does that little girl want to come here after what happened last time? I, don't think I should tell you, you should probably hear it from her. He leaned forward, resting his elbows on his knees, she's safe though. The person she's talking to is very nice. Then, at least tell me who she is talking to. You probably already have an idea. Though, he started to sit up again, but before he straightened his back, he leaned forward again. No, never mind. Just like that, we had a back and forth for a few hours, with me asking questions and only getting vague reassurances from Benvolio. At least until I heard footsteps coming from the far side of the temple. Instinctively. I knew exactly who it was and jumped out of my seat, ready to comfort a crying kit, but to my surprise, that's not what came out of the darkness. It was the little girl I was expecting, but there were no tears, although her tail was hanging a little low. Kit, are you alright? I ran up to her, kneeling down when I got close, did anything happen to you? Ava then came up behind me, poking her head out just over my shoulder, so, did it go well? Kit nodded. I guess that means all your effort was worth it then. Benvolio then came over himself, although he made sure to keep some distance from us. I hope you had a good time with her. Once again, Kit nodded. Then I'll be waiting for your next visit. Although you should probably leave the temple soon. The sun has already started to set. That's something we can agree on, I said, turning back towards Kit. Let's head back to the inn. I'm sure Avo can quickly put something tasty together for dinner. She didn't respond at all, so I just picked her up and made my way to the exit. Come on Ava, let's get going. Sure, sure, 
Ava came up next to me as I stepped out of the temple. I'll need to talk to Ava some more when we get back. I need to learn how to help Kit properly this time. I found myself unintentionally looking over at Ava. I can't believe I'm getting advice from you now. Just when did you grow up so much? Chapter 32 it's been a long day. Ava placed a plate piled high with meat in front of me. It was a big day for you, she said as she sat down just across the table from me, so I thought we could celebrate a little bit. Thank you for helping me. I quickly nodded before stuffing my face. How is it always this good? Ovia would probably like this too. Maybe I should ask Ava to teach me. I stopped eating for a second and looked up at Ava but almost immediately went back to eating. No. I can't do that. Not yet. Anyway, I kept my head down for the rest of the meal, enjoying every bite of the succulent meat that I was given. It was only after I had finished eating that I noticed something was a bit different to usual. Raynal wasn't sitting at the table eating with us. I looked around a bit, just in case she had sat somewhere else, but she didn't seem to even be in the room. Are you looking for mom? Ava asked as she finished eating her meal. You probably won't see her tonight. Ava stood up, she has some homework to do. That's a problem for me. I still need to do what Ovia wanted me to do. I wanted to tell them my name as soon as I saw them back in the temple, but the words just wouldn't come out of my mouth for some reason. Why am I so useless? Both my ears and my tail drooped down. All I had to do was tell them my name. I couldn't even do that. I don't know what mom was worried about. Ava let out a chuckle as she picked up my empty plate. Should I just tell Ava now? She, she would be the easiest person to tell. No, not yet. I, I need to prepare more. I should wait for the two of them to be together. That way, I'll only have to tell them once. It's gotten pretty late, so I should probably leave you to get some sleep. She opened the door but turned back to tell me something before leaving. If you need anything. I'll probably be kept awake for a while. You just need to come and knock on our door, alright? I nodded, which caused her to smile at me before leaving the room and closing the door behind her. Why is it so hard? I started mumbling to myself, just open your mouth. You did it with Ovia. Why? Why can't you do it now? Just then, a slight rattle came from the door. Immediately my ears perked up. But all they heard was complete silence. Was someone watching me? Why would someone spy on me like that? Was it Ava? But I heard her footsteps as she left. I think, against my better judgment, I got up from my chair and opened the door, poking my head into the hallway while fearing the worst. There was no one there, just a dark, empty hallway. It's been a long day. And maybe I'm just hearing things. I closed the door and climbed onto my bed. Just as I did. The moonlight started filtering into the room through the window. I need to go through this seven times before I can see her again. What am I supposed to do while I wait? Should I get Ovi a gift? What would a goddess even want from me? While I was lost in thought, something small and fuzzy came and nuzzled up against my face. Immediately, I sat up but quickly calmed down when I saw that it was just Humbra. Almost instinctively, I reached out my hand and started petting them. The slight chill from there for comforting me even further. I'm glad that you're here. Just. To prove that what happened today was real. It didn't matter that it was my second time meeting her. There was always this thought in the back of my mind that none of it was real. That I was just making things up so I could hold on a bit longer. But seeing Umbra sitting in front of me proves that everything actually happened. There is just no other way I could explain them being here. They then climbed into my lap before curling up while looking up at me with expectant eyes. In response, I continued petting them, which seemed to be the right answer. Is this what it was like for Ovia? I think I understand why she wanted to do this, but my legs are already feeling a bit tired. I lift Dumbrin up and lay them down on the bed, which they didn't seem to be pleased about, but they didn't fight back at all. Instead, they curled back up and wrapped some shadows around their body. Watching Umbra wrap their body in shadows, just as I had done many times before, gave me an idea. If you can do that, can I do what you can? Umbra was able to hide themselves completely in my shadow, so does that mean that I can hide other things in there myself? I grabbed the notebook which Raynal had given me out from under my pillow, along with a few of the pencils. Now, how would I start? I looked over at Umbra 
almost hoping they would answer me, but they didn't. I lifted one of the pencils up into the air and dropped it onto my shadow, but as expected, it just landed on the bed with almost no sound. Is there some kind of trick to it? Thinking back to when Umbra first jumped into my shadow, I could remember this strange feeling that spread across my shadow the moment that they disappeared. Is that the trick that I'm missing? I tried to replicate that feeling, which caused the shadow to start rippling slightly. Without wasting a moment, I lifted another pencil up into the air and dropped it onto the rippling shadow and it fell onto the bed, with my shadow just dancing around on top of it. Why did I even try? I reached out to pick the pencil back up, but Umbra ran over and grabbed it before I could. Wait, give that back. I shouted as I reached out to try and take the pencil from Umbra's mouth. Umbra didn't listen to me and instead dived into my shadow with the pencil still in their mouth before coming back out almost immediately only with the pencil now missing. So, you can do it. But I can't. It's better than nothing, at least. I looked over the notebook that was lying on the bed just next to me. Can you put this in there too? I carefully pushed the notebook across the bed until it was in front of Umbra. This should keep it safe. Umbra looked over the notebook for a few seconds before grabbing it and dropping it into my shadow. I guess I should probably get some sleep. Maybe. She'll show up in my dreams this time. As soon as Umbra heard me, they immediately went and curled up on top of my pillow as if they were expecting me to lay my head on top of them. No, I can't do that. I lifted them off of the pillow. I know how hard it is to be a pillow. However, as soon as I put Humbra down, they ran straight back onto the pillow, curling up just as they did before. What am I supposed to do in this situation? How about just by thinking about what I wanted to do, I quickly changed into my fox form, which was surprisingly pretty much the same size as Umbra, only with myself having a much larger tail. This should work better. I clambered up onto the pillow and curled up next to Umbra which prompted them to readjust so that we both fit comfortably on the pillow. Tomorrow, I'll do what she asked me to. I have to. It's the task Ovia gave to me. Chapter 33, A Crow's Restless Morning Ava Puff, last night was a little bit rough, to say the least. I spent most of it with mom continuously pestering me for answers I didn't even know. Like, come on, it's not like I know everything about Kit. I've just been guessing and it's been working out most of the time, that doesn't make me some kind of kit connoisseur. But that wasn't even the worst part. When I was taking our plates to the kitchen last night, I realized I had forgotten a knife in Kit's room, so I turned back to quickly go get it and... Why did I have to hear that? Just those few words she said kept me up all night as they spiraled around in my mind, constantly gnawing at me. I didn't even do anything to comfort her. I just... ran. Or rather flew away. I want to say it will just work itself out eventually, and I don't need to worry so much, but look at me. I'm already losing sleep over it. I cracked an egg into the pan in front of me, and then I just stood there, watching it cook slowly. Just focus on breakfast for now, I said to myself, sliding the egg out of the pan and onto one of the plates, it's hard to do anything on an empty stomach after all. After carefully picking up two of the plates while balancing the third on my forearm, I made my way over to Kit's room, gently knocking my foot against the door to see if she was awake. No response. Guess yesterday tired her out more than I thought. I awkwardly opened the door, using my free elbow to push the door handle down while doing my best to keep the plates balanced. Fortunately, I managed it without dropping anything. Hey. Good morning, breakfast he. The words got caught in my throat as I laid eyes on the bed. That's adorable. After quickly placing the plates down on the table, I went and crouched down next to the bed to get a better view of the spectacle in front of me. On top of the pillow were two baby foxes, one pure white and the other a dark gray, curled up together, sleeping peacefully. My hand instinctively reached out towards the bundle of fluff but I quickly pulled it back. She probably wouldn't like me touching her in her sleep like this. If I can't pet her, I reached my hand out towards the gray fox. What about? But that's when a realization hit me, causing my arm to lock up. Wait, where did the other fox come from? I couldn't remember her picking up a fox at all. You don't really see wild foxes in human territories. Saying that they might not even be a wild fox, they could be another kitsune. Then again, 
You don't normally see Kitsune around here either. I should probably separate the two of them at least. I continued staring at the two of them for a little while, not doing anything. Maybe not. They both seem pretty happy. Well, they look as happy as a pair of sleeping foxes can look at least. I'll just ask her about it when she wakes up. I mumbled to myself as I started to get up from the floor, trying my best not to make too much noise. Unfortunately, Mom happened to throw the door to the room open at the exact same time, making sure to announce her presence. Breakfast smells good today. Really? Right now? What? It's true, she made a show of shrugging her shoulders with her arms outstretched. Keep it down. I'm letting her sleep in a bit longer. Mom's eyes glanced over at the bed and I saw her start to open her mouth. S-H-H. I put my finger up to my lips, just. Sit down first. She started opening her mouth to say something again, so I put my finger up to my lips, although with a bit more vigor this time, while also pointing at the table with my other hand. Thankfully, this time, she listened to me and sat herself down at the table before I went and sat down next to her. Where did that fox come from? Mom asked, now whispering. I don't know, they were just there when I came in. What? She almost jumped out of her seat but I stopped her, what if it's dangerous? She could get hurt. If it was dangerous, do you think it would be sleeping so peacefully with Kit? I, I don't know. This isn't a situation I've been in before. She looked over at the bed, we should at least separate them so nothing happens when they wake up. Just leave them alone, I said pushing mom's plate closer to her, I'm sure we'll get an answer when they wake up. Well, probably. You know how she is. But she paused for a moment, no, it's fine, I'll listen to you this time. But if something goes wrong, no, I shouldn't be thinking like that. She stuck her head down and started eating, though I could see her glance to the side after every few bites to check on Kit. When we were about halfway through our meal, some shuffling could be heard coming from the bed. Mom immediately tried to get out of her seat and run over, but I grabbed her sleeve, stopping her. The first of the foxes to get up was Kit, who, while half asleep, tried to stretch while still on top of the pillow, knocking the poor gray fox onto the bed and waking them up as well. If we had separated them we wouldn't have gotten to see this. I knew I made the right choice. Mom, maybe we should buy a bigger pillow for the two of them. I whispered. We still don't even know if keeping that fox here is safe, she responded, quickly putting a damper on my mood. Come on, just look at that. I pointed at the two foxes, how can you not want to keep them here? She didn't respond and just kept her eyes glued on Kit. After a few more stretches from the two foxes, they finally seemed to be fully awake. However Kit, in particular, looked a little shocked, quickly glancing between me mom and the gray fox over and over again. So, I got up from my chair but didn't get any closer. Are you going to introduce us to your friend? Kit didn't do anything. She just turned and stared at the gray fox. You know what? I think we're fine. She seems to know who that gray fox is. I mean if something were going to happen, it would have already happened. Kit didn't seem to be calming down at all and seeing that just caused me to recall what I heard last night. Now that I know how hard you're trying, I, I'll do something. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. I clapped my hands together to get everyone's attention. Mom, we should probably step out for a moment so she can get changed, right? This should help give her some space to sort her thoughts out. What? But, we should give her some privacy, I said, placing my hand on mom's shoulder. We'll just be waiting outside the door, so knock when you're ready for us to come back in. This time, mom didn't argue with me and just followed me outside, but once we got out of the room, she stopped being so quiet. What are you doing? She asked, we still don't know if leaving her with that fox is safe. It's fine. Come on, you saw how she looked at that fox. There's no way she doesn't know them. What do you mean, how she looked at that fox? She rested her head against her knuckles, just give me straight answers. There aren't straight answers for this kind of thing, I pulled her hand down, you just get a feeling for it. She glared at me. You'll get there eventually, I said, patting her on the back. Should you really be saying that kind of thing to your mother? I mean, it's not like I know nothing about this stuff. I think you forget what you were like just two years ago, and I was able to help you, wasn't I? Come on, mom. 
Where exactly do you think I learned all of this from? It didn't come from nowhere. She brought her fist up to her forehead again. I told you yesterday, just calm down, and you'll get it. I pulled her hand down once again. You know, sometimes. I wish you would stop growing so fast. She turned to face me. It's only been two years, and I already feel like I'm losing my cute little daughter. Come on, you don't have to worry about that. I said unable to keep a smug grin from spreading across my face. No matter how big I get, I'll still be your cute daughter. Mom responded simply by letting out a small chuckle. Now that's more like the mom I know. I continued talking to mom for a while, hoping to distract her from Kit, even if just for a little bit. Kit, I know you're trying your best in there. I just hope I've given you enough time to psych yourself up. Cause I think mom might end up being a bit of a handful today. Chapter 34 my name. What do I do? T. They saw Umbra. I quickly jumped off the bed and returned to my humanoid form, then turned around and picked up Umbra. What if they try to get rid of you? I, I can't let that happen. G. Go hide. I whispered while keeping an eye on the door just in case they suddenly barge back in. Umbra stared at me for a second before wriggling their way out of my arms and diving head first into my shadow. I it will be fine. Umbra was a G gift from Ovia. They can't do anything. It was a gift from a goddess. Oh only Ovia can take Umbra away. Trying to calm myself down, I threw my dress over my head. But it didn't help very much as my mind almost immediately moved on to the next issue. Ovia. I. I still need to tell them my name. K. Kiera. I mumbled to myself. That's all I need to say. They weren't even in the room, but just knowing that they were standing behind the door was enough to make me feel uneasy when I spoke. Is there something wrong with me? Out of habit, I reached for my tail, but unfortunately, it was still covered by my dress, as I hadn't pulled it through the flap yet. I can't even get dressed properly. Why is everything already going wrong? Tears were starting to form in my eyes. But I took a deep breath and managed to hold them back. Why you can't cry again? All you do is cry. My hands started shaking as I struggled to thread my tail through the flap in my dress. Come on, please. Why are you doing this to me? Eventually, I managed to pull my tail through. Why am I like this? I sat down on the edge of my bed with my face buried deep in my hands. I just sat there for a while doing nothing. There wasn't even a single coherent thought that crossed my mind for at least a few minutes. I, I can't just sit here forever. I, I need to do what I said I would do. I, I can't lie to Ovia. Gathering up the little courage I could muster, I got up off the bed and knocked on the door. At first, nothing happened, but after a few seconds, the door slowly opened with a distinct high-pitched squeal coming from the hinges. Are you all ready now? Ava called into the room while staying just out of sight. I moved around the door so that she could see me and nodded. Great. Well, as I'm sure you already noticed, breakfast is already all set up and ready for you to dig in, she said as she came into the room and sat in front of a plate of food that looked to already be half finished. I didn't notice. Rhinel followed closely behind Ava, staring at me briefly before sitting down at the table. Are you just going to stand there by yourself? Or are you going to eat with us? Ava asked. I joined them at the table, sitting in front of a plate covered in breakfast staples like sausages, some kind of bacon, eggs done two ways and more. But for some reason, I just didn't feel all that hungry. Not wanting to cause any issues, I tried to eat one of the sausages. It's cold. It still tasted good, but it was clear it had been sitting out on the table for quite a while. I forced myself to swallow, but as soon as I did, it felt like it wanted to come back up. Looking up at the other two, they were happily finishing off their meals, not paying any attention to me. Do I just? They are both here. If I don't, it's just going to haunt me. I know it, but... I grabbed another sausage and tried to eat it, but it was even harder to manage than the first one. It just sat in my mouth until it eventually lost its flavor and I managed to swallow. I looked up at Ava and Raynal again. They were still just eating their food, although they were almost finished at that point. What if I tell them and they don't hear me? S. She only said to T. Tell someone. T. That. Might count. I am sure it would. K. I said under my breath. No response. M. Maybe. I can do this. K. Key. I continued to force the sounds to come out of my mouth, no matter how quiet they were. Again. There was no response from either of them. I. This. This is possible. I. I can keep the promise I made. K. Kiera. 
I closed my eyes, prepared for the worst. At that moment, it was as if everything around me had stopped. The only thing I could feel was my heart beating, slowly getting faster with each second that passed. I did it. I did it, and nothing happened. It, it wasn't that hard. In my excitement, I hastily opened my eyes and looked up. But my heart dropped almost immediately. Instead of having their heads down and eating their food as I expected, both Ava and Raina were staring directly at me. Raina opened her mouth but I didn't hear what she said. I I've made a mistake. I. I shouldn't have done that. B but what do I do now? I can't go back. I can't undo this. The things in front of me started to blur together as my heart continued beating faster and faster. I. I tried to say something, anything to fix the situation. But I couldn't put the words together. Almost immediately after, there was a loud crash followed by incoherent yelling as Raina and Ava both leapt out of their seats. I I knew it was wrong. I I shouldn't have spoken. W why did I do that? I saw their mouths moving but just couldn't make out what they were trying to say. In a panic, I tried to jump out of my chair so I could run away, but my body wouldn't move the way I wanted it to. P. I tried again to say something. But the same thing happened. Please. After trying to get out of my seat again, I just started to fall to the side, watching as the blurry world spun around me. Instinctively, I reached my arm out to try to catch myself on the table, but even though my arm managed to hit it, I was unable to muster any strength in it and continued to fall. Help me, please. I closed my eyes, preparing myself to hit the floor at any moment. Thud. It didn't hurt. I definitely fell onto something solid, but for some reason, it didn't hurt at all. Slowly, I forced my eyes open to see a purple smear above me, along with a pale light pulsating just in front of me. My body was shaking uncontrollably, and my heart continued to pound in my chest, but still, I started struggling in an attempt to get up. However, whenever I managed to move my body at all, something pulled me back forcefully holding me in place. What went wrong? What's happening? Let me go. I continued to struggle, flailing my limbs all over the place in an attempt to escape from whatever was trying to restrain me. I need to leave. I made a mistake. All of a sudden, amongst the chaos of everything happening, there was something familiar. A sensation. A sensation that I was very familiar with. It was a slight chill that slowly spread across my forearm as something soft brushed against it. Instinctively, I grabbed at whatever was there and brought it into my chest, hugging it tightly. The slight coolness helped to ease the pain in my chest. Gradually, my heart also started to relax, and after that, my vision started to clear up, revealing what I had grabbed onto. Umbra. I wanted to say thank you but couldn't muster much more than just their name, but that seemed to be enough as they forced their way out of my grasp and licked my cheek. Someone's hand then brushed against my other cheek wiping off tears that I didn't even know about. Are you doing better now? I looked up to see Raynal sitting on the floor with me in her lap, just. Stay still for a bit longer, alright? I've got you. You can relax now. Looking in front of me, I could see Ava kneeling, completely drenched in sweat yet putting on a smile. H hey. Why you messed up? Your hair. W we should. Probably. Sort that out. She said panting between every few words, though. Maybe. Give me. A few minutes. I reached towards Ava, but Raynal gently pulled me back. Just relax for now, calm down some more, Raynal said. Everything's going to be okay now. She had her arm wrapped around me, but looking across it, I could see many fresh scratches and scrapes, some of which were still bleeding. Why does she always do this? It doesn't make sense, but in my name. With what little strength I had left, I forced the words out, Guerra. But before either of them could respond, my vision went dark. Ovia. I. Did it. Chapter 35. Don't force yourself. It's too. Bright. Keeping my eyes closed, I reached for my tail to cover my eyes but couldn't find it anywhere. I could still feel it attached to me, so it definitely hadn't disappeared, though I couldn't move it around very much. Reluctantly. I forced my eyelids open to figure out what was going on. Where? Is it? I tried to turn around, but something was stopping me, holding me in place. Looking down, 
there were two muscular arms coated in many small scratches along with streaks of dried blood that were gently wrapped around my waist, tight enough to hold me upright but not so much that it was uncomfortable. Immediately, the memory of what had just happened flooded my mind, waking me up fully. I, I did it. I really did it, right? Following the arms up. Ice or Anil's head softly bobbing up and down just above me. She was fast asleep, yet somehow still holding me in her lap. Ava was also asleep, although she was leaning up against Anil's shoulder with her wings twitching every so often. I squeezed my way out of her arms by slowly sliding my body upward, being very careful not to wake either of them up. Unfortunately, as soon as I freed my waist, I lost my balance and rolled forward onto the floor inevitably brushing my tail up against Raynal's face. While still sprawled out across the floor, I looked up at her to check if I had disturbed her at all. Still asleep. Right as I let out a sigh of relief, Umbra crawled out of my shadow before walking up and licking my cheek. Okay, I understand. I scooped Umbra up before lifting my body off the floor, and... Thank you. Yet they responded sharply before nuzzling into my elbow, sending a small chill straight through my arm. It's just not the same. It hadn't even been a day since I had last seen Ovia, but I already wanted to go back and tell her all about what happened. All about how I figured out Umbra could store things in my shadows, all about the food Ava cooked and most importantly, all about how I managed to tell both Raynal and Ava my name. But, I can't. There are still six nights in the way. I, I can't afford to forget this. Umbra, can you give me my notebook? I asked as I scratched the back of their head. The little gray fox looked up at me before gracefully jumping out of my arms and into my shadow. They quickly returned with a notebook as well as a few pencils, even though I hadn't asked for them yet. Thank you. Again, I crossed my legs to give Umbra a place to sit. Seeing this, Umbra happily climbed up into my lap before curling back up. Do you do anything other than sleep? No. Now's not the time to be thinking about that. I opened the notebook straight to the picture of Ovia with her arms outstretched, which I had drawn only a few days ago, and ended up pausing for a moment. I, can't let her see this. What would she think of me? I flipped forward a few pages in the notebook to hide the embarrassing drawing before reaching down and picking up one of the pencils. What do I even draw? I knew that I wanted to draw something both to show Ovia and to make sure that I wouldn't forget anything, but I just couldn't think of what that something should be. My eyes drifted up from the notebook until I was looking up at Ava and Raynal sleeping peacefully together. Maybe that would be good. I didn't remember what happened when I saw her holding me. I wonder if I could ask Ovia to do that. No, come on Kiera. Don't ask for too much. Before I had the chance to change my mind, my hand seemingly started moving by itself trying to recreate exactly what was laid out in front of me. The pencil gracefully slid over the page, effortlessly capturing even the smallest of details, from the numerous scratches along Raynal's arms to Ava's feathers draped over her back, almost like an elaborate gape. Just like before, it was like my body just instinctively knew exactly what to do. However, this time, it was even clearer than last time. I could now see the little imperfections in the drawing, I could now see all the missing lines, I could now see the final drawing, it all just made sense to me, even if I couldn't quite put it into words. However, maybe because of just how much sense it made to me, I could feel that something was missing, like an extra step, or maybe something was wrong from the beginning like I had been drawing the wrong thing the whole time. But that couldn't be right, if it was. Then how were my hands moving so naturally? Why do I even know all of this? I don't remember learning any of it. My hand stopped abruptly, but I didn't have the time to continue drawing any way as Raynal slowly opened her eyes. Ah, gods. She said as she brought one hand up to her forehead. How long was I out? There's no way that it was only five minutes. If it was, I wouldn't feel this stiff. I was. Ah. What was I supposed to do? Oh. That's right, I was supposed to take her to her bed. She looked down, and almost immediately, panic spread across her face, where, she cut herself off as soon as she looked at me and instead just let out a brief sigh as she quickly calmed herself back down. Once she had relaxed, she focused on me again and started speaking. So, are you doing okay now? She asked, her voice a little quieter than usual. I nodded. That's good. That's good. You gave us quite a scare there you know. 
though it's lucky Ava was around, your wrist was swelling up pretty badly after you banged it on the table. I completely forgot. Looking down at my wrist, it was perfectly fine, there was no swelling or bruising or any other mark left behind. That aside, it's been a while since I've slept on the floor like this. Though I really can't say that I miss it at all, she let out a chuckle. I hope it wasn't too uncomfortable for you. I was going to take you to your bed, but the two of us were up a little late last night, and, well, I guess you can see what happened. Before waiting for my response, she tried to get herself up off of the floor but was abruptly stopped by Ava wrapping her arms loosely around her neck while still asleep. Not yet. Ava wrapped her wings around Raynal, my pillow. Can't run away like that. Both Raynal and I just stared at her for a moment as she settled back down. I, kind of, want to try that. I wonder if Ovia. No, you already thought about this. It's not possible. Guess I'm not allowed to get up yet, Raynal said as she settled back down onto the floor. By the way, I must say you're surprisingly feisty when you want to be. I never thought it would be so hard to hold you still. She laughed a little but I couldn't help but look down at her arms as she said that, still covered in the proof of what she was saying. Oh, this, she slightly lifted one of her arms, don't worry about it, I've been through much worse. And even then, once Ava wakes up they'll be good as gone, but it still hurts. I know it does. There's no way it doesn't. But on to more important things, she paused for a moment, I might have misheard you, but... You said your name was, Kiera? That, that's right. That means, I really did it. And nobody can say otherwise. There's proof. Are you, okay with us calling you that now? She asked a little hesitantly. I just want to be a little careful, as well you know. I, I want to try again. I can do it. I did it once before. I can do it again. Why, ye? I tried to force the word out, just one word. That was all I needed to say. However. Before I could actually get that one word out, Raynal interrupted me. Hey, look, it's okay, don't force yourself. She stuck her hand out in front of her. You can take your time. Why yes. I forced it out and felt my heart rate increase ever so slightly, but thankfully it calmed down quickly. Raynal stared at me in silence for a few seconds, looking ready to jump up whether Ava was holding on or not. Thankfully, she ended up pulling back a bit. All right. She let out an exaggerated sigh. Well then, let's do this properly. Hello there, Kiera. I'm Raynal, but you can just call me Nelly. Though please don't force yourself. Chapter 36 How is she going to open the door? Raynal and I sat there in silence, with the only occasional movement coming from Raynal having to brush Ava's hair out of her face to stop her from chewing on it while she slept. I was tempted to continue drawing but just couldn't get myself to with Raynal's eyes watching me. I just couldn't get into the right mindset to pick up where I left off. Am I supposed to leave them alone? Where would I even go? Should I go sit in their room until Ava wakes up? Am I even allowed in there? They've never let me in. Um. Raynal started to speak, quickly bringing me out of my thoughts. I see you've held onto that notebook I gave you. The drawing you showed me before was quite good. She paused, have you drawn anything else? I looked down at my drawing of Raynal and Ava sleeping, slowly moving from detail to detail, almost tracing the process of drawing it in my mind, until I eventually got to a broken line. It's not finished yet. Should I show it to her anyway? It is a drawing of her. She is also the person who gave me the notebook in the first place. Maybe. MHM, I responded while avoiding eye contact. Can you show me one then? She asked immediately. But what if she doesn't like it? What if she's insulted? And maybe this can be a test. If, if it's really that bad I, I, I shouldn't show it to Ovia. Slowly, I turned the notebook around, gradually moving my gaze up to Raynal's face as I did, bracing myself for her reaction. But she didn't say anything. Her face didn't change. She just silently stared at the drawing. What does that mean? Did I get ahead of myself? Why did I think this would be okay? I quickly shut the notebook with a loud slap and brought it in close to my chest. As soon as I did, Raynal's eyes immediately shifted back to me. I was just a little surprised, she said. For some reason, I really didn't expect to see a drawing of myself in that notebook of yours, especially one that good. The last time I had a portrait done was probably. Her expression darkened for just a moment, 
but she was quickly back to smiling as if nothing had happened. Did I do something wrong? My heart started to beat faster as I hastily tried to figure out what mistake I had made. However, before I could come up with any answer, Umbra yawned before turning their eyes up towards me, clearly expecting something. What do you want me to do? There was only one thing I could think Umbra would want from me, so I reached out one of my hands to pet them, but before I made contact, they jumped up, completely dodging my hand, and grabbed the notebook from me. No. I tried to grab them, but they expertly jumped off of my shoulder and into my shadow. It didn't take long for them to return strutting back up to me with a proud look on their face. Why did you do that? I wasn't finished with it yet. I wanted to scold Umbra but just couldn't bring myself to, and instead, I ended up petting them, even making sure to give them a scratch behind the ears, before they climbed into my lap and went back to sleep. Um. Raynal suddenly spoke up, giving me a little scare. Wait, no, that wasn't supposed to happen. I, I was supposed to hide them. Are you going to introduce your little friend? She asked, gesturing towards the fox sleeping in my lap. Almost instantly, I covered Umbra with one of my arms to protect them. Hey, don't worry, we're not going to do anything to them. She waved her free hand, trust me, after what just happened, I'm almost tempted to strap them to you just in case it happens again. I was about to ask Umbra to go into my shadow, but before I could even lean in, they wriggled out from under my arm and walked straight up to Raynal. What? What are you doing? What if she does something to you? But nothing happened. Umbra just quietly approached Raynal before sitting down and staring back at me with those same expectant eyes. I remained silent. What? Are you wanting me to do something? Or do you just like her better than me? She would be able to treat you better than I can. While I was stuck in my thoughts. Ava suddenly let go of Raynal's neck and fell forward into her lap. Huh? She mumbled. What? Pillow. Raynal tried to grab her but unfortunately didn't make it in time as Ava rolled off of her lap and onto the floor with a loud thud that could probably have been heard in the room over from us. That's... That's not right. Ava, while lying face down on the floor, started haphazardly throwing her arms around the place. That didn't wake her up? Somehow, despite falling onto a wooden floor. Ava still hadn't fully woken up. Was she always such a heavy sleeper? Sorry about this, Rhinel said. It's been a while since she's acted like this, but she probably just needs to get some more sleep. That's what's worked in the past. She probably had it a bit rougher than I did since she was using her magic right until she passed out. Where? Ava opened one of her eyes ever so slightly. There, my pillow. Ava's arm shot out towards Umbra, but before she could grab them, Umbra jumped back. Raynal then lifted Ava's head back onto her lap. At least all she wants is a pillow this time. Last time, she was complaining about wanting a... No, never mind, you're probably a bit too young for that conversation. Raynal ran her hand through Ava's hair before letting out a sigh. You know, I feel sorry for the poor souls who will have to deal with her when she's drunk. Then again, that's probably going to be me anyway. What am I supposed to do here? I looked over at Umbra, once again hoping for some kind of response, but there was none. Instead, Umbra just went back to sitting next to Raynal and staring at me as if nothing had happened. Just, can someone just tell me what I'm supposed to do? I don't want to be in this situation. Well, we got a little bit off track there, didn't we? Raynal asked but back to what we were talking about. Does your little friend here have a name? Umbra's tail started to sway back and forth when she said that. You Umbra. I blurted out before quickly turning around. Is that what you wanted? So, it's Umbra then. Well, Umbra, thank you for helping Kieran out. She chuckled a little, and I guess I also thank you for helping us out as well, even if you didn't mean to. Don't know how long I would have been able to hold her if you didn't help her calm down. If it was that bad, why did you do it then? It doesn't make sense. There was no reason for you to get hurt like that. Tears had started to form in my eyes, but I couldn't understand why. I wasn't sad, or in pain, or sick. At least that's what I thought, but the tears still wanted to come out. What's wrong with me? At that moment. I felt Umbra jump into my shadow behind me before immediately jumping back out of it in my lap and trying to lick the tears from my face. You really just do whatever you want, don't you? Despite what I was saying in my head, 
I left Dumbrin up and hugged them tightly as I waited for the tears to stop. I had expected Raina to say something to me, but she remained silent right until I turned back around to face her. Hey, look, I think I'm going to take Ava back to our room so she can get some proper sleep. Raina lifted Davian up, gently cradling her in her arms. If you want, we can continue talking afterwards. Or maybe we can make some other plans for the day. Whatever you feel like. I didn't respond. Oh, come on, don't be like that. There's got to be something you want to do, even if you don't quite know what it is yet. I know what I want to do. I just can't do it yet. Actually, before that. There's something I was supposed to give you. I'll bring it all here in a bit. But maybe I should wait for Ava to wake up first. Nah, it'll be fine. She'll understand. What do you mean something to give me? You've already given me enough. You gave me a dress and a scarf already. That's already going to be hard to pay back. So if you give me more. Come back here. Ava suddenly shouted, somehow still fast asleep. Guess that's her way of complaining that I'm taking too long. Raina walked over to the door but abruptly stopped, um, can I get a hand with this? I didn't say anything and carefully set Umbra down on the floor before getting up and opening the door for Raina. Thanks, just give me a minute, and I'll be back, she called back as she walked through the hallway. How is she going to open her own door? Chapter 37, Back to the Market It didn't take long for Raina to come back into the room. I hardly had enough time to persuade Umber to go back into my shadow before the door flew open. I was going to bring everything here, but it was a bit much for one trip, Rhinel said, holding up some clothes, this might be a bit easier for you to put on than having to struggle with your dress every morning. She had brought a beige t-shirt that looked very similar to her own shirt and what looked like a pair of shorts that had been flipped back to front. But... Just the dress is enough for me. Any more and what am I going to do? I instinctively clutched at the hem of my dress as she laid the clothes down on my bed. I know you don't like anyone being in the room while you're changing, so I'll just she abruptly stopped talking as soon as she turned around and saw me. Hey, what's wrong? She crouched down in front of me so her head was at the same height as mine. I... I can't accept any more. Am I going to have to guess? You should know by now that I'm not very good at that. She laughed a little as she carefully opened up my hands. It would help me help you if you could tell me. Will that make you stop? TT2. Too. too? In much. I accidentally shouted. Too much? Raina leaned back a little, now holding my little hands in hers. So you think that I'm giving you too much. She spent a little while staring at the ceiling. When I looked up to try and find what she was looking at, she immediately started talking again. What if I said it wasn't too much for me? I didn't know what she expected me to say. Not good enough then. Then how about? She paused for a few seconds. It makes me happy to give you things, okay? You know. I've never had so much trouble trying to give someone a gift. She continued to hold onto my hands as she was lost in thought, only occasionally sighing to herself. It had already gotten to the point where I was starting to feel very uncomfortable. Why is she so desperate to give me things? What does she would get out of it? She said it makes her happy, but why? Why would giving something away make you happy? I do want to give a gift to Ovia. But that's different. She helped me first. S so I'm just showing my gratitude. I've done nothing for Reno. No matter how much I thought about it, it didn't make any sense to me. There just wasn't any reason why she should be happy to give me something unless she wanted me to pay her back later. Can't you just she suddenly started to speak, startling me out of my thoughts. At that moment, I wasn't sure what came over me. But before she could say anything else, I pulled away from her and picked up the clothes she had laid out. Every time she tried to persuade me, this sinking feeling was building up in my stomach, and I just wanted it to go away. Great, that works for me. Rhinel stood up, I'll step out of the room for you then. How did Ava do it? Ah, that's right, just knock on the door when you're all good to go. She quickly left the room not giving me a chance to respond. I looked over the clothes in my hands again, paying much more attention to the pair of shorts she gave me. They almost looked normal, but instead of fastening at the front, they fastened at the back, with a notable gap cut into them, which was clearly meant for my tail. I already knew Raynal was going to keep pestering me if I didn't at least try and wear what she had given me, but I still didn't really want to do it. Come on Kiara. Just. Get it over with. Reluctantly, 
I took my dress off, folded it neatly, and placed it down on my bed before stepping into the shorts and pulling them up. They sat a little too high on my legs for my liking, but I wasn't in any position to argue. Once they were up around my waist, I immediately turned my attention to my tail. I made sure it was sitting in the slot before doing up the fastening just above the base of my tail. It was a little tricky as I couldn't see what I was doing, but I managed to do it anyway. That was so much easier than the tail flap. Choosing not to dwell on it too much, I hastily put the shirt on. Looking down, it was clearly a little bit too big for me. I quickly checked myself over one last time before making my way over to the door and knocking on it. As soon as I did, the door flew open, almost knocking me to the ground. Raynal was standing in the doorway, now wearing her cloak with another smaller one in her hands. I think that looks good, though the sizing could use a little work. She handed me the other cloak she was carrying. Now, let's head on out. Head out? That isn't what you said we were doing. You said we were going to talk. Don't worry so much. I just thought being outside would help you figure out what you want to do. She said, putting the cloak on me before patting me on the head. Plus, I think it would be nice to go and say thank you to Anna for those clothes. Once again, I looked down at the clothes I was wearing. I guess I should. I should thank her for the dress as well. My shadow coated my hair, and Raynal pulled the hood up over my ears. Great. The earlier we get there, the more time we'll have to look at everything else. Everything else? Does that mean I could get something for Ovia? I do need to find something for her. With my mind made up, instead of waiting for Raynal to lead me out like she normally did, I squeezed past her and confidently led the way all the way back to that small market with the colorful awnings from before though I could hear faint chuckle the whole time. However, as soon as I was standing in front of the familiar door decorated with a sign showing a reel of thread, my confidence completely vanished. What are you waiting for? Raina quickly caught up with me. Come on, don't be like that. You seem to like Hannah Plenty the last time we came here, she said, pushing the door open by reaching over my head. What do you mean? I'll be there in just a second. A voice called out from inside the store. Go on now. Raynal placed her hand on my back and gently pushed me forward. As soon as we were inside the store, the door slammed closed behind us. Oops. Sorry about that Anna. Raynal called out. Oh, is that Raynal? How did the little fox like she poked her head out from the back and immediately stopped talking? I see we have the person in question here herself. She came out of the back carrying a large pile of dresses which she placed down on the front counter before coming up to me and crouching down. I see you got your hands on some of the other things I have put together for you. She briefly looked me up and down before smiling. The shirt is a little bit big, but I guess that at least means it will be more comfortable to sleep in. So you're still not very talkative? Well, that's fine, I'm sure you'll get there. But for right now, can you do something for me? I just nodded without thinking. There was just something about her that made me want to agree. Can you take off your cloak and turn around for me? I'd like to check how those shorts fit you and your fluffy tail. I did exactly as she asked and handed my cloak off to Raynal before turning around and lifting my shirt just enough so the fastening at the back could be seen. It looks good to me. But the more important question is, do you like it? Did you find them easier to put on than the dress? She put her hands on my shoulders and turned me back around. I nodded. All right, I'll keep that in mind for the future. She started to stand back up. Wait, not yet. I still need to thank you, at least for the dress. It helped me a lot. Th. The. In a panic, I tried to force the words out. However, before I could, Anna quickly crouched back down and lightly cupped her hand over my mouth. You don't have to push yourself if you're not ready. She took her hand away. I already know what you're trying to say and already appreciate it a, a lot, okay? But, th, thank you. I blurted it out, only panicking a little this time. She didn't say anything and just smiled warmly at me before turning her attention to Raynal. She's doing much better than before, isn't she? It's a small step, but it's a step in the right direction at least. Raynal responded. Anna let out a chuckle before going back over to the counter and picking up the dresses she had brought out. If you want to talk some more, you'll have to wait a while. I need to try and sort these dresses out quickly. The client in question is known for being generous. Do you need some help? No, no, 
go spend some time with the little one. I'm sure this isn't the place she wants to spend the day. Ah, I, I guess you're right. Rinal scratched the back of her head. Well then, before we all leave, do you know any places around here that sell art supplies? Oh, does she have an interest in art? She looked at me, but I quickly turned away, leading to another chuckle. Well, if you just keep walking down the street, there's a place without a sign that sells what you're looking for and many other little trinkets. It's run by this nice old man, though if I'm being honest with you, I don't know much about him, but he occasionally comes over here to hand out cookies, so if you're lucky. That sounds nice, Raina lifted me up, isn't that right Kiara? She looked into my eyes, clearly expecting an answer from me, but I just looked away, unsure of what to say. I guess that means we'll be heading out now then. She made her way over to the door before shouting back, thanks again, any time. Anna shouted back in response, but next time you better tell me the full story. Raynal just laughed as she left the store with me still in her arms. All right, let's find this store then. We made our way down the street, with Raynal checking each of the doors as we walked past them. Eventually, we stopped in front of a store that had a deep purple awning above the entrance. Or at least I thought it was a store, aside from the awning. It just seemed like a regular house. Rinal set me down on the ground before walking up to the door. I think this is the right place. As she pushed the door open, I was suddenly assaulted by the sharp smell of wet paint. Well, am I going to need to help you go in again? Rinal smiled at me while holding the door open. No, I can do it myself. I sheepishly walked past her into the store and was immediately left in awe of what I saw. The store was filled with a seemingly endless number of shelves stacked with art supplies and other small things, from hair clips to intricate glass sculptures. But by far, what drew my attention the most were the many easels lined up along the back of the store, which had what could only be called masterpieces left on them. So, what do you think? An unfamiliar voice startled me causing me to jump back. Well there. Sorry for surprising you. I didn't expect you to jump quite that much. I immediately turned to face whoever was talking. They were a man with short gray hair and a well-trimmed beard, clearly showing his age, but despite that, his body betrayed that image with how well-built he was. He was wearing an apron over his clothes that had clearly been splattered with paint over many years. Hello there, Rinal spoke up, taking his attention from me. Hello to you too. He said, reaching out his hand towards Raynal, which she promptly shook. So, what exactly are you two looking for? Um, let's say. We're just here to look around a bit, Raynal said, putting one hand on my shoulder. This little one, while a bit shy, has quite the knack for drawing, so I wanted to see if she'd be interested in looking around a place like this. Is that so? He turned his attention back to me. Well, then, how about this? Go have a look through this place and bring me whatever it is that's your favorite. It can be absolutely anything, even if it doesn't look like it's for sale. In the meantime, I'll talk to your mom here. Does that sound good to you, mom? She isn't my mom. I don't. I pushed the thoughts out of my mind before they could get out of control and just ran off into the store, hoping to distract myself. Well doesn't she seem eager? The old man laughed to himself. Chapter 38 it's not a gift, it's a bribe. When I finally managed to calm down a little, I found myself standing just in front of one of the easels. On it, there was a painting of a street I didn't recognize at night, with all of the houses and other buildings having lights pewing out of their windows. But, at the center of it all, there was the silhouette of a single person. Just a single person painted in all black right in the middle of what would otherwise be a fairly typical painting. That person being there made the whole thing a little bit eerie, but at the same time, I couldn't help but wonder what it would be like if I was that person. Nobody would chase me anymore. I wouldn't have to hide, but no, what are you doing? I turned away from the painting and looked back to see what Trainel was doing, but she was simply talking with the old man. But then, in the middle of their conversation, the old man abruptly looked over at me, causing me to run behind one of the shelves to hide. On the shelf I hid behind, there were little wooden sculptures. Surprisingly there were no two that were exactly alike, some were of birds, others were of squirrels and other small animals, but right at the end of the shelf, there was something that caught my attention. 
It was a whole castle that had somehow been carved out of a single log. But the castle looked to be falling apart, with holes covering the walls and entire roofs missing from some of the towers, and one of the towers was completely missing. It was clearly an intentional design with how much attention was put into each little detail which was especially evident when looking at the broken bricks and how each individual crack had been carved into them. Standing just in front of the castle walls was a single man, with long flowing hair and his sword raised up to the sky. Who is that? I turned to face the shelf just behind me and saw a glass sculpture of the same man, though it was much bigger. However, what drew my attention this time was the man's coat. It was simple, probably made from leather, with the sleeves rolled up to just above the elbows and the hem ending just above the hips. What would Ovia look like in that? For some reason, it was the only thought on my mind as I looked at the sculpture. The imaginary images just continued to flood my mind. So again, I had to pull myself away from it and move on to the next shelf. This one was instead covered in small accessories from embroidered handkerchiefs to surprisingly elaborate earrings. I do want to get a gift for her. She's already given me so much, but I don't have any money. I decided to continue walking through the store until I ended up at some more easels, just like the first. Each had an incredible painting displayed on it, except for the last one. Instead, all it had was a faint sketch on an otherwise blank canvas. As I got closer to the sketch and started to make out the details, my heart immediately sank. It would have been impossible for me not to recognize that view. There was an extravagant boutique, a small bakery, a jeweler, a tailor and many other storefronts that had already been burned into my mind. No. I I I I don't want to go back. The words just slipped out of my mouth. For some reason that I couldn't understand, I instinctively looked over at Reno. As soon as I did, her eyes met mine, and she immediately came over. Hey, what's going on? She asked, crouching down in front of me before looking up at the sketch I had just seen. She paused for a short moment before clicking her tongue, If you want to leave, we can, okay? Did something happen? The old man walked up behind Reno. I shook my head. That's good. You gave me a little scare. I don't want to be known as a mean old man after all. He looked up at the sketch I was standing in front of. Oh. You ended up here. This is what I was working on just before you came in, so it wasn't quite ready for you to look at. I'm sorry if you're disappointed. Although it probably isn't the sort of thing a child like you should be interested in anyway. What do you mean? Raina asked, looking back at the sketch. Well, you see, I heard this story about a young child, probably no older than the little one here. The old man reached out to pat my head, but I pulled away before he could poor thing was stuck out on those streets all alone. I probably shouldn't go into the rest. It's not a happy story. Raynal turned her attention to me but didn't say anything. The last I heard was that nobody could find that child anymore. The old man's expression darkened a little, it's hard to say if that's a good thing or not. But all an old man like me can really do is hope for the best. We all stayed completely silent for a few seconds, at least until the old man spoke up again with his smile now having returned. That's enough doom and gloom for one day. Now, did you manage to go and find your favorite thing in this store? I shook my head. That makes things a little difficult. For a nice girl like you, I was planning to let you take whatever you picked home. Why? Why do so many people want to give things away? Especially if you're a store owner. Don't you want money? Isn't that the point of running a store? I was about to decline the man's offer, but before I could, Raynal stood up and said, I'm sorry, but she's not the best when it comes to accepting gifts. Is that so? He paused for a second, but when did I say it was a gift? What do you mean? What else would it be? No, no, I'm running a business here. What I'm giving you is a bribe, he leaned forward, it's to make you want to come back and buy even more from me later. That makes sense. And I did want to get a gift for Ovia. After some careful deliberation, I nodded. If I just don't come back here, then there's no problem. H. He's the one who decided to take that risk. Well, what are you waiting for? The old man pointed back over his shoulder. Get back in there and pick something out. I immediately ran back amongst all the shelves to try and pick something out. I know he said I could pick anything, but I shouldn't pick anything expensive. Just to be safe, the shelf that seemed to be the best choice was the one filled with small accessories that I only briefly looked at, 
so that's where I went first. My eyes were immediately drawn to the section filled with jewelry, but I quickly moved on from that as I knew it would be too expensive for the man to just give away. The next section had the embroidered handkerchiefs I had noticed before, as well as a few different ascots, but nothing jumped out to me. Apart from the few with animals or plants on them, the rest of them just had various crests and symbols on them that I didn't recognize. It needs to be something that would make her think of me. Just like Humber makes me think of her. The last section of the shelf was filled with what could only be called odds and ends. Nothing special. There were a few simple bracelets, a wooden paperweight shaped like a boat, and a few quills dyed in various colors, but nothing was quite right. At least, that's what I thought until I looked right at the back of the shelf hidden behind all the other things on display. There was a simple hair clip, the only thing that was even a little special about it was its color, it was pure white, just like my hair and tail. I didn't even have to think about it. I picked up the hair clip and headed back to the old man. Have you decided already? He asked me, you can take some more time if you need it. I responded by simply holding out the hair clip. Let's see what you've found. He picked up the hair clip and looked it over. I didn't realize I had left one of these out. What is that supposed to mean? Did I choose the wrong thing? Did I make a mistake? You see, this hair clip hasn't been finished, or really even started, yet. It's just a blank hair clip I must have forgotten about at some point, but it's what I want to give her. I, but who am I to question you? I said you could pick anything, and that's exactly what you did. He walked over to one of the shelves with art supplies on it, but even then, this is supposed to be a bribe, so I really should try and put my best foot forward. He grabbed a set of colored pencils, a few paints and some other things I didn't recognize before wrapping them up in some paper and bringing them over to me. Since I've been told you're pretty good at drawing, this might actually be more fun for you to do yourself, he said, handing me the package he had put together, and I think it makes for a good bribe, don't you think? I looked down at the package for a while trying to decide if accepting it was really the correct choice. He's giving me a lot, but it's a bribe. It's supposed to be a lot. He is the one who added the extra things. Not me. So, it's fine, right? I tucked the package under my cloak, where Umber could just slightly poke their head out and take the package into my shadow without being seen. Thanks for all this, Raina lifted me up, though I must admit. I don't really understand what you did. Even just this morning she was humming and hawing about accepting a gift from me. Well, when you run a shop for long enough, you get better at this sort of thing. He laughed to himself. Well, then I might have to come back and get some advice. Ah, it'll cost you. This time, Raynal was the one who was laughing. I guess you really do know what you're doing. The two of them continued talking for a while after that, but I didn't pay much attention. Instead. I was busy thinking about all the different things I could put on that hair clip, although I ultimately wasn't able to decide on anything. Again, thank you for doing this, Rinal said. The pleasure's all mine, the old man turned to me, if anything, I think I've got a good idea for my next painting. Then we'll leave you to it, right Kiara? I buried my head in her shoulder so I didn't have to say anything. I'll just take that as a yes. I don't want to leave Ava alone for too long after all. She looked back up at the old man, bye for now, though I'll definitely be back soon. As we made our way out of the store, all that could be heard was a hearty chuckle from the old man. Chapter 39, You've rubbed off on me. Ava Puff, I'm tired, but it took a lot of effort, but eventually, I managed to get myself out of bed by sliding my whole body onto the cold wooden floor below. That feels... Nice. It took a few more minutes for me to actually sit myself up and open my eyes. What? Time is it? It took a while after that, but I managed to get up on my own two feet and make my way over to the window. Pulling the curtains back, I saw that it was still dark outside, though I could see the sun was just starting to poke out on the horizon. I feel awful. Before checking on anything else, I made my way down to the kitchen, hoping to find something to drink. Luckily, it seemed like someone had planned for my little trip here in advance, as there was already a jug full of water set out, which I happily drank in its entirety, choosing to ignore the cup that had been placed next to it. What even happened yesterday? I muttered to myself. I think it said something. 
But, why can't I remember what it was? She panicked. Then. She fell. Then I healed her. But. What happened after that? I sat there in silence for a while, just trying to remember whatever I could about the day before, but for some reason, I just couldn't. It was all just a blur left in my mind. Was I really that tired yesterday? Maybe I just used my magic a bit too much. No matter how much I sat and thought about it, there was only so much I could do just sat there, so I just got up and decided to head over to Kit's room to check on her. I carefully opened the door, being careful not to make any noise so that she didn't wake up. She was once again fast asleep while in her fox form, curled up with the same gray fox from yesterday. I wonder if they'd let me join them one night? That's probably asking them for too much. Although, maybe in a week or two. I made my way into the room, sitting myself down on her bed, just next to the pillow the two foxes were sleeping on or at least where I thought the two foxes were sleeping. As as soon as I sat down, the gray fox looked up at me. So, I reached my hand out towards them. Are you protecting her now? Yet they responded, nuzzling up to my hand. Ha ha, good. Having placated the guardian, I decided to try to move my hand down towards the white fluff it had been so diligently protecting. I know she is a little bit wary when people try to touch her, but, surely, it would be fine to pet her a little. We're close enough for that, right? I looked at the gray fox again just to check that it wasn't going to stop me. They looked at my hand for a moment before they just laid their head back down and closed their eyes. I'll take that as a go ahead. Slowly, I started to run my fingers through the fur, a little anxious that she was going to wake up at any moment. Yet, for some reason, that anxiety made it even more exciting. As time went on, my emotions started to get a little bigger and a little more forceful as I indulged more and more in the sensation running through my hand. The sun was almost completely above the horizon when I finally decided that I'd had enough for now, but right as I was about to take my hand away, I noticed a low, somewhat quiet, rumbling sound. Is this? I leaned in towards the two foxes, and the rumbling got just a little bit louder. It is. I didn't know foxes could purr. It's absolutely adorable. Immediately, I stuck my hand back into the pile of fluff, hoping that the more I stroked her, the louder she would purr. This is bad. This is really bad. I might get addicted to this. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you looked at it, as soon as I ran my fingers through her fur, she started to stir, gently kicking her hind legs. I pulled my hand back and just watched her haphazardly fumble around while half asleep. At least, that's what I did until I saw her start to slide off of the pillow. Whoa there, I said, pushing her back up next to the other fox. She seemingly responded to me simply by lifting her head up and trying to look around, although her eyes were still closed. My body sprung into action almost like some kind of dormant instinct. I gently ran my hand over her back and whispered, SHH, just go back to sleep. It's still early, alright? A quiet whine came from the little fox, but she relented to my calming touch and quickly went back to sleep. Maybe I'm just naturally good at this. It almost makes me wish I had some fur of my own. Instead, I've just gaunt. I looked over my wings for the first time since waking up. Some feathers that really need to be cleaned up. Ah, I'll do it. Later, breakfast comes first. I quickly made my way out of her room and back into the kitchen to look over what was available. Which, admittedly, wasn't much. Guess I'll have to go shopping later. Maybe I can buy Kit a bigger pillow at the same time. I decided it would be better to leave that train of thought for later and started pulling out everything needed to put together some sandwiches, in other words, everything that was left. I know it's not really a breakfast food per se, but I missed both lunch and dinner yesterday, so I want something properly filling. If they don't like it they can sort themselves out. Maybe not Kit. If she didn't like it, she would probably just starve herself instead. Come on Ava, just don't think about that. If it's good food, she will eat it, so you just need to make some damn good sandwiches. Immediately, I got to work, pulling together pretty much everything we had left, even frying off the last of the bacon from yesterday. When finished, I was faced with three heaping sandwiches, although they didn't quite feel complete yet. What else can I? I mumbled to myself as I looked around the kitchen. Oh, of course, what am I even doing? It was obvious. I took the three sandwiches over to the hob to toast them off in the same pan that I had fried the bacon in. Now, 
I could probably eat one of these even if I was full. Well, just one. They are a bit big. Quickly moving past that, I brought the plates of food over to Kit's room, where I was surprised to see her both fully awake and sitting at the table. So, you're finally getting used to staying with us Kit? I asked as I set the plates down, expecting the usual shy reaction of her looking at the floor or maybe even burying her face in her tail. Instead, however, she seemed a little sad. Oh no, oh no, what's wrong? I crouched down next to her, did I make a mistake? Is it the food? Should I try make something else for you quickly? Why you don't have to feel bad about it, I'm sure mom could easily down your whole portion if you don't want it. All of a sudden, her gaze tightened on me, and her mouth started to tremble ever so slightly. My immediate instinct was to bring her into a hug, but what she did next stopped me in my tracks before I could even get an arm around her. My in a name. She squeaked out. K. Kiera. Her name? Kiera? Oh no, please no. Is that what she told us yesterday? No, 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 no. How could I forget something as big as that? Oh, that's right, Kiera. I, I didn't forget, I tried hard not to fumble my words, it's just that. Old habits die hard, right? She nodded and seemed to perk up a little as well. Better not ever forget that again. It would be too much for my heart. All right. Then let's dig in. The food'll taste better when it's warm after all. As if on cue, mom came into the room and sat at the table. Good morning girls, was all she said before she started eating. That's as good an invitation as any. I guess. I joined in, trying my best to fit the sandwich into my mouth. Which I didn't manage. Instead, I ended up taking my masterpiece apart before digging in. What happened after that? was admittedly a bit of a blur. I just remember shoveling as much as I could, as fast as I could, into my mouth. And it seemed that I wasn't the only one who did, as for the first time, the three of us finished eating at the same time. Seeing the two of them satisfied, I collected up the plates and made my way back into the kitchen, although I wasn't alone. Mom, what are you doing here? I asked, don't you normally stay with Kit? No, wait, I mean Kiera? I just need to talk to you about something. She replied, it's about what we're going to do going forward. I let out a sigh before setting the dirty plates down. All right, what's going on? You remember I said that we weren't going to stay here that long? Yeah, what about it? Well, I think, no. She looked unsure of herself. I want to stay here a bit longer. Is this really what she wanted to talk about? Okay. And, she just stared at me after I said that, clearly a little confused. What? You're okay with it? She somehow seemed to be getting even more surprised as she spoke, I thought you didn't like this place. If you really wanted to leave, I could. Oh, come on, I cut her off, as soon as we took that little fox in, I knew we weren't going to be leaving anytime soon. I know what you're like, but, yes, I don't like this place. At all, to be honest. But I do want to keep helping Guerra out just as much as you do. Then, what can I say? I couldn't help but shrug my shoulders and smirk at her, you rubbed off on me. Hey, a smile spread across her face. So, on that note, what I really wanted to talk about was, this inn is a bit expensive. It's not a problem at the moment. I mean, I could probably keep us in here for a few months, though after that, I would need to start taking on work in earnest again. So, what are you wanting to do about it? If needed, I could probably take on an odd job or two myself. I suggested. No, that's not it. I was just thinking about renting out a place, preferably as far from the main street as possible. She looked down at the floor as she spoke. Any reason for the preference? Not that I mind. She saw a picture of that street. She struggled to get the words out her eyes. She didn't say anything and tried not to show it. But that draw fear I saw in her eyes. I just, I can't. Hey, don't be like that. I came up next to her and hugged her with my disheveled wings. Treat it as a good thing. How can that be a good thing? She put her hands on my shoulders, pushing me away. Think of it like this. She's getting used to living with us. Before, she would have just thought of that street and what happened there as part of her daily life. But now, She's learned that it's not right. That she doesn't have to live like that. I took a moment to calm down a bit. 
she's scared of going back, even if she doesn't really show it, she doesn't look like she's going to run away the moment someone so much as talks to her anymore. Mom didn't respond and just continued to stand there as I got to work cleaning the dishes. It was only when I was finished that she spoke again. Alright, I'll try looking for a place. Just. Don't say anything to Kiera. Not until I've sorted it all out. Sure, sure. You have fun with that. I walked past her, for me though, I'm first going to get myself in a bath, then I'm going to sort these feathers out. Chapter 40 I shouldn't be watching this. Ovia Puff, IIS shouldn't be watching this, but I want. No. I shouted at myself. On the panel floating just in front of me was Guerra, sitting on the floor, hunched over a hair clip, surrounded by various pencils and paints. She even spoke about the gift in her sleep. S she's working so hard, I I shouldn't ruin the surprise. I waved my hand to get rid of the screen in an attempt to get rid of any temptation, but it didn't do much. Almost all I had done for the last few years was watch Kiera, so it was hard to tear myself away without a good reason. M maybe I can distract myself. I I could. What can I do? Is there even anything to do? I made my way out of the side room and into the throne room hoping that an idea would just come to me. Or maybe a spirit would finally have an issue for me to solve. That's what most gods do, I think. But I've never had to do that. Nobody really uses dark magic even if they can because they're all scared of it, so the spirits can just take care of it all themselves. Dreams just work by themselves, which I assume is also thanks to the spirits. Why am I even a goddess? The spirits just do everything by themselves. Even my other. I froze up. I didn't want to think about that. It was too embarrassing. What else can I do? I guess I could go to Alaria. I do need some help planning. Something. But. I can't keep bothering her like that. I I'll just. Visit. S someone else. I. Don't know anyone else. Maybe I should just go back to watching Guerra. I can just pretend I didn't see it when she gives it to me. Probably. I turned around and started walking back to the side room, thinking about different ways to censor the panel so I wouldn't ruin the surprise. But just before I could open the door, someone came into my domain, sister. All of a sudden, Alaria came up behind me and wrapped her arms around my neck. Wait. Why are you out here and not in the side room like usual? L. Not that I'm complaining, Alaria cut me off. Now, before anything else, look at this. She held up a vial containing gray mana in front of my face. Or at least, it looked to just be gray at a glance. But after looking at it a bit closer, rather than just being gray, it was closer to a swirling mess made from strings of both black and white mana. Is that... It's somehow holding itself together even though it isn't stable. She interrupted me again, it's almost like this is not the perfected version, like this is only the first step to something much greater. Um, I don't even know what this could eventually turn into. She interrupted me a third time. I had almost forgotten how she gets when it comes to anything magic related. After all, it had been a long time since I had seen her this excited about something. She continued going on about all these different theories about how the individual strings of mana weren't repelling each other, or maybe they were repelling each other, just in a specific way. I didn't really understand it, so I just kept quiet, hoping she would stop talking soon. It took a while, but she eventually stopped rambling and just rested her head on my shoulder. Hey, are you finished? I asked. No. There's still. And no. I interrupted her this time, really not wanting to let her start all over again. Alex just. Gee go sit down. She didn't say anything for a few seconds as she rocked her head back and forth on my shoulder. Fine. She eventually responded. Despite what she said, she didn't take her head off my shoulder and just kept it there as we walked over to the two couches that were added for Kiera's last visit, where she finally separated from me and sat down. Now then, back to the topic at hand, she opened up the vial she had brought with her, just letting the mana hang freely in the air in front of us. I is that, it's some of the mana from that little kitsune that you collected before, she explained, the thing is, the more I look into it, the stranger it seems to be. Like, look at this. She released some of her own mana towards the gray blob. However, as soon as the light mana got close, it was repelled. I isn't that in normal for light mana and d dark mana? No, no, 
keep watching. I looked back at the mana, but it didn't seem any different. The light mana was just being repelled by Kiara's. I I don't understand. It's not just repelling the mana. Her eyes lit up. Look closely. The light mana is being held at a set distance from the little Kitsune's mana. It's almost like the light mana is forcefully being pulled into an orbit. If you say so. You were always the expert when it came to this kind of thing. Now, you do it too. She pointed at me, with her eyes wide as they could be. Oh okay Ilaria. I released some of my own mana, letting it flow towards the gray blob. Almost immediately, it got sucked inside, although it hadn't disappeared or been absorbed at least not in the usual sense. It almost felt like it had become entangled in the weave, being forcefully manipulated just like my sister's mana. As I unsuccessfully tried to take my mana back out of it, Alaria took out a notebook and started frantically writing notes in it. If it's able to. That must. Move shadows. But. Constant. In theory. Almost unfair. Limits. She started mumbling. There wasn't any room for me to say anything. So I just sat there in silence as she continued taking notes. I still need to plan. How many days are left, sister? At that moment, I snapped back to reality with Alaria only centimeters away from my face. Are you back now? She asked as she leaned forward just a little. Why yes. She then just suddenly burst out laughing before going and sitting back down opposite me. W what's so funny? I asked as I felt my face start to heat up. It's nothing. It's just been a while since I've seen you zone at during one of my lectures, as you like to call them. She leaned back, the last time. Must have been just after I ascended. When we were playing around with divinity for the first time. Has it really been that long? Alaria was always the smarter one out of the two of us, always trying to understand all the different types of magic even if she couldn't use most of them herself i don't know where all that motivation comes from though because i just never had to study like her for some reason whenever i tried to use magic it just worked as if my body already knew exactly how it all worked h how come you didn't become a g goddess of magic i asked impulsively i had never given it much thought before but given how much she knows and how much she has continued to research even after ascending, it would only make sense. I would have loved to be the goddess of magic. She looked a little annoyed, unfortunately, some old elf beat me to it by a few thousand years. I am sorry, I responded reflexively. Come on now, don't be sorry for something like that, she started laughing, it's not like it was your fault. That's not why I said sorry. Why don't we do this more often? Alaria asked, we used to do it all the time back in the village. I was suddenly hit by a wave of memories. I hadn't thought about the village in many years yet, I could still recall everything like it was only a week ago. I I don't know, I mumbled under my breath, why you always see came to me. Don't be like that. I know you enjoyed my company, she chuckled. I couldn't come up with anything to say in response. It might be a good idea to send the little Kitsune to that village eventually. It would be nice for her to meet some other Kitsune after all. It might even be a little easier for her to talk to them. She spoke to us pretty quickly after all. She paused for a moment. By the way, how is she doing? I haven't had the chance to check on her since she left. As she told them her in name. Really? She sounded genuinely surprised. I thought it would at least take her a month to work up enough courage. Even though I didn't really do anything to help Guerra, I still felt proud that she was able to do it. So, does that mean she's talking now? A a little, I responded. That's great. But you need to make sure you congratulate her properly when she comes back. We don't want her to go back to being silent now. That's what I want to do. But, I, I need help. I blurted out. She came over and sat down next to me. I already told you that you can always ask me for help. You don't need to be so nervous. She pulled me into a hug. Now tell me, what have you decided on so far? Um, sister, nothing yet. MMM, is it really that bad? I've never done this before. How am I supposed to know what to do? Well, what do you want to do for her? She brushed my hair out of my face. She liked the gift you gave her last time, so I'm sure she'd like anything that you come up with. P but, I want to do it p properly and what does properly mean doing it all right i answered what else could it mean i don't think so t then what i think doing it properly just means that you're doing the best you can p but no buts 
Alaria interrupted, you asked me for help, so now you are going to let me help you. That's how this works. How does she do it? Where does all her confidence come from? Oh okay, I responded. Good. Now let's get to work. We've got a celebration to plan out. Chapter 41, that's what I can help you with. It's almost perfect, but I just can't figure it out. The hair clip just didn't look right. There was nothing wrong with it, just. It felt like something was missing. The problem was that no matter how long I stared at the hair clip, I just couldn't put my finger on it. It needs to be perfect, nothing less. I picked up a paintbrush, just hoping that as soon as I started painting again, the answer would just come to me. But before I had the chance to actually dip the brush into any paint, Ava came into the room. Oh. Have you moved on to painting now? She asked, quickly making her way behind me. Instinctively, I hid the hair clip with my hands, being careful not to smudge any of the wet paint. Unfortunately for me, all that seemed to do was make Ava even more curious about it. Is it something special? She put her hands on my shoulders, lightly jostling me as she looked around at everything else on the floor. Ah, I see. Is that what you are busy painting? She reached for the notebook with all my practice drawings completely exposed. Not wanting to take my hands away from the hair clip, I used my tail to cover it, hoping it would stop her from trying to pick it up. Thankfully, she stopped almost immediately. You know, you're just making me more curious now. She let go of my shoulders. I wonder what it could be. What would little Kiara want to hide from me? Nothing you need to worry about. It's in a nothing. I squeaked out. She didn't say anything for a moment. Instead, she got up before sitting down with her legs crossed in front of me. Well, I already know it's not nothing. She said, pointing at my tail. Now, when was the last time you acted like this? What do you mean acted like this? I don't understand. Oh, I know. She abruptly leaned forward and made eye contact with me. Is this something to do with your friend at the temple? How did she know? Did she see the notebook? But I thought I was fast enough. I nodded. Then, is it another drawing of her? Wait, no, is it a painting of her this time? I was about to shake my head, but Ava responded to herself before I could. No, that can't be it. You're more than happy to show me your last drawing of her. Then, maybe it's... A gift. Is it a gift for your friend? She must be able to read my mind. There is no other explanation. She wasn't even with me yesterday. She can't even know about the hair clip. Once again, I nodded. So you're going to give her a homemade gift? She let out a light chuckle. You really are just adorable, aren't you? Her comment caught me by surprise, making me tense up a little. However, Ava just continued laughing. It's almost hard to believe you are the same little girl who would run to the other side of the room as soon as I got just a little too close. I, I haven't changed that much. Just, well, there is no sense dwelling in the past though. She pointed at the hair clip inside my hands. Right now, I think there is something I can help you with. What? Help me? Ava. Has helped before. And. It did work. I want this to be a good gift. A perfect gift. But, what could she even help with? I looked up at her but didn't say anything. So I take it you're interested? Good. So, here's what I'm thinking. I'm sure you've picked out the perfect gift for your friend, but, have you thought about how exactly you are going to give it to her? Are you going to put it in a box? Are you going to wrap it up? Are you going to include a card? Maybe you don't need one, but then you need to think about what you're going to say. If. You talk to her. But never mind that, that's what I can help you with. That's a lot, a lot, that I didn't think about. Come on, you don't need to look so down about it. She reached out towards me but abruptly pulled back halfway through for seemingly no reason. Of course, I won't help you for free. But if I must say, I do have pretty good rates. In fact I doubt you could find cheaper anywhere else. That makes sense. I already knew what she was going to ask for. So I immediately turned around and moved my tail over towards her lap, while at the same time picking up the notebook that it had been covering. You know me so well, she pulled a brush out from behind her back, almost as if she already knew that this was going to happen. As she started brushing, I handed both the notebook and hair clip off to Umbra, who had poked only their head out from my shadow so they could store them for later. So that's where they were hiding. Avo caught me by surprise causing me to yank my tail away from her, though this just made her laugh, I'm sorry, 
I really didn't mean to surprise you like that. I gently placed my tail back down in her lap without saying anything. I had just been wondering about where they were hiding, as the little fox seemed to just disappear yesterday, then just showed back up like they had always been there. That's what surprised her? Not that they just came out of my shadow? Is that a normal thing? No, it can't be. Now, now, just relax. I'll be finished soon, she ran the brush through my tail. It's so much easier to just do this regularly than just waiting for it to become a problem, don't you think? I immediately thought back to the pain I felt the first time I tried brushing my tail. MHM. Then. Does that mean I get to do this again tomorrow? I'll take that as a yes, even though I wasn't facing her, I could almost hear her smiling. As Ava said, she finished brushing my tail pretty quickly before getting up and pulling out two cloaks one for her and one for me. We should probably ask mom before we go out. But I'm sure it will be fine. She has things she needs to do, Ava said as she fastened one of the cloaks around my neck. She'll probably appreciate having some time to herself. However, as if on cue, Raynal came into the room. What's this about you two girls trying to sneak out? She scared me just a little. I'm just wanting to take her shopping with me. It'll be fine, Ava responded completely unfazed. No, no, sending you shopping is one thing, but with Kiera, what if something happens? Nothing is going to happen. Even if something does, I can take care of it. You even told me yourself that you think I underestimate my own strength. Ava punched the air a few times, trying to prove her point. I still can't. I trust you, but I can't. I can't just let you go by yourselves. It'll be fine. I've already thought things through. Ava put her hands behind her head, mimicking my ears. Everyone is looking for a kitsune with black or white hair, right? Well, our little Kiara isn't a kitsune, she's a... a wolf. Since you don't normally see Beastkin around here, I'm sure they won't know the difference. Do you really think they will believe you? As soon as they see those fluffy ears, it doesn't matter if she's a kitsune, wolf beastkin, cat beastkin, or anything else. They'll take her anyway. Come on. You already know this. That's not all. I've been thinking about this for a few days now. But, she turned to me. You can make your hair black, with, whatever you use. But what if you made it, um, less dark? Kinda like the other little fox, the gray one. Less dark? I let my shadow cover my hair, and just like every other time before, it became a deep, pitch black. How do I make it, less, then? Seemingly as a response to me simply thinking about it, my hair very slowly started to brighten until it was a similar color to Umbra, though a little darker. See? Ava shouted while pointing at me, now she's a gray wolf. The people here have probably heard about the gray wolves out in the forests, which means it's a perfect disguise, they'd never suspect a thing, but... And you have something that you wanted to do. Ava interrupted, you know... There was something you were wanting to take a look at. I, I can just do that myself. While you two wait here, safe. It will be fine. Ava shouted, interrupting Raynal again. How many times do I have to tell you? Nothing will happen. I'm just taking her with me to buy some food cause we've run out. It'll just be a quick trip, there and back. I, come on. I understand you're worried, but at this point you're just being overprotective. I've been making this trip since we got here. And as for Kiara, I mean, she managed to take care of herself even without us being there. With me there, it would be impossible for what you're imagining to happen. The room fell silent after that. It wasn't the first time that Ava and Raynal had argued, but it was the first time that I had felt that level of pressure in the room. It had gotten to the point where I was contemplating climbing out the window just to escape. However, before I did, Raynal spoke up. Fine. But just buy food then come back. If anything happens, anything, please, run back here. Don't worry about anything else, just run, Raynal pleaded. I've got it, a smile spread across Ava's face as she turned to me. All right, pull your hood up, and we'll head out straight away. I immediately did as she said, pulling the hood over my ears and following her out of the inn, afraid that if I didn't, the two of them would just start arguing again. So, what do you want to do first? She asked, putting her arm around me before pulling me close, I'll have to get the food last, but otherwise what we do today is entirely up to you, MHM. 
I responded, good, then let's get moving, she said, starting to walk, still holding on to me, it's my turn to have fun with you, and I don't want to waste any of it just standing around doing nothing. Chapter 42 an onion seller and misfit hats. It didn't take long before the familiar market decorated with colorful awnings came into view. Ava held me close the entire way there, and even though we had arrived, it didn't seem like she was going to let go anytime soon. Okay, before we get to the fun stuff I just need to stop off here. She pulled me along as she made her way over to a stall at the entrance to the market. Oh, hello again. The woman running the stall called over to us as she put down the crate she was carrying and came over to us, I can't believe you're already back, it hasn't even been a week yet, and you even brought a friend along this time, or maybe this is. My immediate instinct was to take a step back, but unfortunately for me, Ava seemed to have a different idea as she pushed me in front of her. This here is the little bundle of fluff who really knows how to put a meal away. Or three. Ava said firmly planting her hands on my shoulders so I couldn't escape, and we're here to have some fun today. Well, I'd be more than happy to help you out, she started laughing, but I don't think your idea of fun is sitting around with this old lady at her stall. Old lady? The woman looked to be in her early thirties, and even ignoring that fact, just a few moments ago, she was carrying a large crate filled with vegetables as if it were nothing. Is she older than she looks? Or... Do people just think 30 is old here? Maybe it's just a saying. I'm sorry, but today is just for the two of us, but maybe some other time Ava said, reciprocating the woman's laughter. I just came here to ask if you could prepare my order in advance. I'm planning on picking it up on our way back if that's possible. Don't worry about it, the woman went back behind the stall. So, just the usual then? Yep, but if you have anything interesting today, can you throw that in as well? Oh. And can you go ask everyone else for me? Ava clapped her hands together, I don't want to tire her out before we get to the fun stuff. Sure thing, I can send someone to pick up the rest for you, but only because I'd feel sorry for that little one's legs. With all the walking you'd have to do, the woman wrote some things down on a notepad before looking back up at Ava. Well, what are you doing just standing there? Get out of here already. Go have fun with your sister. Sister? What sister? Does she think that? Dash. I tried to look up at Ava in an attempt to have her explain that the woman was wrong, but before I could, I was abruptly yanked backwards. Sure thing. Ava shouted back to the woman as she started running into the market, dragging me along by the arm. It was only when the stall was no longer in sight that she finally decided to slow back down. Now that the boring stuff is taken care of, she crouched down so that she was at eye level with me. Have you decided on what you want to do first? I didn't know what to say to her. There were just too many different things going through my mind, along with needing to try and calm myself down after suddenly having to sprint through the market. No? Well, I already expected as much. She sighed, how could you know what you want to do when you're just sitting inside that in all day? The first time you went out just for the sake of it was yesterday, and I didn't even get to go with you. B but I tried to interrupt her but she didn't seem to hear me over the hustle and bustle of the market. So, what we can do instead is just walk from here, and if you see something that catches your eye, absolutely anything, we can go there. Sound good? Great. She didn't even let me try and respond to her. But I thought you were going to help me with a gift. Isn't that why we came here? Why aren't? Before I could continue that line of thought, I was once again pulled through the market as Ava started walking me through the market pointing out every stall we walked past, no matter how small it was. There were many fruit and vegetable stalls that were much smaller than the first one we visited. However, unlike that one, they almost all chose to specialize in one thing each, like one stall that only sold different varieties of onions, although the man running that store didn't seem very happy when Ava pointed that out. Ava even pointed out the small stands set up in dark alleyways where people were paying money to play something called the shell game. In the game, a pea was hidden under one of three shells. All the person playing had to do was follow the shell with a pea under it. But when watching one of the games, I saw the person running the stand slide the shell to the edge of the table so that the pea would fall into their lap. It's just a scam. It seemed that I wasn't the only one who saw this as the man playing the game immediately flipped the table before grabbing the con artist by the collar and yelling incoherently. 
before it escalated any further, Ava covered my eyes with her cloak, why you don't need to see that, she said as she hurriedly pushed me down the street. When she removed the cloak, we were standing in front of a stall selling handmade bins and quills. Unfortunately, what they had on sale didn't seem anywhere near the quality of what I had seen in the old man's art store the day before. Come on, Guerra, there has to have been something you were interested in. She put her hands on my shoulders and looked directly into my eyes. This doesn't work if you don't want to go anywhere. This isn't what you said we were going to do. Okay then, the next store I see that's the one we're going to go into, Ava said, standing back up. True to her word, we walked only a few steps before Ava abruptly dragged me into a store without even checking what they were selling. Inside, the first thing that greeted us was a large man sitting behind the front counter reading a newspaper who completely ignored us. Um, hello? Ava called out as she walked up to the counter. The man tilted his newspaper down slightly and peered at the two of us with his beady black eyes. Whatever, he grunted. My instincts were screaming at me to run away. That man clearly didn't want us there, and I didn't want to test him any further than we already had. Ava, however, clearly didn't feel the same as she promptly pushed me all the way to the back of the store, where some tall shelves were set up. On the shelves, there was a large variety of hats that didn't seem like they should have been stored together. There were elaborately decorated bonnets next to what looked to be some sort of cartwheel hat, which itself was sitting next to a collection of various ascot caps and berets. For some reason, I just found myself drawn to them, looking each over and almost immediately identifying what each of them was. But at some point, while doing this, I realized that it was strange. How? Do I know this? This was different to when I first picked up a pencil, it wasn't like my body was acting on its own. I just knew these things somehow. Somewhere in my mind, this information existed, but... So, have we finally found something you're interested in? Well, I don't really know much about things like this, but... Ava looked over the hats until she decided on one and tried it on. What do you think? Do I look good? She had picked out a black top hat, which along with her cloak, made for a rather interesting outfit. But in a strange way, it fit her surprisingly well. Why yes, I managed to squeak out, right? She placed the hat back down. Now it's your turn, just pick one out. I am interested in the hats. What if it's like my drawings? Maybe I'll remember something. I nodded at Ava before turning to one of the shelves. My eyes were almost immediately drawn to a tricorny made of black felt that was lined with some delicate gold lace, which stood out amongst the many overly decorated hats that surrounded it. Before trying it on, I checked to see if the shopkeeper could see me from where he sat. Thankfully, the shelves were tall enough to hide both me and Ava from him. I then pulled my hood down before trying to put the hat on, but as soon as I did, I noticed something was very wrong. Why? Ava burst out laughing as soon as she also realized what the problem was. My ears were in the way. Oh no, I'm sorry. I really didn't mean to laugh at you, Ava said, trying and failing to hold back her laugh. I just didn't even think that would be an issue for you. I just stood there in silence as a single tear started to form in my eyes. No no no, she immediately stopped laughing. D don't cry, I I. Wait, I've seen special hats for Beastkin with different ears before. They had all these different kinds. Some were like small hats that would fit between your ears, while others had holes cut into them, or even special designs that would hold the ears in place. But, I saw that. In a different town. Another town. The idea of there actually being somewhere other than here seemed strange for some reason, even though it was obviously true. This couldn't be the only place in this world. I had tried to run away before, but all I saw on the other side of the gate was an open field with a row of trees in the distance. M maybe we can go back there someday, and at the same time, we can go and see the rest of the world as well. Something like that, you know? Go and see the world. If this was a few weeks ago, what do you say to that? Ava asked, wouldn't that be fun? We could all go on a proper journey with. No. I interrupted. I don't want to leave. Not when Ovia is right here. I can't leave. Not anymore. No? Well, I, I can't force you. She crouched down and took the tricorny from me before placing it back on the shelf. But just think about it, 
okay? There's a whole world out there, and that includes a lot of places that are much better than here. It doesn't matter. I have what I need here. I, I can put up with anything. I need to stay here, no matter what. I pulled my hood up and immediately made my way to the door, not wanting to think about that any further. As I did, the storekeeper lowered his newspaper again. Kids. He grumbled before lifting it back up. With Ava following close behind I quickly left the store and started to walk down through the market again in an attempt to clear my mind. Sorry for all that, Ava said, sounding a little disheartened, but did that at least give you some ideas for what you do want to do? There is only one reason why I'm here. Why you? H help me. I mumbled while tugging on her cloak. With the gift. Ava finished my sentence for me. I nodded. Okay. If that's what you want to do first, Ava looked around a bit before suddenly changing the direction she was walking in, I know just the place, it's just down here. Looking at where she was heading, there was a store with a familiar purple lawning above the entrance. Chapter 43, Something You Like Ava didn't even wait for me to catch up and immediately made her way into the store. Hello. She shouted. I quickly followed her in, where the old man from yesterday was sitting behind an easel calmly painting despite the noise. Well, hello to you too. Were the book silent he peeked out from behind the easel and immediately turned his attention to me, making him pause for a moment. Now, I didn't expect you to be back so soon. Was the bribe I gave you that effective? Maybe I should start doing it more often, huh? Ava immediately turned around and looked at me as if she wanted an explanation. Fortunately for me, the old man continued talking taking Eva's attention away. I didn't realize the two of you knew each other, he said, setting down his paintbrush and coming over to us. Now, I might be mistaken, but I don't think you two came here just to talk to an old man. So, what do you need? The old man looked at me, but I wasn't able to say anything. Thankfully, Ava spoke up for me. My friend has put together a gift for someone but didn't think about how she was going to actually present it. So we're looking for a small box? Maybe just something to wrap it in? I don't actually know what the gift is, but it needs to look good. I'm sure you understand what I mean. The old man looked at me and smiled, lucky for you, I already have an idea of what that gift might be, so I think a nice small box would be the best. But what do you think? I immediately nodded in response. All right then. I'll go pick some options out for you. Feel free to have a look around the store while you wait. He promptly got up and headed towards the back of the store, where he disappeared behind a curtain. As soon as the old man was out of sight, Ava turned towards me. You should have told me you already knew about this place, she said, crouching down to match my height. When was I supposed to tell you? You never even asked. I really thought I had something special with this place. It was hard to put the expression on her face into words, at least, I couldn't. She was still smiling like usual, but something about it felt different. She didn't seem sad, but rather something in between. Disappointment maybe? It was like the wind had been taken out of her sails, but she just kept on smiling anyway. I don't like this, but... What am I supposed to do? What makes her happy? My eyes drifted down towards the wooden floorboards as I stood there racking my brain, trying to come up with an idea, any idea. But it was harder than I expected. I, don't know, much about her. The realization came as a bit of a surprise to me, even though I had spent the last few weeks living with her, I didn't really know who she was, what she liked, what she disliked, even just what she usually did during the day. I knew almost nothing. The only thing I knew was that she wanted to brush my tail. But I'm not supposed to take my tail out of my cloak. Desperately trying to think of something, I looked up at Ava, and almost immediately, an idea came to mind, though I was a little hesitant to put it into practice. I, don't want her to stay like that. A hey, Ava. Gee good. I got onto my tiptoes and, with my arm, reached up towards the top of her head. However, as soon as my hand made contact, she jumped back, her face turning a little red. Was that wrong? I, I shouldn't have done that. I instinctively took a step back while pulling down on the hood of my cloak so that I couldn't see Ava anymore. No, 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 don't try to disappear now. She grabbed my wrist just before I could bring it back into my cloak, 
I I was just a little surprised. I didn't expect you to suddenly try and pat my head like that. She lifted my hood back up just enough so I could see her face without revealing my ears. She was still smiling, but now that smile felt a little more genuine. Maybe. I did the right thing. The two of you get along so well I wouldn't question it if you told me you were sisters. The old man came out carrying a tray with a number of small boxes on it. Oh. That does remind me. I forgot to apologize to you last time, I only called her your mom because it felt appropriate. She did correct me after, but I never apologized to you. My eyes were instinctively drawn towards Ava, but I could no longer see her expression as she had turned to face the man. He set the tray down while chuckling to himself a little, this is most of what I have, although I do have a few different colors still in the back, so if you don't find what you're looking for. I can go find them for you. I walked up to where the tray had been placed and looked over what the man had brought. Each box was completely different from the one sitting next to it. One was made from a dark wood, which had been carved to make it look like there were thin vines wrapped around it, while another had intricate golden inlays that almost made it look as if the gold was a liquid flowing through it. Each box could have been called a masterpiece in its own right but none of them seemed right for me to give to Ovia. It wasn't that I didn't think she deserved them, just that it wouldn't make sense coming from me. Looking over the try again, going box by box once again, I noticed one that I had missed the first time. Right at the back of the tray was a simple box that was just a little plush. It was covered with a black velvet fabric that immediately reminded me of Ovia's fur. I reached out towards it but almost immediately stopped myself. What am I doing? I can't pay for this, but I need it. So that's the one you like. I see, the old man said, picking up the box I was looking at. Well, what should I do now? I can't just give it to you for free. And I already gave you a bribe last time. I can pay for her. Ava spoke up, sorting through some coins she had taken out from the inside of her cloak. But put those coins away. I already have something else in mind, he said as he walked over to the wall and selected two small blank canvases. Instead of taking your money, I want the two of you to paint for me. What? But I can just pay you. I have the money. Ava was visibly confused still holding the coins out in front of her. You might have the money, but this box is for a gift. I think it would mean a lot more if the person who was giving the gift was the one paying for it. He turned and looked at me. Don't you think? That makes sense. A lot of sense. I nodded, and the old man smiled as he handed me one of the canvases. Now, what should you paint? How about something you like? That sounds good. I want you to paint something that you like. It can be absolutely anything as long as you like it. Then, once it's done, I'll put it up for sale in my store, and that can pay for the box, does that make sense? So it needs to sell first. I still have five more nights until I can see her. It should sell before then. I don't have a better option. Once again, I nodded. Now, one for you, he said, holding the other canvas out towards Ava. But, I thought this was so that she could pay for the box herself? Ava replied. Still confused, why would I also need to paint something? Yes, that's so she can pay for the box, but I saw that you have picked something out yourself, and you're going to be here waiting for your friend to finish anyway, so why not? Ava didn't respond and instead blushed slightly. Now, go ahead and paint me something you like. Again, Ava didn't say anything, but this time, she took the canvas and quickly made her way over to an easel. I followed her and sat down in front of the easel set up right next to the one she had chosen. I picked up a pencil, planning to put together a rough sketch to start, but as soon as I did, I ran into an issue. I didn't know what to draw. What? Do I like? It was seemingly a simple question, but there just wasn't a simple answer to match it. I like Ovia. She's nice, but I can't paint her, not to give away it wouldn't be good enough for a goddess. I can't do anything to hurt her reputation, but is there anything else? I like the name she gave me, but I can't paint that. Then what else? I like Umbra. She also gave me Umbra, and I could paint Umbra. I knew that I wasn't going to come up with a better idea, 
so I put the pencil against the canvas and started to sketch. It was a simple sketch of Umbra sleeping peacefully on top of the pillow I had been sharing with them. It didn't take long for me to finish the sketch and switch to using paint. While I had already tried painting a little bit when decorating the hair clip, I found that it didn't feel as natural as when I was simply drawing, and unfortunately, this time was no different. My painting definitely didn't look bad, but no matter how much I tried, I just couldn't make it look exactly how I wanted, whether that be from struggling to mix the paints to make the right color or just accidentally smudging the painting with my wrist. Looking to my side, Ava seemed to be struggling a lot more than I was, as her usual smile was nowhere to be seen and had instead been replaced with an intense focus. We both continued working on our paintings for a while, and in the end, I had something that didn't look bad but was still far from perfect. At least you can't see any of the smudged parts. I looked over to see what Ava had painted. On her canvas was a simple forest with a few colorful blobs haphazardly scattered through it, which I could only assume were supposed to be various animals, though I couldn't tell what any of them were supposed to be. Are the two of you already finished? The old man called out from behind his own easel. Having gone back to continue the painting he was working on when we first entered the store, let's see what you two have come up with. He got up and walked around so that he could stand behind us. Well, that's a little unusual, he said, leaning in a little closer towards my painting. It's not every day you see a fox, even if it's just a painting, huh? I was slightly tempted to ask the man to explain what he meant, but he quickly turned his head and had a look at Ava's painting. Oh my! And over here, we have a lively forest. Just looking at it quickly, I can see a squirrel, a bear and many more, he said, picking up the two canvases, I think you two have done a very good job, now then. He took both paintings behind the main desk and came back out with a box and something wrapped in paper. What? I thought he needed to sell the paintings first. You seem a little confused, he said as if reading my mind, well, I just put your two paintings into my store and they sold immediately. This might surprise you, but even my own work struggles to sell so quickly. I guess you two might have a special talent. Does he mean? Did he? Ava suddenly burst out laughing, can you thank the person who bought them for us? Your thanks have been well received, the old man joined in her laughter while handing the box to me and the other package to Ava. Now, get on your way you two. I think you've spent enough time here. I quickly tucked the box under my arm so Umbra could store it in my shadow. Ava eventually stopped laughing and made her way out of the store, with me close behind. Thank you again. She shouted back. Dot T thanks. I mumbled, even though I knew the man wouldn't be able to hear me. Chapter 44, Watch Where You're Walking. Ava and I continued walking down the street, although unlike before, she had stopped pointing at each of the stores we walked past as she was too busy struggling with the package she had gotten from the art store. Why did he make this so ah, uh, got it? Ava exclaimed as she managed to untie the string holding the package closed. She quickly sorted through whatever was in the package before pulling out a long black ribbon that shimmered just slightly as it caught the sunlight. My eyes were drawn to it as it gently swayed in the wind, almost as if it had hypnotized me. Do you like it? She asked, waving it back and forth in front of me. Why would you ask me that? I just noticed you liked things that were black. You have your black scarf and your black dress, and just now, you chose a black box for the gift you're putting together, so I thought you'd also like this. I do. But why does that matter? I nodded. Great. I wanted to have you try some different hairstyles later. But why should we wait? We can just- She stopped herself just as she reached toward my hood. Oh. That's right. We can only do it after we get back. I didn't even agree to it yet. We stood there, staring at each other in silence for a moment, with Ava still holding the ribbon out even though she knew I couldn't remove my hood while we were outside. Oh, I have an idea. She suddenly lit up again, give me your wrist. What? Why? Even though I didn't know what she wanted, I still held my hand out towards her anyway. Seeing this. Ava immediately grabbed my outstretched wrist before wrapping it with a ribbon and tying it into a large bow. There you go, she handed the package over to me, now do mine. The package just contained a large number of ribbons. There were plenty of different colors to pick from, and some of them even had elaborate patterns spanning their entire length. In fact, 
there were so many different tribunes in there that it seemed strange that they could even fit into the small package in my hands. I sifted through the ribbons until I found one that was a bright purple with some faint floral patterns running through it. The color jumped out at me because it somehow matched Ava's eyes almost exactly. As soon as I pulled the ribbon out, Ava's arm abruptly shot in front of me. It startled me for a second but I quickly calmed back down. I carefully wrapped it around her wrist and tried to tie it into a bow just like she had done for me, but I just couldn't keep the two sides of the bow even, and it ended up looking a bit strange. I reached out to untie it and try again, but before I could, she pulled her wrist back. Looks great, she said, holding her hand up in front of her and inspecting my handiwork. I bet mom would be jealous if she saw this. Why? MHM. I wasn't sure what she wanted me to say, so I just hummed and hoped she would decide what it meant herself. Oh, come on, you can give a bit more of a reaction than that. What happened to the girl who was bold enough to suddenly try to pat my head in the middle of a storm? My face almost immediately started to heat up. That's better, she smiled while dancing around a little, letting the ribbon tied around her wrist flutter about. By the way, there was something else I was really wanting to get while we were out. Maybe we can just quickly, thud. Ava fell to the floor. Come on, you need to look where you're going. You just walked into some kid. I didn't walk into anyone. She just jumped into me out of nowhere. Hello there, and sorry about that. This guy over here is awful when it comes to paying attention to what's going on around him. Honestly, I don't know how he managed to get this job. No, no, no. My heart started beating quickly and quicker as I stood there, frozen in place just watching the scene playing out in front of me. Ava was lying on the ground, with two knights standing just over her. While she was dancing about, she accidentally bumped into one of them. The one who spoke last, the smaller of the two knights, held his hand out towards her. No. Please, run. You need to run. First, we're called out here cause some conman got what was coming to him, and now you've gone and done this, the smaller knight, while still holding his hand out had turned his head and started complaining. I told you it wasn't my fault. I didn't do anything. The other knight argued. Plus, you were just complaining about how you were sick and tired of patrolling the streets searching for some street rat. Your eyes lit up when you found out about that conman. Sure, but by the time we actually got there, they had both already run away. I feel like I've done nothing but patrol these streets for years at this point. Why won't you move? Get away from here. He'll give up eventually. There haven't even been any sightings for the last few weeks. They probably kicked the bucket off in an alley somewhere. Look, you know as well as I do that he won't stop until he sees the body. That kid doesn't even know what they look like. Only the late Baron actually saw them. So what? We're stuck doing this cause some kid has probably gone and died in a ditch somewhere. The knights fell silent for just a moment before the knight holding his hand out towards Ava spoke up again. Um, are you going to take my hand or not? He shook his arm a little. I'm afraid it might fall off if I keep holding it up like this. Please. I managed to force myself to take just a single step backwards. But that may have been the wrong thing to do as the knight turned his attention to me. Hey, is this your sister? Uh. Friend? Ah, uh, whoever they are to you, you seem to know them. Can you help us out a bit here? I looked down at Ava, who was staring directly at me, her usual smile nowhere to be seen. No. I can't. I. Can't you see you're just scaring the kid? This is how you're supposed to do it, the larger knight said before taking a step towards me. My body started to shake uncontrollably as I tried to force it to move, to run, to get away, anything. But my feet refused to move, it was as if they had been nailed to the ground. Not again. Please move. Please. Right at that moment, Ava scrambled to her feet completely ignoring the knight's outstretched hand. She ran over to me and hugged me tightly pulling my head in close to her chest, where I could hear her heart pounding. I am sorry, Ava stumbled over her words, my s sister is a little shy. Don't worry, that big guy is used to it. It's not just children, but even cats and dogs seem to be afraid of him. He slapped the larger knight on the back, but you don't care about that. More importantly, are you alright? That was quite the fall you took. I'm okay, Ava said. That's good, that's good. Although I do still have something else I just need to do quickly. I guess you could call it common procedure these days. He pointed at me. Can we just have your sister remove her hood? No. By some miracle, 
I managed to move my other foot, but all it did was make Ava hold me tighter. Do we really have to? The larger knight asked. How can it be her if they're sisters? There was never any mention of family anywhere. I thought we were looking for a street rat. Just pull out the description. It'll only take a few seconds to do anyway. He turned back to me. Now, please remove your hood so we can be on our way. Let me go. I can't let them see. Hey, all right. Ava grabbed my hood, her hand clearly trembling. No. What are you doing? It will be F fine, okay? Just. D don't say anything. She whispered to me before slowly lifting my hood and revealing my ears. Almost immediately, the two knights looked at each other in confusion. A beastkin? They asked in unison. No. Why would this work? Please. Don't do this to me. Is it normal for only one sibling to be a beastkin? The larger knight asked. How am I supposed to know? The smaller knight responded. Do you see any ears on top of my head? Why would I know how beastkin children work? But. Don't worry about it. Just check if they match the description. We don't need to worry about that if it's the wrong kid anyway. The larger knight did as he was asked and pulled out a notebook before staring directly at me, causing my heart to stop for just a second. Uh, come on, what's it now? Well, I think. She might match it. I tried to slip under Ava's arms, but she changed her grip so that I couldn't. What do you mean she might match it? Either she does or she doesn't. The smaller knight was clearly annoyed. Um. Well, the only description we have is a small kid wearing dirty rags with fox ears and either black or white hair. Her hair is somewhere between black and white. Maybe. As for the ears. Um, T they're wolf ears. Ava spoke up, as she's a wolf beastkin. The knights turned to face each other. Do you even want to risk it? The larger knight asked. No. Not really. The last guy who got it wrong just disappeared one night. I might hate the job. But I'd rather keep my head on my shoulders. Then let's just move on. If we're quick, we can probably get a few drinks without the other guys getting suspicious. Yeah, you're right. The smaller knight turned towards us. Well, I guess we'll be we're on our way then. Sorry for all this. They didn't even wait for us to respond before they left. Ava kept holding onto me tightly while mumbling something to herself that I wasn't able to make out. As soon as the knights couldn't be seen anymore, she let go of me and I immediately fell to the floor. At some point, my legs must have given out as I couldn't move them at all. I'm so sorry. Ava picked me back up, her hands now glowing ever so slightly. I I. This wasn't supposed to happen. Why couldn't I run away? What if this happens again? I. I can't. Look, let's just. Go back to the inn. Would that be okay? She hugged me even tighter. You don't need to say anything. I I'll carry you back. All right. She let go of me so she could awkwardly try to lift me up onto her back. It was a little uncomfortable feeling her wings twitch underneath her cloak as they tried to find a comfortable position. I didn't resist at all and just let her do what she wanted. I don't know. I just don't know. I wasn't sure how long it took, but by the time we got back to the inn, the sun had already started to set. Ava stopped in front of the door. This is a bit awkward. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to. The door suddenly flew open, with Raynal standing there while clearly in a panic. As soon as her eyes locked onto me, tears started streaming down her face. What hap? Just. Avo cut her off. I forgot to bring back the food we bought. The shopkeeper should have it all ready. Can you go get it quickly? But. Please. Ava interrupted again. I. She probably needs some time. Alright, thanks. Guess that means I can make dinner tonight. Hey? She bounced me slightly. I didn't respond. I couldn't respond. I just didn't know what to do. I'll go put her in her room. It was a long day. Ava walked into the inn with me still clinging to her back. I made a mistake. Again. Chapter 45 I don't know. I don't know. It had probably been a few days since visiting the market but I couldn't say exactly how many days had passed. Since then, I just stayed in my room with the curtains drawn to block out the light. I don't know what to do. Both Ava and Rangel had visited me a few times, but I just couldn't bring myself to face them. After a while, they stopped coming into the room entirely and would just leave things at the entrance for me, though that didn't stop them from trying to talk to me every time they did. I don't want to. As if on cue, there was a knock on the door. 
followed by the sound of the hinges squeaking. I just lifted the covers over my head so whoever it was couldn't see me. Please stop. Kiera? It was Ava's voice. How are you doing today? I'm sorry. She said, for what had to be the tenth time since she brought me here. It wasn't your fault. It's mine. I'm the one who couldn't run. I'm the one who froze up. I'm the one they wanted. I'm the one who's hiding. Um, I had gotten this for you a little bit ago now. The day after she stopped herself from speaking, I'll just leave it here, alright? I'm sorry. I know you want to be left alone. She said, followed by the sound of the door closing. I don't know. I. Just. Don't know anymore. I don't know why my legs wouldn't move. All that's changed is. But I. I don't want to go back. Not anymore. I brought the covers down just enough so that I could check if the door had actually been closed fully. Even though there was almost no light in the room. I was somehow still able to see perfectly clearly. The door was closed, and in front of it lay a single pillow. It was quite a bit bigger than the pillow I had been using. Umbra jumped out of the shadows right next to the pillow and brought it over to me. Thanks. Ever since I closed out the light, it was almost like the whole room had become an extension of my shadow. Umbra had been able to pop out from anywhere they wanted in the room, and on top of that, the room had cooled down quite a lot. It was almost like... Not now, please. Not now. I don't want her to see me. Not like this. What happened to me? I found myself instinctively glancing over at the side table where I had left the hair clip I had finished off for Ovia. It was the only thing I could bring myself to do since. What am I supposed to do? I. Don't know. That phrase had looped over and over in my head for the past few days. I don't know. I just. Don't know. I reached out to close the box where the hair clip had been placed. But as I did, something pulled my hand back. The ribbon tied around my wrist had gotten caught on the corner of the table. I don't know. I pulled my hand back to free the ribbon before closing the box. What am I doing? Tears started falling from my eyes, but I didn't feel any different. I just closed my eyes, hoping that by going to sleep, I would be able to forget about everything even if just for a short while. It didn't take long for the room temperature to drop even further than it already had. Because of that, I didn't even need to open my eyes to know what kind of dream I was having. I don't want this. Not now. I lay there, holding my eyes shut. I didn't want to see the fake fox from my dreams, not when I was like this. It will just remind me of. I don't deserve. Guerra. My ears instantly perked up, searching from the source of the sound. Was that? No. It couldn't be. It can't be. I kept my eyes closed, not wanting to entertain that thought any further than I already had. Guerra. The voice was much louder this time. Leave me alone. Don't do this to me. Guerra. W. What's wrong? Someone lifted me up off of the ground, and tears immediately started forming again. And no, no, W. What do I do? The voice was coming from right behind me. Why are you here? Why now? Something cool brushed up against my face, taking my tears with it. P please don't see cry. I. Don't know. I mumbled, still holding my eyes closed, not wanting to admit that this was actually happening. That it was her. I it's going to be a alright. They sat down on the floor and carefully placed me in their lap. You um. W what do I do now? Did you really come here? For me, I gave in. I opened my eyes. I looked up. I looked into those abyss-like eyes. Ovia. My tears just kept on flowing. Why yes, I am here, she responded, gently wiping away my tears once again. A. Are you okay? I. Don't know. You um. See can I help? I don't know. You can't keep saying that, but. I don't. B but. She interrupted my train of thought. I. Want to help. I chose not to say anything. As I knew that if I tried, only one thing would come out of my mouth, and I didn't want to keep doing that to her. She wrapped her arms around me, pulling me back against her chest. S sorry if I'm a little cold. T there isn't much I can do about it. No. I like it, I squeaked out, though I wasn't sure if she heard it. We sat like that for a while, in complete silence. At some point. The tears that had wet my cheeks finally dried up. Why does she let me do this? She's a goddess. She doesn't have to do this. I don't know what to do. I mumbled by accident. A are you feeling better now? She asked, seemingly ignoring what I had said. MHM. Good. Ovia suddenly shouted, startling me a little. Oh, s sorry. It's fine. I was just 
a little surprised. That's why I apologized. She muttered to herself. I almost let out a laugh but held myself back, knowing that it probably wasn't appropriate. S. So what was wrong? C. Can I help? I don't. I stopped myself before continuing. I. I've changed. Is that a G good thing? I don't know. I couldn't stop myself and ended up shouting at her. I just. I don't want to change. But. I don't want to. Go back either. What are you doing? This is your problem, not hers. Why are you doing this to her? W. Well, um. I. Ovia seemed to struggle to say anything. Look at what you've done. This is your fault. W. What happened? She eventually asked. Just stop. Don't answer. I. In the end, I just couldn't stop myself. The nights. I couldn't run. I couldn't escape. I was stuck. But why? Why can't I control myself anymore? What if? I don't want. Not again. Please not again. I felt tears start to well up, but before any could fall, Ovia hugged me tighter. I I. Saw. She said, sounding a little dejected. She saw. She saw. That. I don't know what to do. What if? It happens again. I'm. I'm not safe anymore. I. Need to go back. But. I don't want to. I don't want to go back. Not anymore. I don't know why. But I don't want to go back. I can't go back. Ovia didn't respond. I've ruined it. Why did I do that? Why do I keep making mistakes? I I think you know exactly what why you want to do. She eventually spoke up. What? I asked. What am I supposed to do? Why you keep saying that why you don't want to go be back. But. I if you don't want to go back. She cut me off. T then the only way you can go is F forward. I. Don't know. It makes sense. But, I just don't know. You um, W what about this? W what do you want to D do right in now? She asked. Just. Can we stay like this? I like this. This is what I want right now. Oh okay then. She hugged me even tighter than before, this time wrapping her tails around me as well. Thank you. I mumbled. We sat like that for what felt like an eternity, but I didn't mind. For the first time in a while, my mind fell silent and I was able to just focus on what was happening around me. I was able to just focus on the slight chill coming from Ovia's body. I was able to just focus on the endless darkness that surrounded us. I was able to just focus on me. What I wanted. I am sorry I'm not that G good at this. Eolaria is better at things like this. She suddenly broke the silence. S. She's helped me before. More T than once. I T tried to copy her. But I can't know I'm not that good. That's not true. If that were true, I wouldn't feel like this. I think. I reached out and hugged one of Ovia's tails that was waving about just in front of me, hoping that it would make her feel a little better. Thank you. I buried my face in the tail to hide my embarrassment. She didn't respond for a while, so I just continued to hold on to her tail, at least until the darkness around us started to lighten up a little. Oh no. Ovia suddenly shouted. I I spent tea too long here. What? I am sorry. She freed me from her tails and stood up. I I was supposed to pee prepare. No. I instinctually reached up and grabbed her arm. Not yet. Please. I'm not ready. B but I need to prepare for tea today. Today? I I thought you were V visiting today. There was a slight tremble in her voice. A are you not? No. I interrupted her. I just. I'm not ready. Just a bit longer. Please, you um, I see can't. Oh, I pushed it too far. B because why you are about to W wake up, she added in a panic. I can't do anything about that. Okay. I let go of her arm and fell to my knees. S C U S soon then, she waved at me before disappearing from view, leaving just me and the endless black expanse behind. I knelt there, motionless, as the chill that once filled the space gradually vanished telling me that this dream was truly coming to an end. My eyelids slowly opened, revealing the familiar wooden ceiling of the inn. I don't know. I silently cursed at myself after that thought went through my mind. Even after Ovia visited me in my dreams, I still didn't know what to do. What do you want to do right now? I thought back to Ovia's question. I want to see you again. She said I could visit today. I slid myself out of bed and pulled the curtains back for the first time in days. I expected sunlight to flood the room immediately, but instead, what greeted me was the moon hanging high in the sky. It doesn't matter what time it is. It's still today, she said today. Umbra? 
I called out, yet they responded as they climbed out of my shadow. Can I have my dress? Without making any noise, Umbra brought the dress out and placed it down on the bed. Thank you. I got changed as quickly as I could, just taking some extra time at the end to pat down my tail to make sure there wasn't any fur poking out haphazardly. All right, I said, turning towards Umbra once again, take everything. I don't know if I'll be back. Yep. Umbra responded. It was strange for Umbra to talk back to me like that, but yes, just please. Umbra didn't respond after that and just took everything from the room into my shadow immediately, leaving it looking just as it had the first time I was brought here. I sat on the windowsill in silence for a minute, just contemplating what I was about to do. I. No. Not again. Thank you. For everything. I. I. Tears started forming in my eyes once again, I'm sorry, I need some time, I, I just need some time. I made my way out of the inn through the window because I didn't want to risk running into Ava or Reino, not when I was like that. I don't know, I don't know why, why I'm like this, I just, I'm sorry. Chapter 46, Come In, Please. That word repeated over and over in my mind as I tried my hardest to block out any other thought. Please. I quickly made my way through the familiar streets, deciding to slip through the more dangerous back alleys to get there just a little faster. Please. It wasn't long before I stood in front of the large black stone door of Ovia's temple. Please. I pushed against the door with all the strength I could possibly muster, but it didn't budge. It might as well have just been a wall. Please. Thud. My foot slipped from under me, and I fell onto the cold, hard stone below. Please. Just. Let me in. Nothing. Not even a sound, neither from inside nor outside. Please. I picked myself off of the ground using the door as a support. Looking down, there was now a gash stretching from my knee down my shin. I tried to push myself off of the door, but my leg just couldn't take the weight, forcing me to lean back against the door. Please. Just. Please. I. I don't know. The all too common feeling of tears falling down my cheeks came back, I don't know what time. Supposed to do. Still nothing. For the first time in a long time, I felt. Alone. I. Thought I was used to this. The tears only got worse, showing no signs of letting up. A small pool of blood started to form beneath my foot as the pain in my shin started to flare up. Strangely. The pain drew my eyes to be drawn towards the black ribbon still tied around my wrist. She's not. The realization of what I had just done continued to sink in. There was no Ava to heal my leg, no Raynal to help me open the door. It was just me. Just like it used to be. What's wrong with me? My tears started mixing with the still fresh blood as they continued to cascade off my face and onto the stone below. What am I supposed to do? Then, without warning, the door pulled away almost causing me to fall again. Oh, come on. Who is it? Benny poked his head at from behind the door, immediately cutting himself off as his eyes fell on me. Oh, it's you. What are you doing here? I guess your visit was supposed to be today. But is it not a bit early? I just looked up at him, unable to say anything. Wait, why are you out here alone? Have you been crying? What happened to he stopped himself again as his eyes slowly moved downwards, just come in. Luckily, I'm not alone right now. He gestured for me to go in, but my leg still wasn't able to take my weight. Please. Using the door as a support, I took a single step, being careful not to slip on the pool of blood beneath me. However, as soon as I took that step, I was lifted up into the air by a chain that was coiled up beneath me. If it hurts, just say so, alright? Don't try to do everything yourself. Benny said as the chains beneath me carried me into the temple. I, I didn't even know what to think after hearing him say that. The temple seemed a little different from the last time I had been there, it was just a little brighter than before. In addition, some of the pews had been removed, and in their place was a single round table surrounded by a few chairs and topped with a bottle of a dark red liquid that was probably wine. Sitting in one of the seats was a woman with brown hair tied into a ponytail, though that was far from what stood out about her. In the darkness, her golden eyes made her resemble a lighthouse, lighting up whatever she was looking at. It was almost funny to look at, so much so that it almost made me forget why I was there in the first place. Selica, we've got a guest who could use some help. 
Benny called out. I was immediately cast in the spotlight as Selica turned her attention towards me. Oh my, is that the little Kitsune? Are you doing okay? Have your growing pains come back? Oh no, what happened to your leg? She tried to get out of her seat, but Benny gestured for her to sit back down as he brought me closer. He gently placed me down on Selica's lap as he sat just opposite the two of us. Have you been crying? Selica ran her finger across my cheek. Your eyes are a little red. Still not talking? Wait, that doesn't matter right now. Let's fix that leg of yours first. She didn't even hesitate before placing her hand on my bloody shin. The whole room was lit up as she used her magic, though, for some reason, it just didn't feel right to me. It's wrong. It's too clean. It's not. Ava, no. Stop. Stop doing this to yourself. It seemed that no matter how hard I tried, my mind was determined to remind me of just what situation I was now in at every possible opportunity. Is that better? Selica asked as she lifted her hand. My leg doesn't hurt anymore. But, I just nodded, not wanting her to ask any more questions. That's good. Benny spoke up, with the bottle that was on the table now missing. Now. Why are you here so early? I. I want to see. Her silence filled the room. Neither of them even reacted to me talking. They just sat there silently, staring at me. Why? What did I do wrong this time? I. I don't know. Please. How are you so adorable? Selica suddenly wrapped her arms around me. Is there some kind of secret? Can you tell me? Maybe it's. Cough unfortunately. You're a bit too early. Benny immediately interrupted Selica's line of questioning. The goddess is still preparing. I didn't say anything. I couldn't say anything. But. What else am I supposed to do? I. I don't know. Now. While you're waiting here. What has happened? I noticed your big friend isn't with you. I. I don't know. It, it's my fault. I did it. Ah. Uh, don't cry. Selika wiped my tears away with her sleeve. I might not be able to help with what's bothering you. I'm not very good at this kind of thing. You see. My magic doesn't work on the heart, or would it be the brain? But that doesn't matter at all, you've got the best possible person to talk to sitting right in front of you. She looked up at Benny, making him squint as the light shone directly into his eyes. Selica. Benny started to talk but was immediately interrupted. He's lived like, three whole lifetimes. Selica was moving around a lot, making her lap incredibly uncomfortable. I haven't. You must have. Selica interrupted Benny again, you've done way too much and have way too many stories for just one lifetime, so you must have lived more, that's the only explanation. Benny simply sighed in resignation as if he had been through this many times before and already knew that trying to argue any further would be pointless. I had an eventful life. Before I became an emissary. He sighed again, both the twin goddesses and Selica. Seem to like my stories. But that doesn't matter right now. What's going on with you, Ovia? Likes them. What? Stories does. She like. I asked. What about? No. If you don't want to talk about it, I can't force you. He sighed again. Well. She likes my stories from when I was an adventurer. She's always asking for more. Though I don't have too many. And don't get any new ones these days. Adventurer? Now that looks better. A slight smile spread across his face. What? Huh? You already stopped crying? It was that easy. Selica pulled me backwards into her chest and lifted my chin up, so she could see my face. You look much better when you're not crying. I knew Benny would be able to do it. I didn't do anything. You did. No. I. Whatever. See? Benny is good at this kind of thing. It's almost like his own unique magic. I. I don't know. I muttered, well, I don't know either. Benny leaned forward in his chair, you haven't told us anything yet. I want help but, I don't know. Well, I can tell you what I do know. No one has all the answers. There just isn't enough room in your head for all of them. I couldn't tell if that was an attempt at a joke or if he was serious, as his expression didn't change in the slightest. That's why we look for other people. They might know the answers we don't. Does that make sense? and you've got some alright company. You even know two goddesses. You just need to ask someone, but, I don't. I can't. They're not. I. No. I ruined it. I've already ruined it. What am I supposed to do? I. 
I want. Ooh, I like that. Selica shouted, interrupting my train of thought, can I use that one for myself? Have I ever said no? Benny responded, no, so. What do you think my answer is? Yes, yes, Selica. You can use it, great. Selica shouted straight into my ear, almost making me scream out from just how loud it was. Am I even supposed to be here? Now, now, Selica. Can you let go of the little fox? I think she is getting a little uncomfortable. Benny said as he gestured towards me. Oh no, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it, instead of letting me go. She squeezed me tighter before using her magic on me again, immediately making the pain in my ear disappear. Selica? Benny's voice was unusually stern. Ah. Fine. She pouted as she finally released me from her hug. Is that better? Benny asked. I nodded. I don't know which of you two is more of a handful. But. Back to what I was saying. If there is something you don't know. You just need to ask if we are too scary. I'm sure you could ask one of your friends. Or even one of the goddesses. I know at least one of them would drop everything if you asked for help. What? What does that mean? I don't. Understand. Why would the goddesses? So. Is there anything you want to ask? Is there anything either of us can help with? Is there anything I want to ask? I. What even? Is the problem I'm having? Why am I? I. 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 Don't know. Anymore. The words slipped out in between my sobs. I. I. What is. Wrong with me? Benny knocked his chair over as he got up and knelt down in front of me, grabbing both my hands. Whoa there. There's nothing wrong with you. Okay? I. I. He squeezed my hands just slightly. Just calm down. You're not alone. But. I am. And. It. It's my fault. I ran away. I left them. I. I ruined it. I. I. Please. No buts. You have the two of us here right now. Right? He glanced just over the top of my head as he spoke. That's right. Selica placed her hands on my shoulders from behind. Look. If there's something going on. You can always come here. Or you could go to the other temple if you're hurt. Though that might be a little harder. With how busy it is. Yes. You should visit more often. Even if nothing is wrong. But, I think the best people for you to talk to, would be your two friends. He squeezed my hands again, almost like he was worried I was about to pull them away. Those two care an awful lot about you. Maybe even a little too much. I still remember how our first encounter went. But, I, can't. I ruined it. I ran away. I can't. It's my fault. Oh, come on. Don't start crying again. You he was interrupted by the appearance of a small dark orb just next to his ear. All right, she's already here. I'll send her on her way soon. The orb vanished just as quickly as it appeared. Well, I'm sure you can guess. But the goddess is ready for you now. And I don't think you want to show her you crying. And no. I responded. All right. He wiped my tears away as I tried my best to stop them from flowing. Now. Go forget about whatever is bothering you for a bit. Just relax a little. Do you promise? I nodded. Good. I'll still be here after you come back. So if you feel like you want to talk afterwards, I will be ready and waiting. Both Benny and Selica then released me from their grasp so I could make my way further into the temple, into the darkness and towards Ovia once again. Chapter 47, I'm fine. Just, just follow the plan. That's, that's all you need to do. I continued walking into the darkness feeling the temperature around me fall with each step. But unlike the last time I walked this path, all it did was make me start to tense up. Don't ruin this, please. Just follow the plan. Give the gift. Tell her. I did what she asked me to. Show her the drawing. No. Don't hesitate now. Just follow the plan. It will work itself out. I just kept on walking, at least until I walked into something that was unexpectedly soft. Before I could even register what I had just walked into, my instinct was to take a step back, but as I did, I was immediately pulled back into it. H hello, K Kiera, I had accidentally walked into Ovia while I wasn't paying attention, W welcome back. I didn't want to say anything, just in case the wrong words came out of my mouth. I just hugged her back instead. I know I shouldn't. But, I want to stay like this. After a little while, Ovia gently pushed me away, 
forcing me to remove my arms from around her waist. Kay Kiera, wait. I interrupted Ovia. No, I. I need to follow the plan. I just need to follow the plan. I. I. Come on Kiera. Just. Give her the hair clip. Just follow the plan. I. I have. Even though I know what I wanted to say, I was still a little hesitant to actually say anything, just in case. I'm fine. I have to be fine. I can't worry her again. While I was struggling to speak, Umbra must have poked their head out as the small black box with the hair clip in it was quietly placed into my hand. I. Just do it. Giving up on trying to say anything, I just held the box out in front of me, hoping that Ovia would understand without me having to say anything. I is that FF for me? She asked, holding her hands out in front of her. I nodded, prompting her to take the box from me, cupping it with both of her hands. T thank you. Her voice got quieter as she spoke, I I don't know what to s say. She opened the box, her hands noticeably trembling as she did, revealing the hair clip inside. It was a fairly simple, narrow white barrette, but on one side, there was a large black nine-tailed fox curled up and sleeping peacefully, with a much smaller white fox, with only a single tail, sleeping on top of them. The design was small enough that even from a small distance, it would be a little difficult to make out what it was. I made the design both small and simple intentionally so that Ovia could wear it without being embarrassed. And then, just maybe, she could wear it a little more often because of that. Ovia didn't say anything as she looked at the hair clip. Was that not good enough? What was I thinking? Giving a hair clip to a goddess. Of course that's not good enough. I. Why did I? You um. CC can why you. She held the open box back out toward me. PP put it on for me. She said the last few words so quickly that I almost didn't understand what she was asking me. I nodded taking the hair clip from her as she leaned forward so that I could reach her head. I carefully put the clip on for her, using it to pull some of her hair away from her eyes. I'm done. My voice was so quiet that it would have been hard to even call it a whisper, but that didn't matter. Ovia clearly heard me as she immediately lifted her head back up. W what does it look like? She asked. Before I could even try to answer her, she flicked one of her tails, and a mirror emerged out of the darkness. I like it. She ran her fingers over the hair clip as she spoke. I stood and watched as Ovia looked at herself in the mirror. After a while, there was a slight flash of light the next to her ear, which made her stop. Oh oh. Why yes. Her eyes snapped to me, K. Kiera. In not yet. I interrupted her again. I knew that I shouldn't interrupt a goddess like that, but I needed to follow the plan. I just couldn't allow myself to make a mistake. I couldn't allow myself to make her worry again. What was next? Name. I did what she asked. I told someone my name. I need to tell her. I. I. I tried to tell her all about how I had managed to do what she asked me to, but every time I opened my mouth, I could feel tears starting to well up. Don't cry. I'm fine. I'm fine. Maybe I can. I can. Show the drawing instead. Then I don't need to talk. I reached behind me once again, and thankfully. Umbra understood what I wanted and promptly placed the notebook in my hand. I quickly flipped through the pages until I landed on the page with a drawing of Ava and Raynal sleeping together. A are you? Ovia started to ask. I'm fine. I nodded, wiping my face just in case some tears had fallen without me knowing. I'm fine. Name. I turned the notebook around and pointed at the drawing. I told them. My in name. Each word was a struggle and I could feel the pressure behind my tears building with each word. It had already gotten to the point where it was painful to hold them back, making it even harder to keep myself in check. I'm fine. I can hold it in. I can't ruin this. Ovia turned her attention to the drawing, leaning in a bit closer. At least, that's what I thought she was doing. Why you did it? She suddenly fell to her knees and embraced me. See congratulations. I wanted to say something to her. But I knew the moment I opened my mouth, I would just end up wetting her shoulder instead. I'm fine. I have to be. Right at that moment, the room brightened up, revealing Arya standing at the entrance. Well done, I know that couldn't have been very easy for you, Arya said as she walked up to the two of us. I didn't respond to her. I had to focus, my breathing was steadily getting heavier and heavier as I continued to hold back my tears. Now, sister, 
she turned her attention to Ovia, I can see you're having a good time right now, but why don't we would get up off of the floor and go sit down. Ovia stayed quiet for a short moment but eventually relented, okay underscore. However, instead of releasing me from her grasp she lifted me up into into a princess carry as she stood up. Arya let out a small chuckle as I was lifted, though Ovia didn't seem to notice as she continued to carry me along with her. I I saw. Why you found the chair awkward l last time. T these are nicer. Awkward? I guess. Chairs are a little uncomfortable. Because of my tail, but. Isn't that normal? Instead of the two couches from the last time I visited there were what looked like several large round cushions, almost resembling bags filled with wool. Ovia awkwardly draped me over the smallest one, such that I was lying on my stomach with my tail pointing straight up. The cushion was much softer than I was expecting as just by lying there I slowly sank into it. Ovia checked that I was comfortable before both she and Daria sat on the two larger cushions in front of me. She won't tell you this, but she made the first one of these chairs herself when she was still just a little kid. Aria chuckled to herself. Eolaria. She kept complaining about how she just couldn't sit in such a way that her tail was comfortable no matter what she tried. So one day she locked herself in her room and the next she came out carrying one of these. Ovia's face slowly turned red as Arya continued to speak. The village elders weren't too fond of it, but she carried it around with her everywhere anyway. I sometimes wish I could see you doing that again, even back then I thought it was adorable. Why you don't need to tea tell her? Oh, but I do. After all. I still remember chasing you around trying to get you to make one for me. B but I I did. Yes you did. And I still have it. It was simply too precious to leave behind. What? Arya didn't say anything further and just smiled instead as Ovia became an even brighter shade of red. The whole situation caught me off guard, so much so that I almost managed to forget about my tears. Unfortunately, the pain in the back of my throat prevented me from forgetting completely. Alright, that's enough teasing you. Arya said as she clapped her hands together, today is supposed to be all about the little kitsune who came to visit after all. Oh. Eolaria look. Ovia pointed at the hair clip I had given her, Kakiera made it. F4. Me. I must say. It's very well made, Arya said as she turned towards me will I have to chase you around to get one for myself now? I still couldn't bring myself to say anything. But thankfully Ovia decided to speak up in my place. No. She shouted, before quickly quieting down. I it's. Special. It's. Mine. Only. Mine. Well that's a shame, I was really hoping to get my own personalized accessories. Maybe in the future. Though I can't wait too long. I want to have something I can show off when you eventually become famous. Are they doing this intentionally? Whenever I felt my tears were about to leak at the two of them would suddenly start talking about something else, distracting me, if only for a short while. No, it can't be. That. Doesn't make sense. S. She also drew us something. Ovia's eyes were full of expectation as she looked at me, clearly wanting me to bring the notebook out again. But, I don't know if I can. Hold myself back. I hadn't even decided if I was going to open the notebook again and my throat was already tensing up in preparation. I can't make her worry. I'm fine. I quickly opened the notebook, not checking the page that I had opened it to. I knew that if I looked at the drawing again it would be impossible to keep my cheeks dry. Silence. Neither of the goddesses spoke. What? What did I do wrong? In a panic. I turned the notebook around and saw the mistake I had just made. Instead of my drawing of Raynal and Ava sleeping, it was my drawing of Ovia with her arms outstretched. No. 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 The pages turned quickly as I hastily tried to cover up my mistake. As soon as I saw the slightest hint of a feather on the page I turned the book back around so that I couldn't see the drawing. Again, silence. I should have torn that page out. W.L. Arya stuttered but quickly recomposed herself, it's a very nice drawing, maybe I could ask you for my own drawing instead of an accessory. Ovia however, still didn't say anything and just stared at me. A mix of emotions that I couldn't name spread across her face. Sister? Even Arya seemed to be concerned about her, reaching out for Ovia's shoulder as she spoke, are you? However, her hand never reached Ovia's shoulder as she leapt out of her chair and over to me, hugging me again causing me to drop the notebook on the floor. This time though, 
instead of the comfort I felt before, her hug just made it harder for me to hold my tears back. Even though she was cruel to the touch, a warmth started to form in my chest. I'm fine, thankfully. I managed to hold it in, if only barely. Please. I have to be. I'm fine. While I was busy holding my tears back, Arya came over and picked up the notebook off of the floor, almost immediately flipping back to the drawing of Ava and Reino. I know I might have said this before, but truly, I'm glad you managed to find some good people. Even if it took a while, Arya's words caused me to freeze up. She probably didn't mean anything by it. But. That didn't matter. I. I know I made a mistake. My breathing immediately got faster. I don't need to be reminded. I already know. The tears I had been holding back so desperately were starting to force their way out. I'm sorry. I'm. 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 Not fine. The words just slipped out of my mouth, quickly followed by a cascade of tears that ran down Ovia's back. I'm not fine. I don't know what to do. I just. I don't know anymore. All right. All right. Just try to calm down. Arya had gotten off of her chair and was trying to wipe my tears away, although it didn't help very much as the tears just kept on falling. Why are you not fine? What's happened? No. Don't say anything. You can't make them worry. You can't. Don't do this. Please. I. I. Ran away. No matter how hard I tried, I just couldn't keep it in anymore. It hurt too much. Okay, let's start there then. Arya sat down on the ground. Why did you run away? I. I don't. I don't know anymore. I was scared. I. I. Help. Please. Help me. What do you need help with? If you tell us, I can assure you that we'll both do everything we can to help. And coming from a goddess that means quite a lot. What? Do I need help with? What? Do I even want? I. I don't know. Why don't I know? Why? Please. I. I. I want to go back. I want to go back. I didn't think it was possible, but my crying only got worse as I continued to speak. I made a mistake. Neither of the goddesses said anything in response, they just let me cry and cry and cry, until the tears eventually stopped flowing, even if it was only because I had no more tears left to cry. Sister, let me take over for a bit. Arya put her hand on Ovia's shoulder and pulled her back. You can go and get changed into something else. Okay, Ovia didn't say anything in response and just slowly let me go. As she stood up I saw that it wasn't just the back of her dress that had been soaked through with tears. I looked up at her face but she immediately covered her eyes before walking into a side room. Was she? Now that you've managed to calm down a little, Arya took a deep breath before continuing. You ran away, but now you want to go back? I nodded. Then why don't you go back? I'm sure. I can't. I interrupted her. And why do you think you can't? She responded almost immediately. In that short moment something started building up in my chest. And I just didn't have the strength left to hold it back. Because it's my fault. I did it. I got scared. I locked myself away. I ran away. I ruined it. It is all my fault. It was just. Me. I'm the one who ruined it. It's all my fault. And now I want to go back. I. I can't. It's my fault. Even with my throat burning the words just kept on flowing. Arya reached her hand out towards me, but I immediately pulled away. Don't you understand? They. They didn't do anything. They. I don't know why. But they. Never did anything. I'm the one who did it. It's my fault. I ruined it. I. I can't go back. I had to pause and take deep breath to stop myself from passing out, but still, I couldn't stop the words from spilling out, not. After I ruined it, they wouldn't want me back. It's all my fault. Right as I paused to breathe again, Ovia came back out from the darkness, now wearing a new dress. I, what am I doing? I couldn't bring myself to look Ovia in the eye after that. Even after everything she has given me, all the help she offered, I still ruined it. I wasted it. I'm sorry. It's my fault. Ovia immediately ran up to me as soon as I stopped talking. In that moment I knew I should move away. I knew I didn't deserve what was coming. But despite that, I just stood still as she fell to her knees and embraced me once again. What's wrong with me? If you could go back, would you? Arya came a little closer now that I was being held in place by Ovia. But they, if they allowed you to come back, would you go back? She almost immediately interrupted me. I. Am I allowed to? I. I want. I nodded. But. They wouldn't. I. 
I chose to run away. Why would they want me back? I asked. Well, I can't force you to go back. But, I don't want to see you left out on the streets again. But, no buts, I still feel at least partially responsible for what happened to you in the first place. There was nothing I could say in response to her. So, I want to propose a deal, just between me and you. Does that sound good to you? I nodded. She smiled in response. What I want to propose to you is a bet. She pulled up a panel. Although I wasn't able to see what was on it, if those two are willing to take you back, you will go back to them. But, but. She interrupted me again, if they don't. Which I don't think will happen. I will let you have a room at my temple. If you want I can even ask Selicate to start preparing the room right now. Does. Wait. Ovia suddenly interrupted, as she can have a room. At my tea temple. I, I have more rooms tea to spare. Alright then, if they don't let you back you can have a room in one of our temples. You can even choose which you would prefer. At the end of the day, I just don't want you back on those streets. I, I can't say no. I don't want to go back to the streets. Not again. I nodded. Thank you. She waved her hand and the panel that was in front of her glided through the air until it was floating just in front of Ovia. Now, I know it's a little early but I think it's time for you to go back. I'm sure you have a lot to think about right now, but I don't. No, I don't want to leave, but I don't want them to see me like this anymore. I've already done enough. Oh, okay. I, I'll go back. T then I, I'll send you back. Ovia loosened her hug just enough so that she could move her face in front of mine, B but, I I want to do it like T this. She tightened her hug again, but this time I could feel the darkness slowly climbing up my leg, telling me that it wasn't long before I was sent back. Just before I felt myself slip from Ovia's grasp I quickly wrapped my arms around her neck. Just, let me be a little selfish. I need it. With that last thought, I felt Ovia's presence disappear. Chapter 48 I don't understand. The air around me quickly warmed back up, but still, I held my eyes closed. Even if I couldn't feel Ovia between my arms anymore, I just wanted a little longer before I had to go back. Please. I. I. Just. Just stay there. It was Benny's voice, followed by the sound of a door slamming shut. It was impossible for me to deny that I was back in the temple any longer. I opened my eyes to find myself in a small room that I didn't recognize. The walls were made from the same black stone as the rest of the temple, although, unlike the main room, there were no candles, leaving the room in complete darkness. You came back sooner than I expected. My head instantly spun around to face Benny. Due to the lack of light in the room, it was easy to make out a slight red glow coming from his eyes that I hadn't noticed before. Once my eyes met him, he froze for a moment. You rise. Can you? He shook his head before continuing. Are you feeling a little better now? Am I? Feeling better? I. I guess. I don't. Have to go back to the streets. I. I can just stay here. But. Is that? I. Think so. I muttered. You think so? I guess that's a little better than when you arrived here this morning. He crouched down so his eyes were at the same level as mine. Now. Is there anything you want to talk about now? I did say I would be ready and waiting for when you came back. I. Don't know. Well. Now that you've had some time to think since the last time I asked. What don't you know? Maybe if you tell me, I can help this time? There was something about Benny, the way Benny spoke, that just made me want to respond, but I still wasn't sure what exactly to say. Even though I could feel that I had calmed down a bit, there was still too much going through my head. I, I can stay here now. I, I can talk to Benny about Ovia. I can ask as many questions as I want. I'm safe. I still have a roof over my head. I can still eat real food. I, I. But, I want, to go back. And where do you want to go back to? Benny immediately responded with another question, not giving me the time to recompose myself. To Ava. To Raynal. I didn't have to think about it. The words just came out. Back to that inn. Back. Back before I ran away. Before I ruined it. Please don't cry. Instead. Why don't you tell me why you want to go back? Cry? But I'm, not crying. I knew I wasn't crying. I couldn't be crying. My cheeks were still dry. There might not be any tears running down your face. But the look in your eyes. Your limp tail. And folded ears. 
All those little signs tell me that you are crying. At least on the inside. I have some experience with Kitsune after all. He chuckled to himself. You distracted me a little there. Now. Can you tell me why you want to go back? Why? I want to go back? I. Just do. Benny didn't respond and just kept looking at me as if he was telling me that it was still my turn to speak. So I just kept talking, saying whatever came to mind. I. I miss my bed. I miss Ava's cooking. I miss. I miss Reno. I miss when she would give me her food even if she went hungry afterwards. When she would sleep on the floor next to me so I wasn't alone. I miss Ava always trying to brush my tail. Always talking to me, even if I didn't respond. There was a tightness in my chest as I struggled to get out the last few words. I. I just. I don't want to be left alone anymore. Again, Benny didn't say anything. But unlike last time, he reached out to put a hand on my shoulder, letting the chain from the shackle on his wrist drape down my arm. To my surprise, the chain wasn't heavy at all. If it weren't for the familiar chill coming from it, I probably wouldn't have even noticed it was there. It sounds like you've figured it all out yourself. It just took a little push. He got up off the floor and headed for the door. Well, guess that means I should, but I interrupted him. I can't go back. He froze once again, clearly taken aback. Why do you think that? He asked as he awkwardly turned around to face me. Because they. They wouldn't want me back. I. I don't know why. But they. They never did anything bad to me. I don't know why, but they helped me. What I was feeling at that moment wasn't sadness anymore. It was. Anger. Anger directed solely towards myself. Then I ran away. I left. I threw it all away. I. I did it. Why would they take someone like that back? It could just happen again. I. I just. But. Would it happen again? No. I immediately responded. I. I wouldn't do it again. I. Don't want to be. I wouldn't make that mistake again. I couldn't. Then I don't see a problem. He placed one hand on the door handle. Does that mean if they let you go back with them? You would? Yes. I promised. You promised? He looked confused for a moment but seemed to quickly understand what I meant. Oh, I see what's happened. Well, if you didn't make that promise then, would you go back to them? Would I even deserve to? They, they wouldn't want me back anyway. But, if, just, if they, could I? I nodded. I think, it's time for you to get up off of the floor. He pushed the door open letting in the little light coming from the candles in the main room. I don't think we should keep them waiting much longer. Keep who waiting? Benny quickly stepped out of the room, making sure to hold the door open for me as he did. I slowly lifted myself up onto my feet. My legs were a little shaky, but I managed to stay upright as I shuffled towards the open door. I managed to make it to the door frame, where a beam of light almost immediately shone directly at me. The light had come from Selica turning my way. She started saying something, but I couldn't hear her. My attention was instead being taken up by what I saw behind her. Selica had her hands delicately placed on top of a large black feathered wing, a slight glow coming from them just like when she healed my leg, following the wing back to the body. There was a girl with black hair and purple eyes who had clearly been crying just moments before. Next to her sat a tall woman with bright blue eyes and purple hair that reached down to her shoulders. Is that? No. No. It can't be Dot. I know it can't be. But. I took a step forward and their eyes immediately locked onto me. What if? I forced myself to take another step, the trembling in my legs only getting worse. I know. I don't deserve it. I could see the light reflecting off of their tears. But. Am I allowed to have? I tried to take another step, but my legs gave out beneath me. Just a little hope. I closed my eyes and braced myself for the fall. However, there was no thud. There was no pain. I am sorry. I'm so sorry. I I. It was all my fault. Please. Guerra. Please don't run away. Please come back. I'm sorry. Is it really you? I. I. I opened my eyes to see Ava sprawled out on the floor beneath me. Her face wet with tears and eyes red as can be. It's not your fault. It can't be your fault. I. I. I couldn't find the right words to say. So instead, I let myself fall against her chest and wrapped my arms around her in a hug. It's warm. It's so warm. Both Benny and Selica rushed over to make sure neither of us was hurt, while Raynal still stood a few steps back. However, even from that distance, 
I could see that her eyes were a little red, and her jaw was clenched shut. It was the first time I had ever seen her like that. What are you doing? Selika shouted, quickly sitting Avian up and putting her hands back on her wing. What if you injure your wing again? She injured her wing. How? What happened? I instinctively reached out towards her wing, but Ava stopped me. It's fine. I just knocked it against the door frame when I left the inn. You. You don't need to worry about it. Ava was unable to hold back her tears as she spoke. Just. I'm sorry. Please. Please don't leave. Because of what I did, I can't. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. If you have to blame someone, I tighten my hug on her to stop her from finishing what she was saying. Don't say that. It's my fault. I know it was my fault. Don't blame yourself. You didn't do anything. Ava immediately stopped talking and instead brought me in closer to her chest. Eventually, Benny had to separate the two of us so that it was easier for Selica to check Ava's wings and ensure they were all right. Benny lifted me up before setting me back down on my feet. However, as soon as he did, I started to fall, completely unable to put any strength into my legs. Thankfully, he noticed quickly and caught me. You with the purple hair. Isn't this your job? Benny called out while still holding me up. Raina came over and picked me up. Yet she didn't say anything. She didn't even look me in the eye. Do I have to guide you every step of the way? Benny sounded more and more annoyed as he spoke, although none of it was directed towards me. Don't just stand there. Talk to the poor girl. How else are you expecting anything to happen? Raina looked down at me, letting me see just how desperately she was holding back her tears. What? Did I do wrong? Her voice was so quiet that I was probably the only one who could hear her. Nothing. I responded just as quietly. She didn't say anything. I. I want. Can I? I tried to speak, but the words were getting caught in my throat. Can you what? She asked, her voice slowly getting both louder and more desperate. I. I'll do what can. Just. Am I even allowed to ask? But. I. I want to. Can I. Come back? Yes. The tears that Raynal had so desperately been trying to hold back finally started to flow. Yes, of course you can. You can always come back. I I'll. I'll never turn you away. Not today, not tomorrow, not ever. You couldn't know how scared I was when I saw your room empty. I just. Why do you care so much? Why? Why do you always care so much? I don't understand. But. I. Thank you. Thank you so much. I. I want to go back. I don't know where they came from, but I somehow managed to cry a few tears of my own in that moment. I just want to go back. Yes, yes. As soon as Ava's wing is healed up. Let's. Go back. Just like with Ava before, she was sobbing as she talked. Let's go. Let's go home. To our new home. I. I saw you already packed. Isn't that. It's funny how these things work out sometimes. She tried to put on a smile as she finished talking, but it was clear that she was just trying to stop herself from crying any more than she already had. I nodded. I didn't care about a new home. I just didn't want to throw this away. I didn't want to make this mistake again. It didn't take much longer until Selica declared that Ava's wing was perfectly fine. I guess. It's time for us to go home. Raynal took Ava under her free arm. Just wait a second. Benny came over to us, holding out two cloaks, one for me and one for Ava. I think you're forgetting something. Thank you. For this. And everything else. Rhino responded as she took the cloaks from Benny before putting them on us. I'm sorry for before. If you're sorry, you can make up for it by taking care of your little ones. I will. Of course I will. With that last comment, Rhino carried me out of the temple with Ava still held close at her side. I don't understand it. And, I know I don't deserve it, but. Thank you. Thank you for this. For everything. Thank you. For taking me back. I mumbled as I nuzzled in towards Raynal's chest. Chapter 49, Another Chance. It's soft. It's thud. My eyes immediately shot open. I was lying on the floor, cocooned inside a blanket that I hadn't seen before. Looking around, I didn't recognize the room at all. It was much smaller than the one at the inn. There was a bed, a side table, and a wardrobe, all of which looked brand new. Where am I? Where's Ava? Raynal. Their names weakly escaped my dry mouth. Seemingly in response to my faint cries, there was a loud thud, followed by loud stomping, 
getting louder and louder with each stomp until the door in front of me flew open. Guerra. Rhino burst into the room, and immediately, her eyes locked onto me. What happened? Ava, drop whatever you're doing and come here. Quickly, she leaned down and lifted me into her arms, keeping me wrapped tightly in the blanket. Where? I tried to ask, but my voice was still faint. SHH, don't push yourself. Rainel put her finger to my lips, I've got you now. Ava came into the room soon after, looking a little ragged with large dark circles painted around her purple eyes. What happened? She shouted stumbling a little as she came up to Raynal and me. I don't know. I think she rolled off her bed. I found her on the floor when I came in. Raynal said as she knelt down so it was easier for Ava to reach me. Just do what you can. My bed? But. I don't know this place. Ava's hands glowed with the familiar soft light of her healing magic, her usual smile contorting slightly as she placed her hand on my forehead. Ava. You. I wanted to reach my arm out towards her. To tell her that I was fine, that she didn't need to push herself, but the blanket trap around me held my arms firmly in place. Ava. As the word left my mouth, I saw a little panic on Raynal's face, but I kept trying to speak anyway. I'm. Okay now. It. Doesn't. Hurt. Ava paused for a second, though she didn't stop using her magic. I. Need to make sure. I. Just. Please, let me do this. Her voice dropped a little more than a whisper, I still need to make up for what I did. My heart tightened hearing her say that. I knew that it was something that I wasn't meant to hear, but still, I just couldn't help but feel guilty. Yet despite that, I couldn't find any words to say to her. So instead, I stayed silent, letting Avo continue to try to heal me if that would make her feel a little better. I'm sorry. Raynal ultimately stepped in to stop Ava when her hands started shaking. Ava, why don't you go lie down for a bit? You could really use the rest. You haven't slept properly since. No, I'm fine. I, I still need to finish cooking dinner, and it's getting late. The last time Kier ate. I don't know, but she must be hungry. Ava shuffled out of the room, her wink colliding with the doorframe as she did. Ava. Raynal turned away from the door instead walking over to the bed and laying me down. Well, I guess you can look forward to dinner in a bit. Isn't that good? What's going on? This. This isn't what I remember. What about Ava? Shouldn't you stop her? Don't worry so much. You'll start getting wrinkles around your eyes like me. Raynal chuckled slightly, though even I could tell that it was far from sincere. Are you okay? I asked. Mm, oh. Yes, I'm okay. Just. A little tired. Ava too as you could probably see. Poor girl, her eyes seemed to glaze over for just a second before she suddenly came back to life, B but don't think it's your fault, it's. Um. Ah, we spent the last few days moving our stuff over here from the inn, buying all the new stuff we needed, and cleaning. A lot of cleaning. You wouldn't believe how much cleaning the two of us have done the last few days. Her sudden outburst made me jump a little. The movement made the blanket around me loosen just enough that it slid off of me, sending a slight chill through my body as the air surrounded my skin. Raynal's eyes widened. Is it cold? Do you need me to wrap you up again? She grabbed the blanket, her hands trembling just slightly. I slowly lifted my hand to meet hers. I'm fine. Are you sure? You need to tell me, all right? I don't. I don't want you to. The pain in my heart came back in full force as Raynal spoke. It's, I'm sorry. I, I just, I'm sorry. I can't. Where are we? I asked, trying to distract Raynal and myself so that I could try and escape the feeling in my chest, even if just for a brief moment. This. She paused for a moment before sitting down on the bed next to me. This is our new home. Your new home, Kiera. She brushed some of my hair out of my face. This is your room from now on. We even left a gift in your wardrobe. Though we can save that for when you are feeling a bit better, alright? MHM. Good. Then for now, just relax a bit. I'm sure Ava will have dinner ready soon, and then after that, you can get a proper night's rest. I think you really need it, she said, standing up and walking over to the door. I'll just go check up on Ava. When she's finished cooking, I'll come and get you, okay? I nodded, watching as the door closed behind her. As soon as she was out of sight, my body relaxed, although my mind did anything but. I'm really back. They, they really took me back. It's 
different, but. They're here. They're here with me. I. I. Not again. I can't. I can't throw this away. This. This might be. Another chance. I felt my tear ducts squeeze, but nothing came out. I'm. Thirsty. My voice grew more hoarse with each word. It took a little while, but I eventually managed to sit myself up and notice that a glass of water had been left on the side table next to me. They. How? Do they always know what I'm thinking? I picked the glass up and drank. A sense of relief washed over me as the cool liquid quickly soothed my parched throat. Right as I finished drinking, there was a knock on the door, followed by Raina letting herself in. Kiera, dinner's ready, she said as she walked up to me. If you need me to, I can carry you to the table, or if that's too much, I can bring your food here, and you can eat on your bed. Just like she stopped herself cupping her hand over her face as if she was about to say something she shouldn't. I, slowly, I slid myself off the bed, landing on my feet but wobbling just a little. I'll walk. I muttered. While my throat wasn't as dry anymore, my voice was still weak. Raynal immediately grabbed my hand and pulled me close to her. I know it's not far, but if you need to, you can always lean on me. I can take it. I nodded as I took my first few steps shakily making my way out of my room and into a short hallway. There were three other doors in the hallway that had been left open. The room next to mine was another bedroom, and on the other side of the hallway was both the bathroom and kitchen. It's just to your left, okay? Raynal used her free hand to turn me towards the dining room, where Ava was already sitting with her head against the table. I made my way over to the table, almost falling once, but luckily, Raynal caught me and got me back on my feet before anything actually happened. Once I got to the table, Raynal lifted me up and placed me in the chair next to Ava. This is why I told her to get some rest. She sat down before gently poking Ava's shoulder. Hey, are you going to eat now? Or do you want me to carry you to your bed? Ava lifted her head from the table and looked around before picking up the fork next to her plate. I'll eat. She stabbed her fork into the steak in front of her bringing the entire piece of meat to her mouth. Ava, come on, just give that to me. I'll help you out. Raynal took the fork from Ava before cutting her steak into smaller pieces. Guerra, do you want me to do the same for you? I shook my head as I picked up my own knife and fork and started eating. The food was just as good as it always was, seemingly disappearing as soon as I took my first bite. Just leave your plate on the table, I'll sorted out in the morning. I think all of us could use a good night's sleep right now, don't you agree? Rinal said as she jostled Ava again, you can head to your room by yourself, or you can wait for me to get Ava in bed, and I'll carry you there. I'm just a bit worried about leaving her like this right now. I'm fine. Ava stood up before awkwardly shuffling down the hallway while mumbling under her breath, just worry about her for now. I'm fine. The speed at which she disappeared into the bedroom next to mine was surprising considering her state. Well, let's get you in bed as well then. Raynal picked me up, wiping away some stray crumbs from around my mouth. She took me back into my room, laying me down on the bed and tucking me in while making sure I was comfortable in the new bed. Just focus on getting some sleep for now. She brushed some hair out of my face. If you need anything, I'll be sleeping next door. Okay, don't be afraid of waking me up. I nodded, and Raynal left the room soon after. Once she was gone, Umbra came out of my shadow and snuggled under the covers with me, gently purring as they did. I wrapped my arms around Umbra before closing my eyes and trying to sleep, but I just couldn't. Whenever I closed my eyes, a looming feeling of dread washed over me, a fear that as soon as I opened my eyes again, everything would be gone. I'd be back on the streets, alone. After throwing everything away, having Umbra in my arms helped a little, but no matter what, that feeling just wouldn't go away. I need to make sure. I got out of my bed and made my way down the short hallway, with Umbra following close behind me, until I stood in front of the door to the room. They should be there. Behind this door, I brought my hand up to knock but couldn't actually bring myself to. What if they're not? 
here, my body stiffened at the idea. What if this was just a dream? What if I really did ruin everything? What if I was abruptly taken out of my thoughts by the sound of some light scratching? My heart sank as I saw Umbra clawing at the door. Before I could do anything about it, the door opened. What happened Kiera? Raynal poked her head out, keeping her voice down. Is something wrong? The panic in her voice was subtle but unmissable. I don't know what came over me at that moment. It was as if my mouth started moving on its own. Can I sleep with you? Raynal didn't even wait a second before responding. Yes, of course you can. Guerra, if that's what you want, you can come to sleep with me whenever you want. Even in the dark, I could see the relief spread across her face as she spoke to me. Is your little friend also going to join us? She pointed at Umbra. I didn't respond. I wanted Umbra to sleep with me as well, but I didn't know if that would be okay. I thought I told you to stop worrying so much, hey? She crouched down, patting Umbra on their head. It's fine if they want to sleep on the pillows just above us. I nodded, and she immediately picked me up, carrying me into the room before laying down in her bed with me still in her arms. Umbra curled up just above my head as Raynal tucked me in. Are you comfortable? Just, don't leave me out. Ava slowly clambered out of her own bed, making her way across the room. It's not fair if you keep the fluff to yourself mom. She fell right next to me on the bed, instantly falling asleep as her head hit the pillow. I guess we've got some extra company tonight, Raynal chuckled a little. I hope you don't mind. I, don't mind. I said as I brought my tail around in front of me and hugged it. All right. Then I'll see you in the morning Guerra. Sweet dreams. I closed my eyes, and unlike before, I didn't feel the fear that this would all disappear. I could hear their breathing. I could feel their heat on either side of me. I knew they were right there with me, that I wasn't imagining it. Thank you. I whispered into my tail as I drifted off to sleep. Chapter 50 a worried goddess. Ovia Puff. Did I do the right thing? What if? No. I can't think like that. I need to. What exactly do I need to do? My hand reached up to my hair clip by itself, my fingers gliding across the smooth surface as my mind raced, considering everything that I could have done differently. I quite like what the little kitsune did with your hair, Alaria said as she came up behind me. She might have a hidden talent that she doesn't even know about. H. How are you and not worried? I asked, my hands starting to shake. What do you mean? She sat down next to me, placing one of her tails in my lap. Did I do the all right thing? What if s she gets hurt again? I instinctually ran my fingers through Hilaria's tail. M maybe I should have kept her H here. W what if it goes wrong again? Hilaria pulled me into a hug before she responded. You sound more and more like that little kitsune every time she visits. She chuckled slightly. I know you were watching when they took her back, but... I interrupted, W what if? Oh, sister, what are you so worried about? You know she's a smart girl. Even if the worst were to happen, she would be able to take care of herself. W what about the other T2? What if they see change? And why do you think they would change? She asked, a confused expression spread across her face. Be because K. Kiera ran away, I buried my face in Alaria's tail. W what if they feel? Be betrayed, sister. The little kitsune was only away from them for a few hours, she gently lifted my face out of her tails, they're not going to suddenly hate her or anything because of that. You've seen how they have treated her. You know that they are good people. I just don't want H her to get H hurt. And not again, tears started welling up in my eyes. I I already did that tea to her before. I see can't let it happen again. Alaria didn't respond and just let me cry into her shoulder until I eventually tired myself out. Sometimes I think you care about that little kitsune a little too much, she said, lifting me off her shoulder. Why don't you start worrying about yourself just as much? You know, it's hard for me to help you if you suddenly choose to be silent. But I don't know what to say. I just can't help but worry about her. Alaria's expression softened. All right, let's try talking about something else then. How about what do you want to do the next time the little kitsune comes to visit? What do I want to do? I, I want to make her happy, not like this time. I don't want to watch her cry like that again. I, I want to um, make her smile. I blurted out. There you are. Alaria once again pulled me into a hug. 
that's more like the little sister I remember. B but we're twins. She just laughed in response, jostling me around a bit as she did. You should show this cute side of yours to the little Kitsune. I'm sure she'd love it just as much as I do. But I'm a goddess. I can't show her that. Sister, I can almost hear your thoughts, she said. I really can't wait until you finally break out of your shell so everyone else can see just how adorable you are. I couldn't help but blush at her words, B but I'm not. But you are. She ran her fingers through my tail, making me flinch. I'm sure if that little Kitsune called you adorable, you wouldn't argue back like this. If Kiera. What if she did? What should I? And no, I'm a G goddess. I am not a adorable. Why can't you be both? Alaria asked her hand moving to another one of my tails. Why can't I be both? I just can't. I stood up in order to stop Hilaria from playing with my tails. I am the G goddess of darkness and D dreams. I am not supposed to be adorable. Sister, I think you forgot something. You're not just the goddess of darkness and dreams. Hilaria chuckled. What about? No, not that. At that moment, my heart started to race, and I leapt towards Hilaria knocking her off the chair and cupping my hands over her mouth to stop her from speaking. Why you're not supposed to say it? I shouted, panicking, W what if someone is listening? If that got out, what would I do? I I can't let anyone know. Alaria slowly pushed my hand away. I really don't know how you've managed to keep it a secret for so long. Somehow, I'm still the only person who knows. T that's because. Maybe I should tell the little Kitsune. She interrupted me. I'm sure she would love to know. I could tell that she was just trying to tease me, but the idea was instantly lodged inside my mind. What if I told her? No. No, I can't do that. But what would she think about it? Maybe. And no, I mumbled. Don't you tell her. Ah, uh, that's a shame. I just know that she would. I I'll de do it. I interrupted Hilaria, surprising even myself with what I said. Eventually, Jay just not yet. She just stared back at me in silence. Not a word came out of her mouth. Was that wrong? Why aren't you saying anything? I tried to decipher her expression but just couldn't. Ilaria? I called out to her, my voice shaking. Oh, in that moment, she suddenly came back to life. I'm sorry. I was just surprised. I didn't expect you to actually want to tell her. That's. But it's a welcome change. She put her finger up to my lips, so now I'm going to hold you to your word. One day you need to tell the little Kitsune all about it. I I will, I muttered to myself, pouting a little. T that's what I said I would do after all. Alaria chuckled a little as she picked herself off the floor. Just think of it as some insurance. She extended her hand out to me. I'll be there to remind you just in case you ever forget. I took her hand, and she pulled me up to my feet. Now. Why don't you go freshen up a bit? Alaria turned me towards the side room. Your eyes are still a little red from when you were crying just now. W-Y? I turned back. I it's just you H here. It's a fine if you see M me like this. Well, if you're going to pay a visit to a certain someone's dream, I'm sure you would want to look your best. What? But why would I? Be but you T told me not to visit her T too often? I gave her a puzzled look so she didn't de depend on me t too much. I I remember, sister. That doesn't mean you can never see her. I was just telling you not to visit her every night, or every other night for that matter. She cupped her hand against my cheek. You can still go check up on her every so often, just like what you did for her last night. You didn't need my permission then, so why do you need it now? Why? I I just... Don't want to M make a mistake again. There was a brief pause before Hilaria spoke again. You two are more similar than I thought. What do you? Now, hurry up. She's already fallen asleep. Hilaria interrupted me by pushing me into the side room. And before I forget about it, I thought I told you to call me either Aria or Big Sis. Before I could respond to her teasing, she closed the door behind me. I should get ready quickly. I quickly washed my face and changed into a new dress making sure there weren't any visible creases. Hey, all right, let's do this, I said to myself before flicking one of my tails. Soon, a spirit appeared in front of me, taking on the form of a small fox. They had deep black fur similar to my own, but unlike mine, their fur had this slight blue sheen to it. Ovia, why did you call me? I was just about to the little fox paused as they looked me up and down. Oh, 
Come on, I thought I was going to check on her tonight. You got to go last night. The spirit's outburst surprised me. I had asked them to check on Kiera in her dreams every so often just to make sure she was okay. Back when I did, she had a similar outburst. Although she complained about me suddenly calling her and giving her work to do instead. Araya I. Look, it's fine. I can already guess why you want to see her yourself. She interrupted, but I get tomorrow night. And that's non-negotiable. Before I could even respond, she had already disappeared. I just wanted to tell her she could take a break today. I tried to call her again, but she didn't respond. I, I don't know how to tea talk to her. If she refused to answer my call. There wasn't much I could do, so I decided it would be better to shift my focus to Kiera instead. I took a second just to check that she had actually fallen asleep before flicking my tail once again. It wasn't long before I found myself in the familiar black void of Kiera's dream. Maybe one day, there will be something else here. I couldn't help but feel guilty. Ever since I first entered her dreams, there had never been more than this large empty void reminiscent of my own domain. Is there really nothing you dream about? I carelessly let my inner thoughts escape from my lips. Almost immediately, I heard a shuffle in the distance, followed by hurried footsteps quickly approaching me. Ovia? I heard Kiara call out to me just before she slammed into me, wrapping her arms around my waist. K. Kiara. I reached down to pat her head, but before I could, she looked up at me. Thank you. Thank you so much. I just stood there, unsure of how I was supposed to respond. They. They took me back. They as she stopped herself I heard a hint of reluctance in her voice. They really took me back. Right? It wasn't a dream. Did it really happen? You poor girl. I. Seeing Kiara doubting what had happened tore at my heart, yet I couldn't chastise her for it. Not after having seen everything she had been through. Why yes. I placed my hands on her shoulders and pulled her in closer. Yes it did. did. Why you're sleeping with T them right now? I choked back my own tears as I tried to reassure her. I, I can assure you, as the G goddess of D dreams, I it really happened, I it wasn't a dream. Kiara suddenly squeezed me a little tighter, thank you. After a brief pause, I knelt down so that I could hug her back properly. A are you happy now? I think so. I could hear that she was holding back tears as she responded. The fact that she couldn't say yes hurt a little, but it was much better than hearing her say no. I wrapped my tails around the two of us, hoping to make up for whatever was stopping her from being sure of her own happiness. The two of us stayed like that until Kiera eventually woke up, leaving me back in the side room by myself, still able to feel the warmth that came from her lingering in my arms. I picked up my Kiera plushie before deciding to make a promise to myself, oh, one day, you will say why yes. I ran my fingers through the plushie's soft fur, I I'll make sure of it. Chapter 51 a peaceful day. After that night, time seemed to pass by quickly. Raynal was back to her usual self in only a few days. Ava was the same. After a few days, she seemed to come back to life, although she felt just a little more distant than I remembered. That isn't to say everything else was exactly the same as before. The biggest thing that changed was that the two of them stopped pushing me to speak like they used to. However, I still tried my best to talk to them in spite of that. Even if it was hard, just because whenever I did, their eyes seemed to light up. The other thing that started soon after I arrived at the house was Raynal and Ava heading out somewhere every few days without me. Ava always came back panting while drenched in sweat. I tried asking them what they were doing a few times, but each time, Raynal would try to change the topic while Ava would go silent. The only time that I left the house was to go visit Ovia at the temple. When I did neither Raynal nor Ava would let me go by myself, so they would follow me there in the morning before collecting me in the evening. They started using the time while I was with Ovia to go shopping for the week, so they didn't mind taking me every week. Well, I say they, but Raynal was always the one who went with me. The peaceful days continued. And before I knew it, a month had already passed. Kiera, are you sure you got enough sleep last night? Raynal asked, bringing me out of my thoughts. I sat at the table, breakfast already laid out in front of me. A plate piled high with pancakes. Or, more accurately, Ava's first attempt at pancakes. Their thickness was a little uneven and some parts were cooked slightly more than others, but I couldn't say that they looked bad. MHM. Just. Tired. 
I took a bite of one of the pancakes. Even if they didn't look perfect, they definitely tasted as if they were. So, you're telling me that you did get enough sleep, but somehow you're still tired? Raynal pointed her fork towards me as she spoke. I know you're excited for today, but you really need to stop staying up so late every time. Her comment made me blush a bit out of embarrassment. I decided not to say anything and just continued eating breakfast. I can't help it. I only get to see her once a week. Of course I'm excited. Breakfast quickly disappeared as the sun finally started to peek out from below the horizon. After finishing my last bite, I turned towards Ava. T thank you, Ava. I put my knife and fork down on the plate. It was good. I still need to practice talking more. Ava chuckled in response as she got up and collected our plates. I know it was good. I wouldn't give you something that I thought wasn't. But next time, I'll try for perfect instead of just good, alright? Those weren't perfect? Reno blurted out, how could they be any better? Just what kind of recipe did Anna give you? How long has she been hiding this from the world? Come on mom. Ava said with a smirk as she took the dishes into the kitchen, there's no need to overreact like that. I left the table almost immediately after that, heading into my room and digging through my wardrobe, looking for the dress I always wore when visiting the temple. Every time the wardrobe was opened, I was surprised at just how many clothes were inside. Raynal and Ava had bought extra clothes for me as a gift, though they never told me exactly what the gift was for. As soon as I found the black dress, I changed into it as quickly as I could before quickly brushing my tail down to make sure there weren't any stray hairs sticking out from pulling it through the flap. Kiera? Raynal knocked on my door. Are you ready to go? I opened the door and stepped out, showing her that I had finished getting dressed. The same dress again? She knelt down and adjusted the bow around the collar of the dress. Is there a reason why you always wear this dress when you go to visit? Is it the color? The style? Something else? I just like it, I responded, not wanting to admit the true reason, that every time I wore the dress, I was reminded of when Ovia wore a matching dress. Right at that moment, Ava stepped out of the kitchen, if she likes that dress, why not just get more of them? But I just know she would look great in so many other clothes as well. Rinal stood up, I just want to see her dressed up in all sorts of outfits. Is that so wrong? You don't need to lie like that. I know. That isn't true. Despite what was going through my mind, my face still went a little red from her words. Well, we can continue this conversation later, Rinal said, turning towards me. Let's get going. I know you prefer to get there early. My eyes instinctually drifted over to Ava. But what about? What's going on Kiera? Ava crouched down, are you wanting to go with me? MHM, I responded as I nodded my head. Well, I'm sorry but I can't today. I've got something I need to do. But. You always say that. Well, how about this then? She went into her room before coming back out with a ribbon that matched the one around my neck, albeit a little larger. Can you turn around for me quickly? I immediately did as she asked. Alright, this might feel a little strange, but. Just bear with me. As soon as she said that, I felt something tickle the base of my tail making me flinch involuntarily. However, the tickling didn't stop. Instead, it just kept on going until I eventually felt something close in around the base of my tail. And that's all done. Ava shouted as she spun me around. What do you think mom? I think it was a pretty good idea. Why? Didn't I think of that? Raynal muttered. It's absolutely adorable. I know. I've been looking for an excuse to try this with Kiera for a while. What did she do? I awkwardly looked over my back, barely catching a glimpse of a large bow at the base of my tail. I moved my tail a little, trying to get used to the sensation. I like it. I said, watching as the two loose ends of the ribbon fluttered along with the movement of my tail. I'm glad you do. Ava turned me around, adjusting the bow one last time. This is what I can do for you today, okay? I promise I'll go with you next week. If that's still what you want when we get there. I immediately nodded. Ava responded with a smile. Now, go along with mom. You're just wasting time you could be spending at the temple right now. Before I had the chance to say anything, Raynal scooped me up and took me out the door. Ava, we'll be back this evening. You can eat first if you want. Raynal stepped out letting the door swing closed behind her. Just before the door slammed shut, Ava yelled out, 
stop saying that. You know I'm going to wait for you too anyway, so instead, just make sure you're not late. Raynal just laughed in response before we made our way to Ovia's temple. At some point, Benny told us to use the hidden entrance at the back of the temple instead of the main doors. Apparently, someone saw Raynal dropping me off in the morning, which started some strange rumors around the city about what the temple was doing behind the scenes. Luckily, we both had the hoods of our cloaks up at the time, so the rumor didn't include our appearances. It was then that Benny decided it would be better to use the back entrance to stop the rumor from getting any worse before they hopefully died off. As soon as we arrived at the temple, the hidden door opened, with Benny already waiting in the doorway. You're a little later than usual today. Benny said as he laid eyes on me. I'm sorry. I responded instinctually. No I wasn't. One day I'll. He sighed, just. Head in. She's still getting ready. As usual. Go on then, Raynal nudged me into the temple. I'll be back in the evening, so remember to be good. I will. Raynal waved back before walking away. I followed Benny into the temple as the door closed behind us. As soon as we were in the main room, the two of us sat on the pew right at the front of the temple as if it were routine. Now, what story should I tell you today? Any preference? He asked. Benny started telling me his stories while I waited for Ovia to be ready every week, and sometimes, he would even tell an extra story when I came back in the evening if Raynal was running a little late. F from when you were an adventurer. I said meekly. Just like the goddess. He chuckled, maybe I need to see about becoming an adventurer again. It's all the two of you want to hear about. That is why I want to hear about those stories. It's what Ovia enjoys. Maybe one day i could well what should i tell you about this time i've told you a few tales about my solo adventures so how about something from a bit later on he smiled a little something from my very brief time as an instructor for the greenhorns i nodded immediately ha ha all right then this tale took place back when i was asked to take on a new party i was supposed to supervise them on their first hunt thinking back I don't know how I got that position. Hunts weren't really my speciality. With my dark magic, I was much better suited for as. No, no, you don't need to know about that part. Not yet at least. It was strange for Benny to stop himself like that in the middle of his story, but I didn't say anything. Anyway, this party wasn't the worst I had seen. They had a big guy with a shield up front. Someone who at least knew which side of the sword you're supposed to hold. They even had both the mage and a healer somehow. Though that mage wasn't the greatest, as you'll come to realize. They lugged around this large mace that was clearly much too heavy for them. But it wasn't my job to do anything about that. I just needed to make sure they would make it back alive. Didn't you say you were an instructor? It was a simple enough hunt. Nothing too dangerous. Just two of these large wolves that had been causing problems near the town. The request didn't even include anything about butchering them. No pelt, no bones, no teeth. Just proof of the gill. So perfect for a new party. Well, those higher up didn't think so, and they sent me with them as some kind of insurance. Now, to make a long story short, I'll just jump ahead to the interesting part. We're out in the forest facing down the two wolves. The two of them were scared out of their minds, but well. So were these greenhorns. Benny chuckled a little. The big guy said something like I'll protect all of you. Before tripping and falling face first into the ground. Honestly. Even those wolves seemed to be embarrassed. They didn't pay him any mind at all and went straight for those at the back. The lad with a sword stepped in and took the attention of one of them. Can't say he did much more than that though. But at least he was better than the big guy. He chuckled again, ah, that guy. This whole time he was just stuck there. The armor he was so proud of was a bit too heavy for him. He couldn't seem to get himself back up. PFFD even I couldn't hold back my laughter after hearing that. Now, the second wolf took the opportunity and jumped right at the healer. Luckily they swung their staff on instinct and knocked it clean out of the air. Was a very good hit too though it unfortunately wasn't enough to stop it completely. It quickly got back up and started snarling at her. It was almost as if it was now acknowledging her as a noteworthy enemy. But that's not what caught my attention. Standing far behind the rest was the mage. Scared beyond belief. Doing absolutely nothing. 
Benny's face contorted as he spoke, this annoyed me to no end, to put it lightly. I knew I didn't have to do anything but in the heat of the moment shouted at that mage to cast a spell or something. You know what they did after that? I shook my head. They slowly stumbled forwards, dragging that damn mace of theirs along the ground with them, tearing up the grass as they went. Even thinking back on it now, I'm getting ticked off. What's the point of being a mage if you don't use any spells? Benny paused for a moment before continuing, anyway. The healer dropped their staff in a panic and started running in circles with the wolf chasing her. I didn't exactly want to lose a healer like that. They were a rarity out in that town after all. So I ran over to the mage, took their mace, and swung it down on the wolf's head. Benny jumped out of his seat, swinging his arms as he acted out the scenario. It was a very heavy mace to say the least. Everyone in that party was scared out of their minds afterwards while also being painted fault with. A little redder than before. Redder? Was that? Did you mean? I shuddered as Benny pretended to swing the mace once again. While they were all paralyzed with fear, I quickly dealt with the other wolf in much the same way. Needless to say, the party failed their hunt as I was forced to step in. Though the higher-ups didn't care that much. Their problem was solved either way. I do remember hearing that the mage and big guy tried to get out of being an adventurer after that. Unfortunately, that there is where this story ends. I got transferred to the town over for some more appropriate work. I do sometimes wonder what happened to them. Mainly that healer. With a swing like that, she could have done some real damage if she was given something better than her staff. Right as he let out one final chuckle. A now familiar dark orb appeared next to his ear before promptly disappearing. Well, that's enough for me. While he had stopped laughing, he still had a smile on his face. The goddess is waiting for you. I quickly turned away from him and headed deeper into the temple, hoping that by the time I came back, he would have calmed down a little. Chapter 52 The First Hemisphere of Light As soon as I stepped into the darkness, I was taken into Ovia's domain. The room slowly came into view as I was embraced by the familiar coolness. My immediate instinct was to look for Ovia. Looking around the room, I saw that it had been rearranged slightly, with three seats set out instead of the usual two that were meant for Ovia and me. Ovia? I called out. No response. Where are you? I called out again, taking a few steps forward. Again. No response. Did Benny send me here too early? But I saw that black orb. Isn't that the cue for me to come here? Then, without warning, as I was lost in thought, two arms shot out from behind me and wrapped themselves tightly around my body. W. Welcome back, Kiera. Ovia had sneaked up behind me. MHM, I responded, awkwardly twisting myself around in her arms to face her. There was a brief silence as I looked into Ovia's abyss like eyes letting myself get lost in the seemingly endless space inside of them. D did you not like my surprise? She let go of me, her hands shaking a little. No, I came in close and hugged her, not letting her get away. I was just a little worried. I wanted to tell her that it was fine, but I just couldn't bring myself to lie to her, even if it was something as small as that. Should I leave you two alone then? I can just come back later if you want. I immediately whipped my head back searching for where the voice came from, although it didn't take long to see who was there. It was Arya. She was sitting on one of the three seats that had been set out, playing with the panel floating in front of her. I don't want to interrupt anything after all, she teased. No. Just. W wait a second, Ovia stuttered as she scooped me up in her arms. You um, I, I saw that you liked Benny's stories. I w wanted to tell you one too. But, I couldn't think of a story you w would enjoy. A story from Ovia? Why wouldn't I enjoy it? But I, but, Eolaria knows a lot of stories, Ovia interrupted me, I asked her T to come here so you can listen to one. I would enjoy any of your stories. I know it, I just, want to know more about you. Sister? Arya called out, I thought I told you not to call me that. A hey, Arya. Ovia sheepishly muttered after a few seconds. That's better. Now. Come and sit down. The story I've picked out for you two is a little long. Ovia quickly carried me over, setting me down on my stomach on top of one of the cushion-like seats. As soon as she was done checking that I was comfortable, she dragged the other free seat right next to mine and laid down on top of it in the same way. Comfortable. 
Alaria asked, MHM, both Ovia and I replied in unison. Alaria chuckled a bit before continuing, Now, the story I have picked out for you two is one of my oldest. It involves a lot of my firsts, my first emissary, the first time I gave someone a title and even the moment I became the goddess of titles. I love this one. Ovia suddenly shouted, interrupting Arya before covering her mouth and blushing slightly. Her tails were waving all over the place, occasionally rubbing against my own. Her eyes were wide with wonder as she looked up at Arya. Have I ever made you that happy? What do I have to do to, sister? I think you need to calm down a bit, Arya giggled, interrupting my train of thought. The little kitsune is getting a little swept up in all your fluff. Oh, I am sorry. Her tails instantly stopped swaying, instead drooping down and only occasionally twitching. It's all right, let's get started on the story now. Maybe if I'm quick, you two can still have a little time to yourselves. I wanted to tell Ovia that she didn't have to stop waving her tails like that, that I was fine with it, but Arya interrupted me before I could get the words out. Arya snapped her fingers, and the panel floating in front of her expanded before settling in the middle of the three of us. This story involves a place you are already familiar with, the city of Kaskal Law, though it's a Kaskal Law that the little Kitsune won't recognize. This took place long before it was a city before it was even called Kaskal Law. The image on the panel shifted, showing a man standing in front of a destroyed castle with his sword raised to the sky. I've seen this before at that store. However, Unlike the sculptures I had seen before, the image of him on the panel revealed much more about his appearance. His long blonde hair flowed behind him, and his eyes glowed with a distinct gold hue. My eyes were instinctually drawn up to Arya, the similarity in their appearance was hard to miss. This is a man whose name has been long forgotten by the city of Kaskal Law, though despite that, many of his feats are still celebrated to this day. However, what I'm going to tell you is the original story before it was distorted by the passage of time. Arya looks directly at me. The first thing that I think the little Kitsune would be interested in is his true appearance. You see, this here is how everyone in the city remembers him, but the image on the panel shifted again. The castle behind the man slowly pulled itself back together. The man's hair got shorter as it started to lighten up into a pure white. The glow from his eyes dissipated revealing a vibrant green beneath. White hair? Like mine? You see, over time, as his appearance was forgotten, they changed his hair color to blonde to better match mine. Now, I have tried to correct them before, but once an idea has been accepted into society as widely as this has been, it's hard to change people's minds. In reality, though, he was much like you. His affinity for light magic was so great that his hair was bleached white. He was actually quite proud of his hair. Arya giggled, he decided to cut it short just to stop it getting dirty while he was working. As you have probably already noticed back then, nobody cared much for the color of his hair. They didn't know that someone's appearance could be affected by their natural affinity. They really didn't know much about magic at all back then. However, even if they did, they had more pressing things to worry about. The panel quickly zoomed out showing that what he was standing in front of was no more than a small fortress with what could hardly be called a village at the base of it. The whole thing was enclosed by a large stone wall with a single gate at the front. He was the captain of this small fortress located right on the border of the human territory at the time. His was called. She paused for a moment, Arian. He was a well-respected man. He did just about everything he could for that little fortress that no one else seemed to care for. They didn't even bother to give it a name, seeing it as little more than a marker of how far their borders reached. Arya clenched her teeth briefly before letting out a sigh and continuing, Arian actually trained all the soldiers there himself, willingly giving up his time just to give each one individual advice. Then, in whatever time he got off from his duties as captain, he would go down to the fields just to give the farmers a break with the excuse that even though he wasn't working as a soldier at that moment, he still needed to keep his body in shape. There wasn't a soul in the fortress that didn't trust him with their lives. And if they were ever asked, they would probably trust him with even more than that. Ovia started to kick her legs as Arya continued to tell the story. As you can probably guess, Arian did many things in his time that could easily be turned into legends in their own right. But what I want to focus on for this story is the one event that made him famous, the event that first brought him to my attention. On the panel, 
The fortress was suddenly surrounded by many creatures I had never seen before, wolves the size of grown men, giants the height of the wall surrounding the fortress, and even a few flying creatures that looked like wyverns. During a vicious monster wave, the small border fortress was abandoned by the rest of humanity. They decided it would be better to fall back and instead try to defend at one of their cities instead. She looked down for a moment, what they didn't take into account it was all the children, the elderly, the injured and many others that simply couldn't escape the fortress in time. So, they just left them. They decided that those people didn't matter, using the logic that even if they got them out of the fortress, they wouldn't be able to help with the defense. So many of the people who were initially sent to support the fortress left before the monsters even attacked planning on leaving those who were unable to follow them behind. Tears started running down Ovia's cheeks. She was a lot more invested in this story than I thought she would be, especially because I knew she had already heard it before, as she had called it one of her favorites. I reached my hand over and wiped a tear away. Arian decided that he wasn't going to leave. He was going to hold his ground whether it killed him or not. Fortunately for him and everyone else left at the fortress. He wasn't the only one to stay. Every soldier that he had personally trained stood beside him, taking up their arms as they prepared for the incoming attack. On the panel, the gates of the fortress opened, with Arian standing at the front with his sword raised up high, facing down the hordes of monsters in front of him without flinching. In an instant, the fight started. Arian and his soldiers ran fearlessly at the monsters. Many of the men were injured, but as quickly as they fell to the ground, they were pulled back behind the line to get treated. They fought as hard as they could. The first battle lasted for four straight hours. By all accounts, they shouldn't have made it as far as they did. They weren't even able to push them back. The wall had started to fall, and even the small castle at the center of the fortress was crumbling after being attacked by the wyverns. Yet by some miracle, not a single person died during those four hours. Alaria paused and composed herself. Unfortunately, they were not safe yet. All that had happened was that the monsters decided it wasn't worth attacking them anymore. Most of their forces just moved past the fortress, heading for what would become the new front line of humanity. The image in front of me changed into a map, showing the monsters' territory as it engulfed the small fortress, leaving them stranded. They were now stuck in the middle of enemy territory left with only a crumbling wall to protect them from the impending assault. Their only saving grace was that the main force had moved past them. This time, a single tear ran down Arya's face before she quickly wiped it away with her sleeve. Could you blame them for losing hope at that moment? What else could they do? It was only a matter of time before they fell to the impending attacks. How long would they even be able to hold out? Would they fall to the monsters or starvation first? No matter how loyal the people in that fortress were, they could do nothing but despair. The panel shifted to Irian, sitting in a room inside the castle with one of the walls missing. Through the broken wall, the people below could be seen running around, panicking and falling to their knees as the realization began to set in. All Arian did was hang his head in his hands. Even Arian himself couldn't escape those thoughts. He didn't want to lose a single person. He knew them all by name, had fought alongside many of them, and shed tears with others. He just couldn't bear the idea that there wasn't anything he could do for them. No. I whispered, getting caught up in the story. Beside me. I heard Ovia dig her nails into her seat. Arian stood up and walked over to the gap in the wall, looking over everyone below him. I don't think even he knew what he was about to do. He probably just couldn't bear the weight of doing nothing any further. If I had to guess, he was just trying to do whatever he could at that moment, however little it was. Just like when he led the charge in the first battle, he lifted his sword up to the sky, and in that instant, Time seemed to stop for everyone at the fortress. A pillar of light left his sword, rising far into the air, dyeing everything nearby a brilliant gold. That was the first time he used light magic, completely on accident. It was nothing more than him releasing his mana, but that was enough. As if he had planned for this to happen all along, he called out to everyone below him. He commanded them to tear down what was left of the castle, to grab whatever they could and barricade the wall to fill in the gaps that were left from the first battle. They were going to hold their ground even if it might be nothing more than a futile effort. Alaria's expression softened. Every person that heard his voice grabbed whatever was closest to them and made their way to the wall. It didn't matter if they were soldiers or not. In that moment, 
they had all decided that they were going to do whatever they could. Even Arian himself came of the castle hauling as many of the intact bricks as he could carry. All I could do was stare in awe as I watched Arian and those around him work. The sight itself almost made me want to join in, even though I knew that this was just a story from long ago. Looking to my side, Ovila looked like she was about to jump out of her seat. The siege lasted a whole month. Yet somehow, the little fortress held strong, many were injured, and some were starving, including Arian himself. He just told them he was strong enough to handle not eating for a bit. Humanity eventually declared its victory over the monster wave. They quickly began pushing the monsters out, reclaiming their land as they worked their way up to the little fortress. When they got there, they were shocked that anyone was still alive, let alone every single person. As soon as Arian saw the approaching support, he lifted his sword to the sky once again, releasing his light and declaring that their struggle was finally over before collapsing to the ground from exhaustion. The scene played out just as Arya described, with Arian lying on the ground, his soldiers trying to lift him back to his feet despite their own exhaustion. It took a few days until he woke back up, but when he did, the reconstruction of the fortress had already begun. Many new people moved to the fortress after hearing about Tyrion's healing light. Named not because it could heal anyone's wounds, but because of how just seeing that pillar of light healed their very souls, how it bestowed hope on them despite the seemingly inevitable darkness, Arya laughed a bit, after seeing that, I decided to call him the Paladin of Healing Light. That name became a title for him as I was bestowed the responsibility of Goddess of Titles. I was apparently given the responsibility because I was the first deity to take so much interest in the life of someone outside the divine realm, so much so that I had given him a title. Is that how becoming a deity works? It's that easy. That can't be it. Well, that small fortress slowly grew into a village, then a town, as more new people continued moving in. That town was eventually named Casca Law. Castle of Light. The castle that once stood in that fortress had already been torn down, but that didn't matter to the residents. That wasn't why they gave the town that name. The panel quickly changed to showing Arya's temple, or what probably became Arya's temple. They built a temple for me, which I decided to give my blessing on the condition that they built one for my sister as well. They happily did as I asked, so both my sister and I gave the two temples our blessing on the same day. Arya's eyes moved down to Ovia, now that I think about it. Was that the last time you left the Divine Realm? Left the Divine Realm? It's possible for them to leave? You um. Panic spread across Ovia's face, and no. Really? I can't see you getting permission for that. Arya sat and thought for a moment, then did you just sneak out? I'm surprised no one noticed. Not even me. Ovia just blushed in response. Well, anyway. That's enough about that. Let's get back to the story. The panel shifted again, this time showing Arya kneeling down in front of Arya inside her domain. The Arya in the panel placed her hand on top of Arian's forehead, and when he opened his eyes, his once green eyes had turned gold with a distinctive white inner ring inside, just like both Selika's and Arya's. I decided to make him my first emissary of light and gave him my token, a copy of my own golden eyes so that everyone knew that he had been chosen. I still don't think I could have made a better choice. Even though he was my emissary, he didn't change at all. He would still go to the fields just to give the farmers a break, and he would still go and give the soldiers some personal training every so often. However Arya stopped talking as if the words had gotten stuck in her throat. Ovia was extremely excited as her tails started swaying back and forth again. Well, one of the effects of becoming an emissary is living longer. A lot longer. It's not quite immortality, but for anyone close to them, it might as well be. Arya once again paused for a moment, because of that. Arian ultimately decided to pass down his position as my emissary to one of his pupils. What? Why? Isn't being an emissary a good thing? Wouldn't you want to live for a long time? Arian served as my emissary for many years, but one day, he met someone he just couldn't forget. The woman who would one day become his wife. Ovia suddenly wrapped her tails around me and brought me in close hugging me against her side. He truly was a simple man at heart. He just wanted to live out the rest of his life with his wife. If he remained my emissary, he would easily outlive her. He wasn't just worried about missing her, but also about eventually forgetting her. How could I say no to him? I knew it would be hard to find another person like him. 
but maybe that was why I didn't put up any resistance. I took my token from him and gave it to the pupil he had chosen as my way of respecting everything he had done. And that's the end of this story, my version at least. Forgetting I couldn't bring myself to say anything after hearing the end of the story. However, I didn't need to, as Ovi abruptly jumped to her feet and took me with her. Arya chuckled, sister. You seem to have abducted a little fox at some point during the story. I am sorry, Ovia immediately set me down, blushing furiously, you were just so see close and fluffy. But I'm not as fluffy as you. As soon as my feet touched the ground, I hugged her back, trying to reassure her, I didn't mind. I liked it. Now, I would like to tell you that it's time for me to leave you two alone, but unfortunately, it seems that my story dragged on a little longer than expected. Arya got out of her seat. Oh, I knew what she was trying to tell me. It was already time for me to go back. I had gotten so absorbed in the story that I had completely forgotten that this was the one day this week I was allowed to see Ovia. Ovia knelt down and hugged me tightly as if reading my mind. It's okay, teethers always next time. MHM, I buried my face in her shoulder, the tip of my ear brushing against her cheek. But, I want to go back like this. Yes, oh of course. She responded, the surrounding darkness immediately closing in around me as Ovia squeezed one more time. I'll be back next time, I said just as I felt Ovia's presence disappear. As I felt the air around me warm up, the expressions I saw when Ovia was listening to Arya's story remained stuck in my mind, playing back on a loop. I, want to tell her stories like that. I just want to see her smile like that again. Did you have fun Kiara? Raynal called out, pulling me out of my thoughts. MHM. I walked over to her, where she quickly wrapped a cloak around me, I did. 